I got to. It's a crackhead in the drug. Anyway, so the crackhead won't walk. The crackhead won't walk to my car. He's like, he's like, I swear to God, man, I, 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 why are you doing him like that? The fuck are you talking about? Man? He said, motherfucker was coming to my house. He said, some motherfucker came to my house and was taking a shit. He's like, I thought you knew he comes to your house every day. Jeez. Oh shit. Dude, so, so so now I want to be this motherfucker ass because he have not told me that this motherfucker breaking my house every fucking Next. day. Oh my yeah. god! If we could play music right now, I would play Luther Vandross. I would play that sad song on them little poor animal songs. Oh, Sarah McLachlan. <laughs> There's a pencil sticking out of his I'm face. I'm playing my little violin. Wow. Okay, let me tell my story real quick. Even in the ladies' room. So we were left that they put a, me and my dude in the bed together because we, we, we clearly wasn't drunkest and was doing the most. So they put us to bed early. So in the middle of the night, wait a minute, they put us to bed early. Yeah. <laughs> like, hands in bed. Time for y'all to go to sleep. Right. So the middle of the night, I go to the bathroom. You know. I remember turning on the light, going to the bathroom, and going back to bed, right? Oh, man. Here we so go. now I wake up in the morning. Everybody's, like, in the room waiting for us to wake up and trying to get us up, like, get the fuck up now. Or I say, okay. So we wake up. They're like, first of all, let me tell you about you, Kiki. You was in the bathroom cussing everybody out, and you said, turn the motherfucking light. Get out the bathroom while I'm pissing. Whole time, I'm pissing in the middle of... um. The hallway, oh my over, right? My oh dude, God. my dude is doing the same thing, except for he's in the room that we're in, pissing in the closet. So, so that's, oh my, yes. God. random pissers. That's yeah. Yeah. the hell of a drug. You piss here, I piss there. Let's mark our territory. Let's go. Yeah, that was crazy. They said the it's whole house got up and watched me pee because <laughs> the house was quiet as hell, but you could just hear a stream of piss. Jet stream. Oh, the floor. Jet stream. Well, everybody jet woke up and turned the light on. When I turned the light on, I started going off like <laughs> <laughs> Just, that's just one of the, that's an easy story to tell. <laughs> hey, yo, yo, so, Tag team tinkers. I got to get off, man. But yo, please look. I have, like I told you, I have a true story, a true story podcast episode coming up. Please okay. bring all your wild stories, man. I would love all your. Okay, but on. Eric, can you please uh, get a ring doorbell and make sure your doors is locked? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, no, yeah, no, yeah. No, see, 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 funny. I got a good job. I moved. Up, I moved up to get up. I don't do that. Yeah, but still, they still get there. And what kind yeah. of ply? What kind of ply toilet paper do you have? Because and that you know, I guess I guess it was good shit. Probably some cotton nail that the pillow But, you, but here's the here's now, the, here's the fucked up part a, that a person like me think about. What if that motherfucker found you and just started? <laughs> Chilling he's, like, he's like, this nigga thought he was gonna move with all this good Charmin oh, on my ass. Uh, uh-uh, uh, nigga, I'll find uh, you. I likes it and I wants it. Oh wow. <laughs> no, I'm almost, I'm almost ready to do it over my car, man. That's that's just ain't gonna happen. Yeah, yeah that's crazy because it could have went the wrong. It could have went the wrong way. Duh, yeah, this motherfucker was sitting on your couch eating a big ass sandwich, watching your DVR and shit. <laughs> this nigga I mean, came I, in honestly, while all y'all was in the house and still took a shit. Up, and he took and he a shit in the bathroom, so he walked past you, not giving a fuck. Let me tell you though. So y'all say, sleeping and everything. No, but real talk, real talk, though. No, nah, that nigga like, tucked in bed. He was like, look at Eric sleeping so good. Nigga tucked the corners <laughs> in the bed. <laughs> 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 you know, real, no, real talk. I don't think he put him on your bed and everything. Kissed him on the forehead. Mm, silly bear. <laughs> 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 hey, I think, I think he was just so damn high. He didn't realize anybody was in the fucking house when he came in. Oh. No, nah, he oh, knew you oh, was in oh. there. That's why he didn't want to look at yeah, you. Yeah, he didn't give a fuck. No. Yeah. That nigga said this is my house been, too, nigga. I knew I know he's been in your bed. I knew he was in your bed at least one time. That's crazy. One time. Probably have, man. Wow. With his Sorry. shoes on. Sorry, hey, hey, just get the ring doorbell though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, man, yeah, but this, yeah. Hold on, but this was back. This was back when you know they didn't have shit like that. It was no such you know what I'm saying. This is about what 2011, 
So it won't it won't no damn ring doorbells like that. You just had the crackhead next door who could tell you that somebody was gonna bring in your house okay, now. But now you in the suburbs and they got them little crazies. Oh, 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 we we got we got the ring doorbell. Okay, we, we're the decent shit now. There we got we go. Because I don't want no no one coming. Now you gonna have a meth head in your bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> right. Bird shot, buck shot, bird shot. Nah, nah. Well, let me tell yeah, you yeah. this. Let me say this. <laughs> Let me say this. Remember, I told you we were talking earlier about. We talking about earlier about the damn older our kids, man. Shit, my damn kids always home. They ain't never want to go. I got somebody here. They'll tell me. That nigga my walk through, like, like Yo, my dad told me I can use the reason. bathroom again. Uh-huh, savage, wake yeah. up. I'm not sleeping. Uh huh. Yes, you are. Damn, you are. Savage yeah, look like a villain. That I want one million dollars. You gotta remember because her neck's so short. Oh wow! Like she got a damn. She wow. I am looking down though. No, her eyes was closing. Her eyes was just like this. No, they wasn't. Again. Then she went like this, and then that's why, why I was like, "Oh, yeah, she's falling asleep." Why do, why do we try to refute if you were asleep? You like, I hey, don't you know. Me. No, I wasn't. Yes, you I were. Wasn't you were arguing, motherfucker, to death about that shit. Yo, I, I, I worked as a security supervisor, and it, and it was, you know, me and another person, and I mean, it was nothing to do. It's the middle of the night, ain't nothing happening, and she went to sleep, and I was ready to go to the vending machine, and I said, "Hey, you want anything?" She like, "Oh, no. she woke up, slobbered." I said, "You know, you sleep, right?" No, I was not. Like she was like ready to <laughs> argue me. Yeah, if I'm loving now. She want to lose that job. I, I didn't care. We was cool. I was like, oh, okay. You 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 gonna tell me you wasn't sleeping? Okay, all right then. Fuck you in whatever you wanted from the video. And that's how that's yeah, how I, I, I fall asleep. Feel, yeah, yeah, yeah. And well, the crazy I, part, I would get everybody you. together in the house. Like, please come watch this movie with me. We all about to just chill and watch movies and chill. I'd be the first one sleep like five minutes into the movie. They'd be like, Kiki, you ever like, yeah, yeah, I'm up. I'm up. Then I look at the screen and be like, yeah, look at her white dress. And then doze right back. <laughs> oh, I do shit like that too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, her, her like making me movie. really, I mean, I don't have any problems in the in my in my neighborhood, but Eric is making me gonna have to double check my door. You don't, you don't need to get a get a ring doorbell. I have one. Oh, well, you good. I have one. The fact that a motherfucker took a shit in the ensuite while you was in the bed, that's what make that shit crazy. Like he ain't used the hallway bathroom, he ain't take a shit in the basement. He right, he won't shit past right the bathroom. in your room. Like no nigga, we did hit a gamma, bro. Damn. That's what makes that shit crazy. Head, like just think about that for a moment. Like regular shit like okay you know you might have had some leafy vegetables you know protein and starch that nigga crack was taking a hard you know? shit <laughs> crackhead shit meaning crack, crack pain, pain out of you? come on man what's going on here damn man that's i couldn't like you gotta catch a shit, shot wow shit wow you gotta wow. do what you gotta do sometimes man when you everybody know when you find the right bathroom, you don't like to use no other bathroom. Hey, that was his executive bathroom. I was like, I don't shit anywhere, but not I will not not shit here. We all got that one bathroom. Everybody got that one bathroom at work that you will you will uh hold that shit like a mug till you get to that specific bathroom. Oh, yeah. This nigga had a newspaper yeah. folded up under his arm and shit, walking to his yeah. house and whistling yep. and shit. Yeah, yo definitely was ready. Like, man, I've been holding this in all day. Had a new port in his motherfucking ear, like it's going down. Wow. Man, you telling everybody, I got this spot, man. I got a spot. I can't tell you where it is because I don't want to blow it up, man. But you know you ain't gonna tell nobody where the best bathroom at. You keep yep. that one quieter than a motherfucker. Listen, at work, I told nobody. I said, oh, they don't know. Oh, I used to have a bathroom like that. Uh, <laughs> well, I worked on the third floor. I used to go all the way to the sixth floor just to take, take a, a piss or shit, whatever had to happen. Nobody went up there. <laughs> yeah, no, no fuck you. Yeah, like, where the fuck you been at, man? I had to take a shit. Man, you've been going for like 40 minutes. Nigga, it take me a while to get to my bathroom. Mind your business. Right. <laughs> yeah, I ain't gonna lie, I use the handicap bathroom, though. Yo, the best one. Sure. I use the wow. handicap bathroom. I use the um the family, the family bathroom where you gotta have kids. <laughs> yeah. And they tell you, listen, the cleanest motherfucking stall is the first one. Don't go all the way to the back and I'll use that big do one. Do not no, go do to it. the first one. Yep. Because everybody thinks the first one is the dirtiest, which is actually the cleanest because nobody cleanest. goes to it. Yep. No, what I should do, do is it was a, a 
a, a men's and women's bathroom on the seventh floor, but it wasn't no women that worked on the seventh floor. So I used to go in the yeah. women's bathroom. Yeah, pretty much. Kiki, are you at work? Right. I basically yep. had that. We have to do the, uh, the uh, report real quick. God, God, Lee, Kiki, when I when I watched it last night, you was working. I said yeah. she done restocked the inventory. I said, what the? Yeah, <laughs> back at it again, huh? Hey, she ain't yeah. playing. Yes, she ain't, she ain't playing at all. Might as well get paid and talk some shit. Why not? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's this the perfect. That's all. Like y'all keeping me up. Uh, and it, yesterday, I I had 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 this this well. don't worry. You owe us some of your check, Kiki. We are at work with you right now. Right. We are working with you. Hold on, how the OGs used to say, if you can hide, you can hear, motherfucker. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, the handicap one is the best. The stall is the best one. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. Yeah, you know what? The handicap. The, now they need handicap in the um in the clubs because that way you can like when you drunk you can hold yourself up better. There you go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there you go. This Yo, speaking of handicap bathrooms, now I didn't tell you multiple times. My mom is in the wheelchair. If we was to ever going to our bathroom and somebody was in that motherfucker, she would go bang on that bitch. Get the fuck out! You're not in a wheelchair. Oh wow! Oh shit! Yo, yeah, she should. Why are you fucking with people? <laughs> Damn, you couldn't even use the handicap people. bathroom in the crib. Yo, handy, and you want to know what's so crazy? And right now, my apartment is a handicap apartment because of her, and she told me she was never coming back down here. I said, so what the fuck? I get this apartment for? Goddamn! Everything is accessible to you in this motherfucker. She said, yeah, I ain't, I ain't coming back down there because you live too far from the airport. Uh, well, get, get you some Heelys or something. You know, a little skateboard. There you go. <laughs> she better figure it out. Shit. But no. I don't got no crazy drunken stories like y'all. That's fucked up. I ain't live life enough. I guess. Yeah, I feel the same yeah, way because I ain't it. never... I ain't never blacked out and did all of that crazy shit before. So I got yeah. too many. Now, so I, 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 don't think, I don't think mine's is like crazy. I've done got drunk outside and wake up and I'm like, well, when the fuck did I get home? When did I drive home? How did I get here? But I don't think that's, I think that's like some drunk shit, not crazy. You know? my, my body, yeah. once I drank too much, my body is letting that shit all the way out. Yeah, I, instantly. My body don't waste no time. Like, no, nigga, this is enough. We're gonna get rid of all of this shit, and you better not drink no more. I think the worst shit is you get drunk. Like, uh, I think this person like July. I got my hunger had a luau. Went to a luau, got fucked up, blah blah. She only lived like 10 minutes for me. I remember driving home, coming in the house, spilling food all over my shirt. Wow. Right. And I had just moved in, so I ain't had no bed and nothing. I'm sleeping on the air mattress, but it was it was inflated. It was not a deflated one, right? You know we was so, going to ask. It, it was definitely full of air. But um, so I, I remember coming in here. I remember taking my shoes off. It's Annie, Gary. It's Annie. And, 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 and what the fuck are you doing? I told you that. It, <laughs> every couple <laughs> words. Burp. <laughs> But why, sir? <laughs> I, I was sitting there like, what the hell? I, I'm taking my feet. Burp. Burp. <laughs> nah, let me stop. Oh. <laughs> what the hell? I really was checking my shit like that. No, I'm playing. What's going on right now? I don't know what's going on with my headphones. Burp. I just took my headphones out. Burp. But um, yeah, it. I remember taking Burp. it's still doing Burp. it. Burp. Oh no, that's DC. My bad. Oh, I'm like, bro, stop fucking playing. That ain't me. I, I remember taking my shoes off and I wake up the next morning. I'm fully clothed. Got all this barbecue shit going down my white shirt. And I wake up. I'm like, man, what the fuck? I got on jeans, everything. I'm like, bro, what the barbecue titties? And I legit had barbecue titties because it was all over my titties. I'm like, God, when the dang. fuck did any of this happen? <laughs> Somebody had a fiasco. <laughs> I don't yeah. fucking know, but yeah, nah, that was the only type of drunken stories I don't remember. No, I think the worst, the worst I, thing for me, in my opinion, I went to my man crib, and like I said, I don't smoke weed, and he had just came back from Puerto Rico, so if he had these little 
they look like Capri Suns. They call gasolinas. Oh. So my dumb ass, first of all, I'm drinking vodka. Then he was like, yeah, I got these Jones, blah, blah, blah. So I'm like, fuck it. Let me try one. So I tried that shit. Then he pulled some tree out. So I'm like, fuck it. I ain't smoking a while. Mind you, I hit that shit like three times. It was booty booty. <laughs> so mind you, we went up there. Me and my other homie, we drove up there just to watch the fight. But we got there like three hours before the fight started. That's what we fucked up at for one. That's that's when you play that sound, DC. Yeah. <laughs> Dang, yeah. y'all. If I, if I tell y'all my story, y'all be like, it was yeah, at this he moment that he knew crazy. he fucked up. I really did. So I'm sitting on the motherfucking couch. I'm sitting on the couch, and like I said, my body lets me know you didn't had enough, nigga. It's time to get this shit up out you. I go in the bathroom Earl in my fucking life away for like 30 minutes. I'm doing Ooh. like straight, just going in. So I come Dang. out the bathroom. I sit back on the couch. My man give me this dry ass bologna sandwich. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> For real. I took like three bites of that shit, right? No lie. I took like three bites. I got up and politely walked right to the bathroom for like another 10 minutes. So I come back out the bathroom, sit back on the couch. I go to sleep. His wife come on, come home. Now all I hear is, who the fuck is that on the couch sleep? And why the fuck is he sleep? So my man was like, don't worry about it. He good. He going to be all right. Right after she finished, he had finished talking, I lift up off the couch. When I lift up, everything just went in circles. Mm. Right back in the bathroom, I went. Giving up the body again. Come back out. Sit on the couch again. Chilling. Let me get a bite of this sandwich. I don't know why the fuck I bit this sandwich. In my <laughs> mind, it's going to help me out. But it's not helping me. And I don't know why I keep biting this sandwich. Bite this sandwich, chew it. Couldn't even finish chewing it before I'm throwing up the fuck again. So at this yeah. point, I didn't miss the fight because I didn't slept through the motherfucker. So I'm ready to go to fuck home now. Luckily, my homie was with me because there ain't no way I was driving home that night. It was a wreck. Drive back. My homie lived like 15 minutes from me. Drop him off. So I'm like, all right, I could make 15 minutes. I could be all right. Get in my car, drive. Now, I don't know about nobody else, but if I'm drunk, Somehow, some way, soon as I cut the car on, I instantly sober up. Sober up. Mm-hmm. Instantly. So I get to the to the <laughs> I get on my block and I feel everything coming right the fuck back. Soon as I fucking cut the car off and open the door, I ain't even get out the fucking car. I'm leaning out the motherfucker, just early my fucking life away. Get out the car, get to the door, which is only about 15 steps. Earl in the fuck again. Golly, man. Yeah. What the fuck I, you I was anything still in your stomach? That stomach fucking you gasolina that. shit was no fucking joke. That shit destroyed me. I will never drink that shit again. That's Mind you, that was me early what before I drink? went in the house wasn't the last one either because I got up like three times that night after getting in the bed. Luckily, I, my fucking bathroom was right next to my fucking bed. <sighs> Earl again another three times. I slept. What did you there. drink? 15. It was some shit called gasolina. It's, well, it's some type gasoline. of fucking. That's, that's the word. That was straight it gas looked like a fucking turpentine. Capri Sun. If you don't pay attention, you'll think you're drinking a Capri Sun. <laughs> drink and the shit actually fucking tastes good. That shit is dangerous as fuck. It's that's fun. why I don't drink. They only sell them in Puerto Rico. That's why I do not drink. No, I drank some Everclear before, and it took two oh, wow. days for me to throw up. Oh, wow. I didn't know what Everclear was. I went to a party with white people. <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. yeah. As soon as you said it, we all knew who we were partying. Thanks. Yeah, so um, I went. Dude, take a shot, bro. First of all, they the only ones that drink that shit. Kiki, get right. over here. We fucking love you. But they You're had it. A shot, Kiki. It tastes so good. It tastes like wow. cinnamon and apple. So I was just Magic like, nah. unicorns. Mm-hmm. Nobody told me about Everclear and yeah. how it's kind of illegal and, and all that stuff. I'm like, what the hell? Kind yeah. of illegal. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. Like, oh, it's like over a hundred proof, ain't it? Way yeah. over hundred proof. That's like hundred ninety proof. Hundred ninety, yeah. Oh my god, y'all! I, it took me two that days. Epson. Two Ooh. days for that to come up out my system, and it finally did, and I felt better. But I was sick for two days. They using this. I was young, young. I was young, so you know I could take it back then. Oh, take that. 
I thought I thought about the greediest thing while we say these stories because I thought right, right. I thought about his bologna sandwich. <laughs> the greediest thing I've ever done when I was drunk. I, it was my it was I was celebrating my birthday. People were giving me shots. And I remember drinking champagne. I remember coming home and somehow aggressively making a dozen cinnamon rolls. I don't even. <laughs> I, when I say aggressively, I remember making them, taking them all out, and then eating all of them. Let me tell you what happens when you eat 12 cinnamon rolls. When you go to throw up, it ain't just coming up like that. No, it was Fuck like no. I was putting with like, I'm dying, bro. No, that's crazy, man. Hmm. Good times. That's good times. I remember, imagine, imagine I remember, you know, I didn't the second time I earled, I'd already gave up everything that was in my stomach already. So at this point, I'm earling just to be earling at that point. Yeah, you 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 earl and stuff with corn that you ate when you was in the when I was last week. I'm I, I remember they, took week. Me, they said they took me to a Taco Bell. I ate three tacos That's the first place and then cussed out everybody because they was eating Damn, without me. So they said, No, nah, Kiki, you you ate your shit fast as <laughs> Kiki, see, well, he got a history of cussing people out. Kiki, right. like, what was she yeah. yeah, that's well, why I'm drinking. All my stories is bad. Okay, I'll give y'all this one. I'll give y'all this one. We this one was so crazy. We gotta, I almost we went gotta. to jail. I almost went to jail in Jamaica. Mm, wow, so wow. we go to Jamaica. It's my girl's birthday weekend. I had shit planned for her. So we all kicking it. You know what I'm saying? I'm telling everybody about the plans and kicking it. They constantly bringing me drinks. Constantly, I said I'm gonna stick with Picardi because that's what I. Um, that's something from the states. They brought me something called. Um, it was I forget something rum. It's like a Jamaican drink or whatever. Jamaican rum. Anything Jamaican rum. If you say oh, if you Mama say, Juana? no, that's if that's, you say the name the of it, I, um, I'd be like, yep, that's it. But they gave me this rum. And I don't remember anything, <laughs> but I do remember in the morning that they, um, first of all, my floor was damp as hell. Oh no. So oh. basically I flooded, I left the bathroom, I left the, um, the tub running because I want to go take a bath, fell asleep, butt naked on my bed. They had to use the key to come in. The, the one guy that he said, I had him by his neck telling him, to get his fucking hands off me. He said, the whole time you're fighting me, I'm trying to put clothes on you. I'm butt naked doing all this. <laughs> um, so he finally gets like this, this loose dress on me that I had laid out or whatever. I said, okay. He was like, then he said, I tried to sit you down so that we can try to get all the stuff off the ground. And you kept coming for me. And then you fell in the wet pool that was on the ground fell so they had to call my girl like hey get her we gotta get her calmed down because i was irate so they finally bring my friend j9 to the room j9 is just like hey kiki i guess she's i know to i know she came in here super calm too i don't even remember her coming <laughs> in i don't remember none of this and i and they had pictures of it and everything so i could not deny it so the everybody came and got me because i had to pay some money for the damages yeah, yeah. So now I'm like, what damages? So they took me to the place that was up under me. It was only drywall. They tried to charge me $800. I said, I'm not stupid. I could see if it was electrical, but they, they still got $300 out of me. Okay. So while I'm down there, they tell me all these pictures. Like, listen, the water was out in the hallway. Wow. Damn. Like, it was worse. bad. It was so bad. And then on top of that... I come downstairs because I'm embarrassed. I'm like ready to go back to the States now. You know what I'm saying? I come down and it's this Jamaican dude at the bar. He was like, tell me all what you told me last night. And he was like, I'll make it happen for you. I said, what is you talking about? I told him all type of nasty stuff that, I mean, it, it was explicit. I said, oh my God. And then I fell because my jaw was swelled up. We didn't know where my jaw was swelled up from. Apparently, I was talking to him at the bar. I left the when I was going to leave the bar. They said I moved my chair, then I fell on top of another chair, hitting my jaw on another chair. I said, "What the fuck?" Oh, bitch, you was drunk. 
I yeah. was gone. Yeah. Hey, I was gone. Hey, the next time you talk to J9, ask her. I mean, uh, ask her to tell you about the story when my baby father beat the dude into a fetal position underneath the car. Damn. <laughs> well, Wait, but look, they had a car. Then on top of that, it was her birthday, right? Oh shit. So yeah. we had plans. And we couldn't even make those plans. Like we were, um, everybody yeah. was supposed to go to this um, bar off of um, off of the resort. Everybody went. So that whole morning, everybody like Kiki, where's you at, Kiki? Like everybody, I'm just like, man, fuck, I just forget okay. it. Just forget hey, so it. I thought I was a big dog one time, right? Go out to a restaurant with some coworkers, and th they had a sixty ounce margarita. So I had to hold the glass like this. Oh, I drank the whole thing by myself. Jeez. And, and so I remember we was at a Mexican restaurant and across the street was an IHOP. So I, we leave. I'm like, shit, let's go to IHOP and get some food. I'm like, bitch, you just left from a food place. So we go to IHOP. I remember my homeboy was, it was a bunch of us, but my homeboy was with me particularly. I'm like, I just want some French fries. I ordered the French fries. I leave, never got the French fries. I remember he drove to his house, and then I lived like two minutes away from him. I drove to my house. I think I slept in the bathroom, head in the toilet. Uh, by the time I woke up, I was throwing up blood. Bitch had alcohol poison. I had stopped drinking for like five years after that. Like, yeah, I remember, hey, alcohol poison ain't no joke. I think I had it because you be shivering. and It was bad. I had to go to the hospital, get an uh, IV because I was dehydrated. It was all, it was all types of bad. Yo, I, anytime, it was so bad. Anytime I went like this to some alcohol, I had to throw up. Damn. New yeah. Year's <laughs> Eve, I'm at my man crib. We getting mangled. Trash. <laughs> like, we in there getting trashed. And I'm like, I said, damn, I'm going to go bring in New Year's. I'm around the corner from my crib. I said, I'm going to go bring in New Year's with my mom. We're going to go smoke an L at fucking New Year's. Look, 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 at, look at Kiki. Look at Kiki. <laughs> You gotta switch it up. Mm -hmm. with the mute it, mute it. <laughs> so right. I get to the crib. I'm sitting there, me and my mom. We smoking and shit, right? So I sit down on the floor. I don't even know why I even sat on the fucking floor. I got off. I we were sitting at the table. So I got out the chair and sat on the floor. And I'm sitting there, and I'm like, damn, I gotta take a piss. Oh, and no. I walked in the bathroom and took a piss, right? Mm. This was like this had to be like 12 30. Next thing I know, it's 6 30 in the morning. I'm waking up in the bathroom with my head on the fucking toilet. So I'm like, Mom, why the fuck would you let me? I ain't say it like that, but I'm like, Mom, why would you let me sleep in the bathroom? Like, she was like, Yo, you look mad comfortable. Like, I wasn't gonna wake you up. <laughs> she said, The way you had yourself propped up, like, I, you look like you was in your bed real comfy. So I literally slept with my head on the toilet. Yeah, I guess I threw up. Too. I threw up and then just went straight to sleep from there. Yeah, that's how I was. Let me tell y'all this one story. Like I don't know if y'all like if y'all know anything about Youngstown or whatever, but in PA, there's a, a probably like a, a hour away. It's a boat ride that you go on called the Gateway Clipper. So I went on the boat ride and like we got drunk as hell. Like we got drunk as hell, and it was a whole um, on the way back. The people that I came with, I had to pee. So they allowed me to pee outside of the car. Now, mind you, I, I remember having to pee, but I don't remember everything. So I guess I peed, but I took my panties off and balled them up and put them in my pocket. So oh, okay. they said, we got to Youngstown. It was like, you are very drunk at this time. And they looked back and you, they was like, all we seen was you crying really, really hard. And we're like, what's wrong with you? Why are you crying? And they said, because I can't find my panties. And <laughs> I think that I had sex and I don't even remember it. And I wanted to be there. <laughs> oh my I wanted to be there. Like, I oh yeah. 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 She missed it. They, yeah, she that's missed what I said. It. That was the effed up part. I'm like, like, not only did you not remember it, like you crying because you did, like you just wanted to be there in the moment. Listen. Ayo. That's that was crazy. Oh, and they I clown me, but they still clown me when I get to come around. They still clown me on that. I'm like, come on, that was years ago. Oh wow, my friend turned 21, and I'm like, fuck, you turned 21, so I come with a bottle of fucking vodka. I don't even know what kind of vodka. Grey Goose probably more than likely because back then that's what I was drinking, and a bottle of fucking Irkin jerk. Who the fuck told me to buy a bottle? Of oh, you're not, you're not eating I don't Jesus, know, right? 
So I'm just like, bitch, you, we getting drunk. So she having a party or whatever, friends, family, blah, blah. So I'm like, all right, we taking shots. Why did I open the E&J to take the fucking shots? So I done took hella shots of it. I remember one friend in the bathroom throwing up like, he don't love me. <laughs> I'm like, oh, wow. bitch, we got them all get together. Now, I remember helping her. And then I remember me having technical difficulties. I woke up in my homegirl bed, ass out, no pants, don't remember how, when, where, or nothing. I'm like, bro, did somebody do something to me? Everybody like, I don't know. I don't know. I'm like, oh, this is not. I never drink dark liquor again after that. That was it for me. I was like, I could mm. never. That niggas like drink some Hennessy. Hell no, I'm good. Man, I'm man. Listen, I will never touch NJ again because I did. I woke up to and I looked to the side of me. I'm thinking it's my cousin. I'm like, girl, get your <laughs> arm over. It's like her arm was around, like up under my titty and shit. I'm like, what the fuck, move? First of all, my cousin real light skinned. It, it was a dark skinned hand that I pulled. I said, I said, oh shit. <laughs> I was so scared to turn back. I turned around. Dude was asleep like we was in love. Dude. Wow. All right. I woke up literally saying like, whose dick is this? Whose dick is this? Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, Kiki, was it a hand or was it a dick? It was a whole body behind me like nestle, <laughs> like, like cuddle. And I don't even cuddle. That's why I was like, oh, M. Hey, Kiki, you was uh, Jasmine Sullivan bodies before she even made that song. I don't know what's in my Listen, <laughs> I never drank none of that. Oh, my God. And he was so hard to get rid of. Oh, my God. Oh, you <laughs> fucked the so shit hard. out of him. Yes, I could just imagine. You feel what I'm saying? That's all I'm like, the yeah. hell? Them, them drunk, unrememberable dick tucks. You know that shit was crazy. Bro. I, I, I'll give you one more story. And I you. knew I, I, I knew it wasn't no rape stuff because in the club I was at him. So I remember that. You know what you I'm saying? So that's why I'm just like, yeah, that was all me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can't even be mad. <laughs> Kiki, how tall are you? I'm six foot. Okay. All right. I knew it. I could tell fellow. I'm going to just say this again. Hey, Gary. Yeah, nobody, yeah, nobody even. Yeah. Yo, what the fuck happened to DC? I just realized he disappeared. He like went a to sleep. Oh, shit. Yeah, I hear no narration. Facts. He went Sweet. No narration, no no extra uh it was no none. None. It was and wasn't CL supposed to come back at two o'clock with her ass said she probably mm-hmm. sleep too. It's she three knocked out. Turn out back. She was supposed to come and her friend said sleep. Uh they sleep. <laughs> so it's what it's been one day, eight hours and fifty six minutes. Yep. Basically. Mm-hmm. Yo. What are y'all going for? 48. 48. 48. Yep, I'm so tomorrow, glad we can pay for this, man. That's so good. Tomorrow, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I can't do it tomorrow. <laughs> no, I yes, right? yes, you are. I yes, actually yes, got a whole another spot tomorrow, so I'm definitely gonna be back tomorrow. I gotta clean my yeah. motherfucking house. Today was my cleanup day. I did not clean up. You, I, uh, tomorrow, I don't have this at work. I'll, I'll, I'll go home and get some good sleep, and then just wake back up and be on there with y'all. Yeah, yeah. Kiki is at work. <laughs> you can clean up and talk to us. What you doing? I yeah. think it's over. It's either over at six or the last slot is at six. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Somebody missed that slot. Oh, a lot of people missed their slot. That's why we just yeah. been on this bitch rolling. At this point, pretty much everybody just been winging everything at this point. Yeah. yeah. I, I I thought it was gonna be like all right, like Amron and them was gonna be on here, and they invite us on. We talk our stuff, and then the next person come on. I was like, that's wild, wild west. Right. Oh, there you go, like, man. Right. Look, saying his name made him wake up. You guys, no, I, you know, I only have 15, 15 more hours. Yep. What? 15 oh, more hours. But it's to be over? Yep. 15 more hours in two, uh, three minutes. Y'all yep. got hey, it. We out here. Yep. <laughs> hey, will you 7 p.m. Know? it's over. You want to know what's so funny? I was laying in the bed and I'm over here like, okay, so yesterday I did this, 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 this. So remember earlier, DCA, you was like, how many hours? I'm like 18. So when I calculated, I was like, yeah, I did like 17 and a half before I got back on here or collectively before I got back on here with y'all tonight. I'm like, yo, that's a lot. Oh, I did like two, three hours. DC, I need a W2. So yeah, I need that. I need that. 
Yeah, at, at this point, I know it for sure. I'm well over ten hours of it. I've yeah, no, you, know. we, me, and you, yeah. hard, and that was at minimum three hours. Facts. Yeah. And when I and when I kept popping back in, I was like, damn, they still going at it. I ain't gonna lie, no, man. This, this is something that ain't got that, nothing to do know, with last night. Last night we was on for what, like four hours. Oh, uh, we started. Uh, from, we started uh, at six. I, can we kicked it off at six? I think I went till five a.m. So that was about eleven hours. Yeah. Um, got back up. Started back I at did 11, eight. I did twelve hours yesterday. Yeah, we yeah. So I mean, but the crazy part is everybody wants to do this again yearly now. So it's gonna be. I mean, yeah, might as it's well. Cool. You know what? But you know what? We should all get together and do it. Yeah. We should pick a place and meet up. Fly there, drive there. Everybody meet up like in a big ass Airbnb, like a uh, uh, nah, mansion. Now nah, I can see that being way too much trouble. Y'all see yeah. talking about all these drunk stories. Ain't nobody gonna be focused. I don't a lot of dick more. flashing and, I don't and, drink and, no more. and titties. That ain't got nothing to do with niggas everybody gonna else. Be like, what are, bitches gonna be like, what a dick that? Niggas gonna be like, what a Oh, yeah, that's the only I'm thing about that's that's the again. only thing that messes everything up. Like, people, hey, it's gonna be like real world podcasters with this shit. Right. <laughs> people just can't get together and not do nothing. Like, you can. Or, okay, or we just get our own rooms and everything and everybody meet up and then, like, we have, like, then that's they play the musical rooms. That's the thing. Oop. Even if even Oop. if you try to do it and it don't turn into a bunch of fucking, you gonna have too many people that's drunk as shit waiting around for their slots. Right now, everybody at home. So you not you even if you drinking, you're not gonna be drinking. But if you out at the at the hotel or whatever, whatever, you know you're not going to where everybody here laughing and joking. You gonna have some dumb motherfucker that can't handle their liquor, fucking some shit up or drinking too damn much, and now they missing. Well, five I six, suggest five. all the men. Bring y'all wives because they keep y'all in line. Now, what's gonna happen is raw gonna get out of here and somebody gonna get stabbed. That's what's gonna happen. Oh shit! I did what? <laughs> what Wait, what? Okay, raw gonna, light the, raw gonna light the match again and set off a conversation. Oh, and go <laughs> somebody somebody right. We'll be at first time, so it's gonna go off. Now the nigga smash getting yeah. shanked. Hey, listen, that's my like like in the comfort of our own home. I'm, I'm stab. I'm gonna stab that nigga with the tip of the uh, the the foul part of the nail clipper. Oh wow! Wow! Listen, wow. that shit wasn't my fault. He kept and the nigga the kidneys. You put, you, put your, you put your hands on him, you are gonna get pregnant. Oh, that's hey. right. You're right. I don't even want to get close to him. No, do not put me in a room. Everybody man. getting pregnant. Oh, no, hold on, hold on, hold on. I can't get pregnant. So I'm good. That's y'all. Hey. hey, hey, he just woke up. Welcome back, um, narrator. Who? He said he went to the bathroom. <laughs> that nigga was shitting for like forty five minutes. I walked he away. No. Yeah, let's play a game. Oh, I should have brought my. I, I see uh, raw smoke. I, I should have brought my cigar out. My Ravens. My Ravens lost. So yeah. Uh, oh, you man. too. Yeah. Yo, so I see man. the highlight of that fumble. Holy man. shit! Yo, I couldn't. Even, I, I I was about to immediately hop on here, but I was like, nah, I don't even want to wild out. Wild, even wild out on here. I was like, yo, what? On the, the fuck? one fucking yard line. That's that how I'm sick. Cowboys losing. I'm gonna say. Oh, Cowboys, <laughs> y'all. They losing tomorrow. They lose. I, I, I don't me. know, man. I'm gonna be Excuse me. As bad as me. To, I don't Excuse know. Me. You didn't want to get on because you knew you were wild out. Don't come for my team because I will wild out on here. Okay. Oh. Kiki, your Cowboys. That's your hey, Cowboys hey, fan. They losing Kiki. them all. Kiki, I'm bird gang all day. I'm shitting on Cowboys every chance I get. Just so you know. Uh, Kiki, your, your cow. Kiki, I will bet you your Cowboys lose tomorrow. This tomorrow. Uh, well, whatever. Excuse me. It, could you put? It was at this moment, please. No, 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 you ain't got the answers, answers man. Gonna run it back after the game, and you're gonna hop back on here. And I'm gonna say, All right, DC, uh, let it go back be, be behind there. It was at this moment they have fucked up. No, I'm gonna be honest with you. I, I really do believe Dallas gonna beat the Bucks tomorrow. No, though. you do not, Raw. I you do. do not. They are going the to Bucks, the Bucks been playing like shit. Gary, that's all you and, yeah. and I like the Cowboys. I, I the thing like is, the, the only Gary. thing is, the Bucks got What's a better defense. Bucks do got a good defense. Out like a hotel, that could uh, possibly manager. throw a pick six. Or two. <laughs> go sit at the <laughs> kitty table. I'm go bigger sit. than you. What are you talking about? I don't care. Go sit at that kitty table. I don't give a damn. What is my act like I'm older than you? The fuck? I can't wait till tomorrow. I'm gonna make sure I hop back on here tomorrow. I'm gonna say, where is Kiki? Nope, it's gonna be a lot. It's gonna you gonna be. I'm sorry. You gonna be, it's gonna be I'm a sore loser. I am a very sore. <laughs> I can imagine. 
And you know what? When y'all lose, I and will, this I year, will like this no is the year that it. it's it's gonna hurt if they f up because I'm just like, come on, at least they make it. All, if you think they, they win, y'all just do this every year. Y'all do well. Y'all do well enough. Turn the ball. We didn't make it this far last year. Y'all didn't make it this far last year. We got to the playoffs and messed it up our first game. This is it. This is every year. Rest repeat. Y'all do this every year. This is what y'all do. Y'all, y'all win. You and the Cleveland Browns. And in that it way, y'all at go this moment. No, nobody's doing that. You, people, <laughs> you know, you, you know, we recording this. You know that tomorrow, I'm gonna say, hey, remember yesterday when you said it was like? at this moment. <laughs> <laughs> Look, tomorrow, y'all Cowboys fans, I feel sorry for y'all because y'all go through the same cycle every year. Y'all do bad, then they get really good. Then all the hope is up, and then you got it's all these. Very, I can't hear. It's very staticky. Yeah, okay. You can hear me. How about them boys? How about them boys? And the next thing you know, playing in Texas, all damn crazy cowboy. She said, she said it's staticky like the video tapes that the ass people hold on. But you know what, Kiki? When y'all lose, I, I'll send you a bottle of ENJ. Mm. 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 Of yeah, what's up wrong with this damn? Laptop. <laughs> I, we'll, we'll call your job phone. Go ahead, play around. We'll call you. Oh, job right shit. Now. Thanks to everybody to call the job. We know you up all night. Yep. <laughs> I, you were stocking the shit out of shit. I was like, damn, she put that. She put them coffee, uh, them parts away, really nice. I was like, look at that. She started pouring the powder eggs and everything. Yeah, right, ready. <laughs> shit was ready. He I said powder like, eggs. Powder eggs. She got nah, the powder shit in the pan. We're about, around like 4 30. We're about to have to start buying them powder eggs to them eggs, eggs. We ain't about to do God damn it. Fact, oh, I'm about to buy some chickens. I, I literally looked it up. Oh, I'm about to get a chicken coop. Hey, y'all, it's about to get like that period because they're not feeding us food anymore. Like everything is fake. And um, it, people are going to have to literally live I off really the land. Good. Like, yeah. They've been saying this, and like I got an aunt that I used to always look at her crazy. Like, how are we gonna run out of food? I had some run out of food. You know what's funny? Gary, did you find your puppet? Oh no, not yet. Oh damn, damn. I forgot. I'm getting that fucking puppet. Uh uh-uh. uh. You a bad all, all these people that's going vegetarian and vegan. And I'm a vegan. That. Yeah, but a lot yeah, of the, a lot of those vegetables they've been fake for years. I'm like, I just gotta let go of ranch. Like that's the only thing that got me right now is the ranch dressing. Like I gotta find a, like a a, a vegan ranch, ranch dressing. You can't use ranch. Hey, just hit my it. mama up. She might can help you. Just make it. Get the fucking get the the uh the ranch powder. I can't use, I can't yogurt. use no dairy, so I can't say I'm vegan just yet oh, until put it in yogurt. I yeah. fall off the ranch. Yeah. Greek yogurt is your go to. Oh yeah, yep. Yeah. Actually, yes, Hidden Valley has a Greek yogurt ranch that you could use. Oh, well, see, or you could water. just buy the packs and make your own. That too. Yeah. yeah. Nah. And you can make it as strong as you want now. Yep. But yeah, uh, shit. You want some 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 certain tips on vegan shit? Hit my mom up. She know I don't be know how the fuck she know that. My shit. brother, he vegan, like, but he make his own, like, you know how I'll go, I'll buy Morning Star stuff, or he makes his own meat, like, out of like this powder, or something, flour. Or something. Uh, I would have saw this. A lot of that shit is, um, <laughs> of that shit is mushrooms. Hopes and dreams. So, like, they proteins be mushrooms and shit. Uh huh. I ain't gonna lie. I had uh um, let me see this whole year's vegan dedicated. chicken wings and it was like I them oyster be, mustards. I better be half naked in 2025 <sighs> on Miami oh, no. Beach. Why, why so 20, why 2025? That's when the that's when the like, vegan food the kick in. Too. Like I'm changing my eating habits, but I gotta be in a gym. Like I want I think a year will be a perfect transformation. That's two well, years. Okay. That's two that's years. That's one year. Oh, 2024. I'm sorry. Say, hold up. I know my arithmetic is better than that. What the fuck? 2024. No, this year. Hey, um. Uh, oh, oh, 20. Back. Yeah, you know, my brother said it only takes six months. But yeah. Mm. I want to be. I, you know, Miami. I gotta go. I gotta go to Miami. Okay. Hey, when I have Yes, no, not when a thong. I would never show my. I would. I don't want my ass out. I don't give a fuck how how 
how firm and tight it is. I don't. I just. I don't think like a string in my ass in front of everybody is like. I don't you know what it's not in front of people. That's yeah, true. I grew up a tomboy, so you already know I'm like uh I'll well, put that, on I feel like, like a sports gonna... bra type thing and my, yeah. I want my coochie covered. I, I want my coochie and my butt covered. Sports bra. Oh no, my cheeks is out. Fuck that. Oh, oh wow. Sun's out, buns out. Uh my... yeah, when I lost my weight, my first trip was Miami. <laughs> I went to God, well, my coochie to Miami. hanging out. That was the Miami and March. Like a high school musical. That's and the new thing went, now, man. You gotta have the boot muscle out. This is here, so you just wasn't you just wasn't gonna put it was at this. Oh, oh, you really no, wanted that? No, it don't apply. We Kiki, we yeah. gotta keep using it for every situation. It don't apply. I didn't know she was serious. I kept hearing her. No, but... you're not gonna do it, DC. Don't it's don't don't apply the situation. Uh -oh. DC is his own man. Don't you tell him what he cannot do. <laughs> Don't let no man trying to uh, reverse psychology uh, me and uh, shit. Yeah, uh Don't fall for it, man. That part. <laughs> yeah. I had your back, DC. I had uh, your back. Uh, way back. Way back. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So on, on your podcast. What what's something that you guys do that might be like uh pretty unique? Like I do Fuego Rapido, which is like rapid questions. What do y'all do? We dress sometimes we dress up in character. Oh, like what? Yeah, um, I play uh, sweet meat McGee, a pimp, and um, Miguel he plays uh he has a couple actually, but um he plays a pastor. Mm -hmm. And you play Sweet Meat McGee? Yes. A pimp. Okay. Yeah. He look like an Indian pimp because that beard. Oh, let me see if I can get some pictures for you. <laughs> that shit is yeah. wild. Sweet Meat McGee. Yeah. Um, All right, cool. I, haven't, I haven't figured out. I'm still fucked up by the name myself. Sweet, Sweet Meat McGee. McGee. Yeah, okay. I have I, I have a so I have like two different things in mind for mine, but I haven't figured out like how I want to do it or what I want to do. Um, okay. But it'll, it'll always be something music related when it okay. comes. And yeah, I have right. one that's kind of I have one that's kind of cool. But if I tell y'all, then y'all know when I do it. God oh wow! You know what I mean? Oh, I just want to get on here and uh, wow. tell y'all what, what the fuck. Like a bag used car salesman. It's like it's like tab us around. Motherfucker look like a pussy the wrong way. <laughs> that motherfucker look like he sell nothing but El Dorados and loose cigarettes. Oh my god! Hey, oh shit! <laughs> y'all come check me out on Sweet Meat McGee, keeping y'all ears close <laughs> to the street. You hear me? Yo. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Damn, I'm gonna have some fire for that ass. You feel? Oh my gosh! So one episode that is funny. So the one episode she was in character, and I'm in, <laughs> I'm in, I'm in the chat. She like, yeah, you internet. I'm gonna get your ass. I'm like, wait a minute, I'm out. What? I'm like, oh meet, fuck, out of here. McGee. No man, I like it. Yo. All right, so here, here goes some of my rapid fire questions. Y'all ready? Here we go. All right, <laughs> wings. Flats or drums? Flats. Drums. 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 Uh, wings, because I wear pads. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I, I wish I could meet your mic. I wish I could have just meet the shit out Jesus of Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now you're going to use one. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I know I'm loud as fuck in my house. Out, he got like 64 buttons over there, man. He got Yo, he really buttons. do. He yeah. really do. Well, we've got no uh, time for excuses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yo, what's All up? right. Okay. Um, blue cheese or ranch? Blue ranch. Cheese. Neither. Ranch. Blue cheese. I'm not eating Neither. nobody's fungus. Blue cheese. All right. Okay. All right. Ew. All right. Uh, I guess I can move on from. Okay. Who who will win in the fight? Me. Old Bobby Brown or or young Bobby Brown? Now young I'm talking Bobby about old, I'm talking about old Bobby Brown, like young Bobby, Bobby Brown. Brown versus don't be let's let's go with not new Bobby Brown, don't be cruel Bobby Brown. My young Bobby Brown. I feel like old Bobby Brown had been in jail long enough to know some moves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but 
But young Old Bobby, Bobby Brown, Brown also looked like he can't though. move and it hurt to move. Bobby Brown was coked out his fucking mind every day. That's why he would win. Old Bobby Brown is with Whitney. Young Bobby Brown is before Whitney. Yeah, young Bobby, young, young Bobby Brown is Ghostbuster old. Two soundtrack. Yeah, uh, he's fucking. Bobby don't be cruel sure. with the with the with the tan tan suit on. That's that. I, my I, you know Bobby. what? I would say old Bobby Brown. I think he only got one move, and if it don't work, then he gonna lose. I just first like of all, all his me, old Bobby, Bobby Brown look like he can't uh, move right now. Let me tell you, that boy when he used to be younger, he could pump. He that was his favorite move. <laughs> He that boy knew he could pump. Look, I was like, "Ooh, she that getting all that good thing." Okay, and Janet had it. Okay, mm. yeah, wow. it. No, it was at have, this moment. Somehow, no matter what, what happens, flashback at the same time though, and, and of of something they never had. Facts. <laughs> How you flashbacks to some shit you never had? Say that ugly man don't get no um. Put ugly man silly. get all the pussy. Stop playing. And y'all wonder why I say I'm a three and a half. That's how it works. Listen, Apparently. I prefer ugly nigga. So you just I show me. You, you just show me you can pump. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, I like. So ugly somebody nigga. just walk up to you like, excuse me. <laughs> I like, like what my <laughs> number is. So, so right. is, hey, baby. Hey, 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 tag him out. Hey. Hey, I will see y'all. Yeah, All right, man. Hey, you, ain't you, ain't to you ain't want to snatch the do rag off this time, huh? You took it off early. I did. I was smart enough to take it off before I pressed the button. DC <laughs> was so happy to go to bed. He said, "All right, I'm out." See ya. Yeah, I've been up forty eight hours. I feel like before you go, before you go, DC. My whole thing for he left. I ain't. I ain't yeah, yeah. Oh man. <laughs> go, go, ahead, go ahead and hook, go ahead and hook uh, Kiki up with the before you know. Go ahead and hook up with the. Is that my this moment? Titty no. sprinkles. Mm -mm. I do love me some titty sprinkles. That ain't it. That oh, wasn't it. What is Bro, going on? Okay because it's, the moment is gone. Yeah, You're right. Fine. I'll take titty sprinkles. We'll wait till the welcome we'll wait to the tomorrow. sexy couch. We'll <laughs> we'll wait till tomorrow when you have to explain what happened with your cowboys. Then we're gonna do that. That's what. Oh, I'm hit it now! Hit it down, nigga! Surprise, motherfucker! <laughs> <laughs> Surprise, motherfucker! <laughs> Boy, Surprise, motherfucker. Okay, okay, okay. He could, he could, that, is, he that is good, man. That is good. All right, what else you got, Gary? Uh, what did I say? Who would win in a fight? Uh, young by Brown, old by Brown. Okay, uh. Okay, Mike Tyson. Uh, <laughs> huh? You you taking whichever one can do the pumps correctly? That's that's. Uh, well, doing. Mike Tyson can't pump me. <laughs> Mike Tyson. Yeah. Why well, Mike Tyson it's can't pump you? It's I'm just, not gonna lie. I want to be bit a little bit. It's his voice. It's just it's like that I want to be bit a little bit. You want to be bit a little bit? Is a fucking freak. If y'all haven't caught this shit yet, she's a freak and be you know what? I figured that out. Yes, you baby. know what? You right. I didn't notice it, and then I started seeing some of her comments, and I'm like, yo, hey, yo what? She's a freak. you're the one that put all this together. She the freak. Oh, last was, night. Oh, this is when you first met her. Like, when you first met her, so sweet. No she's like, idea what you're talking about. Hello, hi, everyone. I go to church in my. Oh, I have a radio station. Where that dick at? Hey, I'm, on, I'm trying to get on Apple's radio. What's happening? Yeah. We can definitely talk about it. We coming right. back on February 1st. Y'all had to repay for some licensing. You know how much you got to pay to play music online? It's stupid. Oh, I yeah. could imagine. It's so fucking stupid. Oh, no, but we definitely need to talk because I'm trying to do a radio show. Too. That's, the reason yeah, I only definitely. That's the reason I only play underground music on my podcast. Right yeah. there. Okay, Gary. Next question. Go. All right. Next question. Oh, hey, how about this one? I'm gonna give you some. Let's see what y'all do with this. All right. Everyone say the word roast five times fast. Go. Roast. 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 roast, 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 roast. What do you put in the toaster? Huh? What? what do you put in the toaster? Bread. Toast, bread. Shit. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. Everyone say the word silk five times fast. Silk. 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 silk, 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 silk. What do cows drink? Milk. milk. They oh no, they don't. <laughs> they drink they grass milk. They drink oh. the milk from the cow. So, God so, damn. So, so, so. Uh, there's a meeting in my bed. Wow. Wow. <laughs> All right, here we, here we go with another question. 
if you could only listen to one '90s R&B artist, that's it. All, that's the only music you can listen to. Who, who would it be? Oh my god! I know one. Right? He's a fire. R. Kelly. R. Kelly. R. Kelly. Hey, Wait, yeah. oh no. We still listen we to R. No, Kelly. No, we don't like Robert. We like R. Kelly. Hey, we don't hey. like Robert. We like R. Kelly. In the nineties, in the nineties, we didn't quite know he was a pervert. Uh, okay. We do. You do, but we we you let it rock. You let it rock. You do though. Yeah. Because uh, I, I was like, he married Aaliyah. Wait a minute, isn't she my yeah. age? Fuck going on. Seems like you're ready. Yeah. Man, you ready. Man, who are my you listening to? Telling me no. I'm going boys to men. Oh. oh. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Good answer. Good answer. Yeah, <laughs> on on my on my show, on my show, I did a '90s uh like a a, a bracket. It wound up being boys the men versus Jodeci, and I wound Ooh. up. Jo oh, I forgot about Jodeci. Can I, I change my Jodeci. answer? No. No. <laughs> no. It was um, at this moment Kiki knew. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But I did, I did have a hot take. I like y'all to hear. I feel as though Jodeci versus Drew Hill. I feel as though Drew Hill is better than Josie. But oh, you know, cool. I know, yeah. I know. But but if you if you go down that list of songs, it gets a little shaky after a couple songs, and you can't you can't deny Jodeci their their main songs. But it gets a little shaky. Yeah, I but, agree with you on that one, Gary. I do agree good. with you. On that one. And they I'm from Baltimore, so it was no way that we wouldn't do that. <laughs> they had I'm a hot four, you. maybe. Uh, excuse uh, me, 90 yeah. R&B. Go down the list, Kiki. I want to see the list. Have four songs. <laughs> no, they have more than four songs, but they have hit songs. They did not have more. They have way more than four <laughs> hit songs. Yeah, yeah. Who said they only have four? I, I and they, a and, hot and four. They can come. A hot. Oh, oh, well, we know that's a prerequisite for you. H Town can oh. pump too, as long as they can pump. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm. Uh, I'm damn. I don't know. I really don't fucking know. Fuck. I used to get in trouble for pumping. You remember that uh, Anita Howard song? And we could pump, pump to the early nineties. Oh, I know. I know. Nineties R and B. Tony Braxton. Oof. Ooh. Okay. 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 Yeah. okay. Seven. Um, so seven. Old 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 right. Love should have brought you home last night, Tony Braxton. Seven whole nights. Hey, look at that cable cut right <laughs> off. I keep opening my headphones and do it. Let me leave that alone. Your headphones and the lights cut off? It's been long. no, it the screen cut off because with the beats, it's a screen that pops up on my phone that tells oh. me the power. Oh, uh, the battery has okay. been okay. over Welcome seven back. days for me. God damn it. <laughs> It's, it's been, been over long? seven days. It's, it's been, been over long. seven days for me. It's been way over Ooh. seven days for me. <laughs> and I'm just about to. I'm oh, due. Wow. I'm due. I'm due. So wait. Hey, but guess what? Tony Braxton is Christmas time song. That's that's top tier to me. Okay, raw. Who is you pumping to? Who am I pumping to? Raw. Oh. This is not a pumping question. Yeah, this is what I said bumping pump. to like listen. Oh, I thought you said pumping to. Pump. No, she said pumping. No, no she definitely said pumping. I did not say. Pump. I said bumping to. Like okay. bumping. My my nineties RC. I, I, like, I would probably go with Gary. Yeah. Your if name sound like be... Gary. Raw sound like raw. You <laughs> <He> said raw. <laughs> it was at this moment. Yeah. <laughs> he knew See how it works now. That's when you use it. That's when if you fucking use. If I'm just going what? with one, I gotta think one. about a full catalog. One, I gotta one. go with R. Kelly because he got the longer catalog. That's true, yeah. though. That's very true. Yeah. If, if R. Kelly wouldn't have been going through all this stuff and he would have did a versus, there would have been nobody alive. Oh, there would have no. been nobody to make not, not Robert Sylvester <laughs> Kelly. No way. Oh, think shit. about it. <laughs> if you listen to R. Kelly, right? You can listen. He said you can only have one. You can listen to all the songs that he have written. Yeah, he written for right. everybody. So R. Kelly was the greatest pick. So I don't want who who okay. Jodeci. So that kind of that kind of changes no, things. You pick then Jodeci, I can go with Babyface at that point too. Oh, oh. You know, baby face. R. Kelly will baby smoke Babyface easily too. He'll get you him the, right you about the it. You the motherfucking lie. You the listen, motherfucking Rob, lie. Listen, Rob. Babyface. If we had some good music Riley, in the 90s. If, you stand, 
if she just she just changed the stipulations and said you could listen to all the shit that they wrote as well. You know how much shit Babyface wrote, baby? He did. On, he like, but remember, when, remember, when versus, remember when, like, at the height of COVID, when Versus really came out and everybody was watching? Babyface so had Babyface versus Teddy Riley. I, Teddy couldn't Riley. Believe, I couldn't believe Teddy Riley lost. I'm like, yeah. did all these Michael Jackson songs. I'd have like, play that motherfucking album. I, it it would have been no yeah. way Babyface should have, I mean, Teddy Riley should have lost to Babyface yeah. with all of Michael Jackson albums. That's crazy. Uh, oh, y'all remember that baby face and um, Tamia? What was the name of that song? Oh my god, who you got, Flame? Uh, I don't, don't do oh, me Flame like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did, yeah, she did you like I'm that. Gonna, I'm like I'm baby face now. I sang Whip Appeal at a uh, talent show in like the third grade. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. I don't in know why the third grade, let me do it. Let me do it. Let me do it. I would love to hear you sing that right now in front I know everybody be like, no, it's R. Kelly. I, I ain't said I sang it well. I said I sang it. And, and well, when the verses punk. came out in the nineties, you just punk. really petty. And I was like, damn, yo, really, yo, really petty for real. Yo had all the Grammys lined up behind them. I was like, damn. Yo, oh really yeah, they was the only way on that. So one. what's yours, Gary? I would go with Michael Jackson, but I don't, I don't think we would consider him a nineties. I mean, he oh. transcend all of it. I would just go with him. Yeah, yeah well, he wins. Right. Oh, yeah. What about Amri? Well, shoot, since we randomly... Okay. I'm going to say TLC. Shoot. I was a child in the 90s, y'all. Oh, yeah. And okay. I was chilly for oh, real. Nice. <laughs> the moves and Sticking everything. to those rivers and lakes. And they taught know. us how to creep <laughs> and everything. So, uh, I couldn't what sing that either. It was a crazy ass video. It was like, damn, yo had AIDS. Wow. Yo, right. Yeah. You had AIDS. Looking at that mirror shit, and they was all touching. Wow. Yo, he I got here. That's the first time I seen a nigga get shot I'm on the corner. Only mother gazing <laughs> out of the window. First time I seen a nigga get shot on the corner. They had ghost and shit. Right. God damn. Oh, oh man, crazy. that was that was that was a uh, yeah. That was, was a good one. That was time. That was that was when you tell kids you just had to be there. Like his help is fading. Okay, okay. Yeah, Next question, Gary, because he keep about to give us a fucking concert. Right. Y'all don't okay. hear me. <laughs> no, we don't. Oh wow, she hit yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't wanna All hear right. you. <laughs> if you became if you became mayor of your city to not tomorrow, what three things would you be like a champion for? That's like a you know getting rid of the walking dead that's here. That's number one. Because these okay. bitches and niggas look like the walking dead. Uh we need to figure out how to get this motherfucking sales tax down. I'm going to be the goat on that because we're going to have no taxes just in this city only. No um, taxes? No sell taxes, yeah. Because fuck this shit. This shit is almost 10% here. So, yeah. What? Uh, for what? For what? Sales tax. Oh, just, oh, damn. Sales tax is 10%? Yeah. Um, Over overrated ass New York. See, look at that. I, I live in Louisiana. Watch him out. Oh, wow. I think Philly close to that. I think we like six or seven percent at this point. But that's that's no that's a little average. I'm used to nah, that. That shit's still vicious. ten percent is high as it's hell. Georgia is about six or seven percent, so I'm used to that. You know, but this nine percent shit is ridiculous. Um, Damn. I don't have a third one, but those two for sure. I would be known for oh get all the carries and put them in jail. Ooh. <laughs> Racism wins. I would be known for um kids, like I would be known for saving Man, kids. Kids. no um okay, kids. Um, yeah, like like building up communities, having something for them to do. Yeah, that's lit. saving kids from being abused and feeding hungry kids and all stuff like that. Um oh, love the kids. Uh, <laughs> I was gonna say something nasty, but I don't want to be known for that. Uh, um, we're here now. We're here now. Uh, we oh, what is it? We're here, here now. This I was gonna um I was gonna be known for being having the biggest and supporting the biggest private club of naked men dancers. Oh, for like, for like the all the boss bitches that don't got nothing else to do and need to like go see Make some press. Yes. <laughs> um, Are we still dry humping? Are we still humping? Huh? Dry dry oh, dry no, no, this this club is gonna be no. You can dry hump. You just can't get. You can't have no skin to skin contact though. Okay. You can get on. You can get on, you can get on him as long as you got your pants on. They can't put dick on your forehead. 
Well, you can smack <laughs> it. You can smack it, but it has to have um the um uh, the elephant draws on. You know, put the dick in the trunk. Smack okay. It. Yeah. And consent. And consent is important. Yes. Yeah. And then look, look, look at what Amron is. And then um the oh, third, yeah. the third yeah. thing is bringing more room. money to if the you inner want city. To room, you can okay. it already. What? I don't. I like I'm gonna be honest with you. Room, I might want to look, right but I might not want to be smacked with every penis in there. I mean, I'm just yeah. saying, as a woman personally, I. Yeah. First of all, you got to be my man to slap me with a penis in my face. I don't know. Now I've had somebody smack me in Vegas with theirs, and it was a a white guy. <laughs> it was a. It was a. <laughs> it was so funny. But listen, when he did it, I didn't even know he was going to do it because, first of all, I was standing up. I was just being loud, being all extra how I am. I and he came, the ran across the table, and just pumped my forehead. And I said, "What the hell?" Mm -mm. Y'all, and it wasn't nothing big. It was just like a little, you know. <laughs> I think that's what would make me upset. Like, don't do that. <laughs> hey, but Ooh. I ended up winning, and I got it like on their their. They put me on stage, all type of stuff. It was a dope night. It was a great mm -hmm. Vegas night. If you don't get them tigo bitties, I thought she she putting them on the glass or something. What's Man, <laughs> the world feeders. Goodness. <laughs> She got them world feeders. You ain't got to go to the gym. You just lift them That's up. That's Dolly Parton. It's after dark already. Oh my gosh! This is a go this is what do you call them pages? Uh, she on there. She on there with Canudo. 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 Only okay. fans, bitch. Only fans. Yeah. Damn, I'm surprised yeah. she didn't come back yet. Christy. She's still getting whipped with that whip. Yeah, I'm about to say she getting her head because she got right real here. cute before yeah. she left. I said she about to go make that money. I, I gotta get up. <laughs> I sitting in that chair too long hurt. Shit, fuck. Yeah. But oh goddamn, y'all, that break was much needed. I know it was, honey. I'm losing my voice, fucking with y'all. It's so. Uh, you be all right. You got 15, you got what? 14 hours to go. Yeah, I. That's okay. I'll have my hot tea in the morning again, like I did this morning. You know what? I'm a, I'm gonna try to stay up because I I want to go to sleep at night tomorrow night. You feel me? Like I don't I hate sleeping during the day. I feel like I lose I'll miss out on so much. I agree. That's one of the hard things about working third shift. Yeah. So like, and I don't gotta work no more till third. You know, Thursday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I'm off. Yeah. Okay. And I don't have any clients right now, so it's just like solicit myself and say, hey, who wants to be a Bad boy. <laughs> oh, shit. Gary, you got locks. Yep. Uh -oh. Yo, I am truly a virgin. I just okay. Talked this way. Okay. Let's we do out it. here. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Sorry. All right. Uh, what other question I used to ask? Uh, uh, what would be known for? See, I ain't go yet, Gary. Me either. Um, oh, you. <laughs> I would. Okay. So I don't know if I stated this before, but I live right by the beach. And I don't live in a diverse city. Where are you Raleigh, at? We're talking about being places. I live in Wilmington. Where is that? What state? Oh, North Carolina. Where Michael Jordan's from? What? Mm. You said Liberty? I want to be your neighbor. I want to live. You, you don't have to say. Amazing. You don't okay. have to okay. do this when you say Mike. We know who Michael you, Jordan is. We don't. You don't have to do that. Did you okay. say Liberton? You was what? a hater. You a hater oh, on Michael. Oh, you a hater on hey. Cowboys. My Can fans be out there. My brother lives in Wilmington. Her, can you just let her just be great and name her three things she'll be famous for? All my oh, family, the, uh, my uh, fam, I got family in Wilmington. When you coming? It'll right, be fun. Right, right, my right. brother keeps telling me I need to come, and I'm like, no. Nah. Wait till it get hot. It'll That's be what he said last yeah. night. I need to come, but I, I, I just. Oh wow! Wow. Oh, I'm, pro I'm yeah. probably gonna hang up on y'all so I can. <laughs> or. Or hear us out. Don't or, mind me. It's nighttime. I get like this. Or, or stay on. <laughs> or stay on. No, <laughs> y'all remember. We only got we only got 25 likes. It's gonna go up. It's gonna <laughs> remember up. That it's it's the 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 roof. Roof. Put your hey. cash app as your name. Y'all remember already have the hey, hey, one episode. I was on somebody's podcast and my cash app was my name. <laughs> my there you go. Oh shit. 
Y'all remember when Facebook Lives first came out and everybody was fucking on them, Jones? Yo, that yeah, shit was people wild. People was really wilding out. Emron, was wild. Emron, I'm so sorry. It seems like once you talk nasty, it takes... I am so sorry. Mm-hmm. What three things are you going to be known for, mm-hmm. girl? Yeah, now I feel weird. Um, So, my city is big on sex trafficking. Um, yes. well, and damn. black women just get picked up and disappeared like Thanks, it's a people. normal thing. Okay, Thanks, I don't want to live by you. Yeah, it's, it's a nice little city though, but you know. it is. It's a nice city, but as a black woman, you know, you gotta be prepared when you leave the house. God, and it's God. old, young. They taking big bitches too. I was shocked. I know that's yeah. what makes me so scared. Like leave my big ass alone. I thought that would save me. I really thought <laughs> that would save me. Hey, you got a guy. He Amron, starts thinking just the beat you know, BBWs is in right now. Listen, she yeah, starts yeah. giving skills help and these yeah, Like I, I was shocked. Like that really happened. Yo, that is they, they, they hey they want wow. that's with me. I guarantee you, I'll be just walking, they be like, Hell no, nah, I'm good. They're gonna say, nah, that's a nigga. Leave that motherfucker alone. He keep bigger than them niggas that be stealing bitches. So hell yeah, she like they like nah, she gonna be hey, my hey, ass. Hey, I did that. God made me. God Man, she built me snatched for. up too. Yeah. It's a lot of niggas that got their haircut too. like her too. So they gonna be like, oh, that's a nigga. <laughs> she throwing that sweet meat McGee shit. Period. <laughs> Period. The, side, the sideways pussy mustache. Oh. <laughs> Oh, Bro, you can go stand in the corner. <laughs> but I want to do something as far as helping with that because it's getting ridiculous. Okay. Um, trafficking. okay. A friend of mine recently lost her daughter, like straight up. She just gone to the wind. Oh, Dang, my God. since like October. Oh, um, and that's the sad part about it because wow. you don't have closure. You can't even be like, she's passed away. You don't know where she is. You don't know what if she alive or dead. And you know, they mm-hmm. take them and like, uh, you know what I'm saying? I just got to tell the harsh truth. You know, they take them because as a truck driver, we have to we have to go through extensive training in it. Like if we, if we see it. Yeah. They take them and they get them out of the country as fast as they can and, and put and them, sell them. And put them to work as either sexual and they were taking black men at one time, too. But mm. I don't know. They, it kind of died off because they were putting them to work as slaves, too. Wow. But women are being sex trafficking. Kids are being kids are being taken from as young as like nine years old to go to do that do sex it, yeah. slaves. And then after they're done with them after a certain age, they just throw them to the streets out there. They don't even get them back home. They just throw them to the streets. So sad. It's crazy. It's crazy. That, that went real sad real fast. Oh, real shit. quick. So yeah. finish your story. Finish out. Amber. Okay, name the two. other two. It's just sad. Two, I don't know how I'm gonna fix it, but we need to do something with diversity. Like I was so jealous, raw, when you were like, you ain't see white people growing up. I ain't have that luxury. Nah, um, it's white people like a motherfucker. Uh huh. In many places, especially growing up, I had to figure this out. Like I had friends that really weren't my friends. We were just the only two black people there, so it's like we besties. <laughs> yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. Um. And that's kind of a harsh reality. But because of that, I forcibly try to put my child in black spaces because I don't want her to have the same experience. Wow. But it's really like... Hey, you want to know something? It's so crazy because it's actually different Like when you grow up around all black people because it's like... You it's not a jealousy, but it's like you can be around white... Dang. You can be around... <laughs> you know what if I mean? you get fired from your job, we we're not paying for it. I'm just like, you know, it's, it's you, cool because it's cool. I got something. I got something locked up anyway. This ain't I, but I just don't want to, you know, we know, drugs. but listen, I don't know how to be like all the way myself around now. So that's uh, the thing. I don't, you couldn't be. that was a interesting topic. Me and my co-host, we were trying to do because I didn't realize I don't code switch. Like this is literally me all the time. That's good though. That's good. Me, I'd be like, oh my God, I gotta, I can't be too black because they're gonna lock me up. Uh, like, that's just how I am because, like, I, first of all, like, I got beat up by the cops for no reason. You know what oh. I'm saying? I got a scar in my lip. They banged my head. I went through a lot with, with people. So it's just like, and then I got arrested for not even stealing, but because she said I was stealing. You know what I'm saying? So it's like so many different ways you gotta be like, okay, can I act this way? Then act. Unless I'm around them for a minute, 
and like I could start if I drink around them, like when I used to drink, we could get along. Other than yeah. that, I, 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 I'm just like so uncomfortable. One of my favorite, and I don't like that. Filmed in Wilmington. One of your favorite what? TV shows was filmed in Wilmington. Which was it? Don't be trying to change the subject on me. Was it Dawson's Creek? No. Was it One Tree Hill? It damn sure was. Yes. <laughs> You know what? Studio. I would just be quiet. <laughs> no, we like no. That, thank you for your input, Kiki. Kiki, that was good. <laughs> Kiki that was good. I love your but story. But you know what? <laughs> but I think that is, you know, I think that you really highlighted. You know, some people don't feel comfortable. It's like, yeah, you don't want to be your real so. No, nope. but you know, ain't no point of code switching because they ain't gonna accept you even if you code switch. So I ain't my way either way, you, you either fuck with me or you don't. I don't give that's a fuck. It. And that's on yeah. period. You know that's, what's so crazy? White and people that's on period. Protect- I'd be like, bro, leave me alone. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it. She's like, why? Ooh. The crazy part is, most white people see me and instantly get nervous, and I ain't even worrying about you, motherfuckers. Even the ones, even that's, the ones that's I've the worked part with, I don't like. Like, why is no, you nervous? The ones I've worked with, they be even more nervous because they be like, "Yo, he talks so much shit. Like, I can just imagine how the fuck he's he gonna talk to me." I'm still uh-huh. here. I'm just getting my chicken. No, nah, she ain't uh, gonna be a part of this portion of it. Uh huh. No, I'm still with you. Oh, you know what? My she, still, she still got no, another no, hold answer. On, hold on. This, she she's only on chicken? answer number two. Yeah, chicken, chicken. Right. No, you come back. Bring your chicken back, back on here. Everybody Everybody get some chicken. Chicken. Bring your ass here, girl. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. You want to go get it? You better have the chicken so we know it's true. Everybody, yeah, it's compound chicken. We want to know if you bristle and all that too. Hey, I listen, I worked, um, when I lived in the Poconos, I worked at this um, you warehouse. You in the Poconos? Did, yeah. It's so uh, beautiful out there. I worked at this this warehouse that did the Palmer's <laughs> products, and it was you know, a mixture of people, but it was this one older white lady that talked so much shit, and she used to be like, yeah, you can't touch this one, you can't touch this one. No, baby, you can't touch this one. Bitch, we can't touch you. She did some weird fuck shit. I cussed her ass out after that every day. She was like, hey, hey, internet. How you doing? Yeah. yeah. I'm like, bitch, if you don't get my face, I'll spit in your shit. You better back the fuck up by my face. That bitch tried to legit get me fired. I'm like, bitch. No, white, I gotta, and I got a promotion reason, on her dumb ass fucking around. For Stupid some reason, ass. white people go, get so scared of me that they want to help me with shit that I don't even need help with. <laughs> All right, I think so, they would be scared around me, man. Like, I... I got this reputation down here as like the whitest black person most people know. And white people say that to me as if they believe it's a compliment. Like somehow that. telling me that I'm not as black as they used to is uh is, is supposed to make me feel better. And then I That's get on feel like this and I'll be feeling like, am I black enough? Like I, I gotta blacken up real quick. You got a complex <laughs> now and shit. God yeah. damn. You get that. Hold um, on. Damn, Slam, we make you feel like you're not black enough. My bad, cuz. Hey, man, you know, I, I curse a little bit more when I get on this drink. You know, I, I know that's I, right. I throw the slang in there or something. I try to f- switch the accent up real quick. I know, I, I know, man. Last time he came on the show, man, he he came on the show I said he was the calmest motherfucker on the planet. He was like, nah, we about to break that shit. Fuck that's all that. I'm, that's because I'm Let abstinent. Let me talk to Flam. I'm abstinent. I don't got to deal with all of that, that other shit. Uh, Flam, this guy. You work I your want you to be yourself no matter what. I don't mm-hmm. care what nobody label you as. You grab your dick and you tell them suck it next time they say some bullshit like that. Okay, grabbing them big like, That's them. the blackest thing I've ever seen you do, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a question because I'm actually dealing with this right now. At you know your age right now, would you date someone? Would you date another black person that's never dated other black people? No. Hell no. Mm-mm. Okay, so not weird for being like that's a red flag. No, yeah, that's okay. a that no. I, fuck out of here. I, feel no. Like you, I feel like you try to blackface me. No, right? Well, no. Why <laughs> haven't they dated black people before? They not around them, or so that was the excuse. So here's what he was trying to say. Basically, you know, you hunt where when well, you eat what you hunt or something. Like he was saying that he was just like black girls ain't like me, but I'm just confused. Like, well, how? Why did you come here now? <laughs> like, I feel like an experiment. Right. I just want to see what you black bitches is like. Yeah. How old is he? I'm getting that thing like flying. How, how old is like, he? What type of, like what kind of black person you think I am? Like I'm just confused. Am, well, I ain't gonna lie to you. You you do got. You need to have a proper proper voice. Yeah. Right. 
But I'm blackity black. <laughs> right. really is. First of all, we know you blackity black when she said, I ain't paying for no dick. I said, oh, that was dead serious it. with that shit. Yo, not <laughs> and was mad. I'm I was you know, back it up. I'm gonna tell you that I went to uh I went to Marquette, it's a Jesuit school, Jesuit college in uh, in Milwaukee, and it's majority white. And it's only a couple of you know us black folks on campus. But it, the black girls really don't want to fuck with you. Like they don't, they don't pay you no mind. Like you get a lot of play from white girl. Like they, you don't show up for class. They be like, "Was you sick? I I got the notes for you. You need me to you know come over and help you study." The black girls won't won't look at you twice. Yo, crazy shit. When I first got to Hawaii, that shit blew my mind because every black chick I cracked on shot me down. But all the white girls, the Filipino girls, everybody else, they was with it, with it. It, it was I was out there for like at least a year and a half before I finally got to tag a black girl. And that shit felt like I conquered the earth at that <laughs> fucking point. Like that shit was crazy. Like, so I definitely get what you're saying. That shit blew my fucking mind. Like and like I said, I grew up not seeing white people like that. Not seeing yeah. Filipinos and all that. I didn't know what a Filipino looked like until I joined the Navy. So. Me tagging Filipinos and white girls was like, oh shit, like this, this what everybody was so excited about? What the fuck is this shit? It ain't no thing. No, I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie. If you, I sent y'all uh, part one of my story. I know. Oh yeah, it. we need yeah. to see the rest of that story, yo. It's, it's, go, go check my fucking stuff. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah okay. all three parts is on there. Yeah, that I shit was the fuck out of pocket right there. The rest of that, because that first part, I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> I'm confused with these stories. Like, are you doing like the new 2023 stories? Like, no. So I only did one. I was going to do a whole series of them. Well, no. The team was supposed to do a whole series of them, but then everybody started getting nervous. Oh, I don't know if I want to put this shit out there like that. But the I'm ready you away, through. Gary. This shit was old, so I really didn't give a fuck. But I basically told I a story I ran about you away. the first Filipino chick that I ever fucked. Remember that? Mm, okay. And she had some mystical, myst, mystical pussy. Yeah, just go. <laughs> if you go watch it. I ain't about to sit here and tell the story again for. Is all you, you talking me. about me? <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, that shit was that shit was out of pocket. Like that bitch made me start rethinking myself. But here's the funny part, though, y'all. When I be in situations where it's like a majority black spaces, like when I went to college, I went to HBCU, NCCU, um, and I'm telling you, I had the time of my life because I've never seen so many like black people in once, and there was so many fine black men like everywhere. Oh, Ooh. ain't they sexy? Just everywhere. But when I moved to Montgomery, that was just different in general because I found out. People don't speak English in Montgomery. I don't know what it was. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, my kid's father from Montgomery, and when I first started fucking with him, were the Geechee? Like, huh? Huh? No, they country as fuck. It it's ain't certain, they just country as fuck. It's just yeah. certain letters that they're not fully pronouncing. Mm -hmm. Um, like I felt so bad because I worked in retail. I worked at CBS, and I had a man ask me for like Robitussin, and I had to like look at somebody else. Like, what are you saying? He said, "Rub, rub, rub." Hold up, hold person. up. I'm, I'm, once you I'm, be around him for a while, you start getting it. Nope, I, that, that nope, was me. nope. Oh, that was, was me. Yeah, I was I in the navy with a motherfucker. I believe he was from like Louisiana or some shit like that. I know it was yeah, deep down south somewhere. So this here. motherfucker, he used to talk. It was one day we sitting there, and no bullshit. This is how the conversation went. Yep, 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 yep. Beer. <laughs> so I'm like, what? What, what the fuck you say? And everybody else was like, oh, he said, is you trying to get some beer? So anytime <laughs> it was just me and him, I just wouldn't fucking talk because I never knew what the fuck he was saying. Because everything he said just sounded like yip, 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 yip. And then I would hear the last fucking word every fucking time like clockwork. I had I had a barber from Louisiana and I used to walk away with fucked up haircuts all the time because he'd be asking me like, do you want me to fade this out or you want me to, I ain't understand what the fuck he was saying. So I just was like nodding, smiling and nodding and shit. And he was doing all kinds of stuff to my show. Up. I had no idea what he was talking about. Yeah, sometimes you get to talking to a country motherfucker. You have no fucking clue. Uh, I thought none. that was cute though. For some reason, I thought that was so cute. And I got like extra points because of the way I talked. They thought I was a fucking unicorn. Um, so, oh, that that's, why you to, that's why you ain't want people to talk 
when they came over, they just was. Oh, hey, yep. <laughs> but that that? that's a, yeah, that's how my kid's father is. Uh, I'm about to tell a dude that, like, it's part yeah. of my fantasy if you say nothing, nothing. Yep. <laughs> but bye right. when it's time to go. Listen, when you come over, <laughs> you better be lucky I ain't single because I come in that bitch a mute with my dick out. Fuck you talking about? That's what I like. <laughs> that's what I like. She there said a nigga hey, that don't. Hey, hold on, hold on. Yeah, do that, do that again because that was actually the perfect way to be. Do that again. Okay, I'm gonna be honest with you. When he finally started, I tried to make him my boyfriend. It for is real. something wrong with my screen. I can't see here. None of that shit. It it just... Roger that. <laughs> Mm -mm. I don't know. It depends. Like I like him a little stupid, but he was just a little too far gone. Just yeah. a little too much. A little stupid. Oh, wow. Medium yeah. stupid. Yeah. 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 Likes him a little ugly, and you like him a little stupid. What is going on? Dumb. No, I like them. So hold on. Let me ask y'all. Can they be ugly? A little ugly? Medium ugly? Or what? Medium ugly? This is steak. Well, yeah, yeah, it, it's levels yeah, to ugly. It's, it's levels. levels to ugly. Because I, don't know, I like them yeah. a little medium. You, like, you get the match again, Ross. I like them. I like them from medium to, <laughs> to so from medium ugly to cute. I could fuck with, but anything beyond that, I'm like, bro. What the but fuck? it's it's like when medium you get down to when you get down to a certain level, you gotta have personality about you. If you ain't got no personality, yeah. you can even be fine as hell. I mean, fine. Yeah. As hell. So on a scale, on but a if scale you open your mouth. On a scale of one Excuse to ten, me, what raw, is medium ugly? Raw. You will not talk over. I think me, medium okay? ugly is like a three. Yeah. Yeah, because like I, I, I knew he was. I knew he was about to throw his hands up. He said he had three and a half. So no, yeah, no. you good. You good. Flan, Flan know what I'm saying. <laughs> I, we were told that. that medium a ugly three and a half like is good. good. I said medium ugly was like a six. That was my medium. Yeah, but yeah. somebody yeah. told us that medium ugly was like six. an eight. I'm like, there we how go. the fuck is medium ugly an eight? No, medium mm -hmm. ugly is, 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 is a like four. The eight, the eight is the eight is sexy. It's, like it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. The fuck? The eight can get it. <laughs> like you know what I'm saying? The eight, I'm just like, you yeah, I want you. What the fuck? I want you. You want you know what? I want to ask this question now that we have a healthy mix of men and women in here and other content creators. Do y'all think these people who only talk about black men versus black women conversations are actually hurting the black community? Because that's how I feel. Because oh, I don't... Yeah. White people ain't doing this shit. Asian people yeah. ain't doing this shit. Oh, yeah. And I'm you just, know what? When they do it, and it's, and it's brought up a lot, especially on my show, it's brought up a lot. And it's always like the black woman this or the black man that. And I'm just like, it pisses me off and everybody know I will go off. Like It sounds like y'all hate us. Yep. And if you and if you want to be gay, just be gay. Just do it. It's okay. I'm okay with that. Because it, it literally they blame black women for everything and I'm just like, "Excuse me?" I mean, it sounds like when when it, when men are going on and on about black women, it literally sounds like I don't like you. I don't mm -hmm. want you. I'd rather be with my boys. So go yep. fuck your boys. And that's okay. Yeah. Problem solved. I'm gonna pull a raw. I'm going to I'm gonna pull one of Raw's moves right now. Here's the thing, right? Yeah. As a content creator, like this is what we're doing. Like, if people make that type of content, even if we spend time complaining about it or reposting it to talk about how dumb it is, that is teaching them and the algorithm that that's what we want to see, and so they keep doing it. Even if we just complain about it, it talking about how stupid it is, we be giving it shine. So just like if niggas talking that bullshit, like just pay it no mind, do something else. But the more we talk about it, and the more we like comment on it and repost it like that but like but men constantly bring it up no matter what like now, somewhere thing, in the show it's gonna be something about a black woman never do is bring up race with anything i say women or men niggas or bitches something like that i'm never gonna say black men black women because we could sit here and say that only black women do it, but it's white bitches doing the same thing. It's Asian bitches doing the same thing. It's yeah. Indian bitches doing the same thing. Like, it ain't just us that do certain shit. Now, we may season our food correctly, but that yeah. don't mean that other, it's sprinkles of people in other uh, other ethnicities that don't season a motherfucker. They don't say that. They, they, be trying, they be trying to compare. The thing is, they try to compare as, like, I know you don't. But it's a lot of black men that compare us to other races, and they rather be with other race women because they're more submissive. Uh, oh no, I've, I've, I've said 
I've said since I started fucking, I'll fuck somebody of any race, but I won't marry or be with you. You can get the I dick, but that's about as far as it's going to go. That's, that's yeah. why it looks like it's more of them than it is of, of, of other niggas, because we talk about them all the time. We don't talk about people that's, that's not saying fucked up shit. Like We talk about the people that's, that's doing the stupid yeah. stuff, and that's why it seems like it's more of them, because we always talking about it. And the dumb shit, get, like you said, it, it gets more views. It gets the views. You know, I'm sitting there like, damn. It but it is it's hurting our community though it does take because it feels, it early. Go ahead, it I'm feels like and vice versa the woman talking about yeah, the man crazy the yeah. women talking about the man crazy is the same way because you it's just like get upset, right huh nothing <laughs> what <laughs> you, said, Go ahead. Lay, lay Go ahead, Kiki. you said gary about to get upset no, no i'm not getting no. nothing they oh. with you. Go ahead, keep going. No, I don't want to talk now. <laughs> no, for real. Go ahead, lay your point. No, go we, for real. We, we can't be doing that 45. He, okay. He was okay. doing the uh, cutting uh, you off. But shit. basically, basically, right. is it's just basically we all need to show each other love because we all got the same struggle. And and I do agree with black men. Y'all do have a little bit more hatred towards y'all because y'all are the strongest link to us. But we we got the same story and we need to stand together, not against each other. That's all I'm trying to say. That's, Listen, that's my wife eat that opium. So I went back to the motherland for months. Your wife is what? Eat that opium. Oh, okay. Is she? But um, I'm gonna be honest with you. I've been in a pink peen situation, oh, and I was scared. No. I was scared. It didn't look right. Uh -uh. A pink. What is that? Was you on when I said I got race fished? Siri, when you lied about <laughs> no, no, <laughs> what How did that happened? He had a very great tan. Siri, doc, call Dr. Umar. And <laughs> he, he had like this olive, 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 he had this olive skin, like his tan was perfect. He looked like a mixed breed, so I'm, mm -hmm. I'm okay with that because he's. You know, you got more black in you, t according to me. So I'm like, all right, he had locks. You know, he had the good hair. So I'm like, all right, cool. We chilling. He took his shirt off. Bitch, it was pale white. I said, get the fuck out of here. You got me <laughs> fucked up. Ah, uh, such a good story. He was a white, white motherfucking. Uh, what's that what did shit you, I said? What did y'all hit it off? Like Volkswagen van tatted on him. And did you at least let him hit one time? No, the only pink me I like is ham. Nice, yeah. nice. That's I like that. That was that was that was good. It seemed like you had that one in for a long time. That was good. No, I like, say it all the time. No, I'm just saying it seemed like that's what I'm saying. It seemed oh, yeah, like you yeah, yeah. had that loaded up. Let me tell you something. When I the, the warehouse I was talking about, I worked at my boss was white, and we was having this conversation, and they were talking about it. He and they talk about this, and I said that shit to him. That nigga turned as red as the live sign on here. He laughed so motherfucking hard that he was so red. He was like, you know what? I can't I can't even fuck with y'all no more. And he just he left. He was like, nah. I was like, yeah, only pink me. I fuck with him. I don't fuck with that shit. Hey, <clears throat> not to be nosy or nothing, but Emron, did y'all get any donations to uh within this last a day or so? Um, no. not what I expected. We're up to 200 yeah. though. Okay. okay. But I'm okay. I'm gonna be okay. honest with you though. A hundred of that's for my daddy. Oh, I know. Man. But, but I'll take it. Oatmeal, oatmeal. Yeah. yeah. But it, it goes back to what Raw was saying. Now, if we would have been on here really wilding out and people would have knew about it, it would have been like, oh, yeah, a lot of people would have been watching. But yeah, I didn't even know about really it until Annie told me. Oh, well, look at that. Well, we're glad that you're here. Um, I was actually talking to uh, Zion. We could have, we could have, have worked on marketing. Like, I'm really need to work on that. I'll, I'll own it. You know, I definitely, I'm definitely Me gonna link too. up with, I'm definitely gonna link up with him and have a conversation. All I know how to do is share stuff. I missed him. I had logged off when he came on. No, yeah. he actually, he, he was, he was a cool I, boy. Yeah, he was yeah. a cool boy. Uh, I was going, I was like tapping maybe. back and forth into when y'all was on. And yeah. he had me cracking up certain parts. I was like, okay, I see you, my boy. I, res I respect the fact that... And he down here with me. You got a lot of gay dudes that feel like, well, I ain't got to tell you shit. And I respect the fact that he like, yo, what the fuck? I'm gay. I can fucking talk about the shit. It is right. what the fuck it is. Like, mm -hmm. right. be open with those it. Those are the ones we respect, right? Exactly, exactly. Okay. Like I wasn't mad at the boy at all. And he was actually kind of funny on the low too. It was cool. Mm -hmm. 
I definitely followed him on the gram. I told you I'm gonna hit him up. You yeah, he you followed a marketing me. G, you a marketing guru. Let's get this shit popping, <laughs> Slum. Fuck you talking about. And I am getting that list together of everybody's handles, and everyone will get an email of that just to make sure we all still stay in touch yeah. and follow speaking each other. Up, speaking of Amron, I would like for you to email me too, and not just uh DC send me the email. Mm. That would be nice. I would appreciate it. You I got like a couple emails shit. from Amron. She sent out a no, few. I didn't. I didn't get none from her. All mine oh. came from DC. DC forward everything to me. Are you okay? So I have an assistant. Did you get anything from Opulence Radio at all? Because if no. Sammy not doing her job, this is a problem. No. So uh, what happened was, so when I talked to DC, he said, "What that happened?" That sounds was, so player. My I'm all about to get somebody <laughs> fucking fired. No, I yeah, ain't trying to fire. Right now. My partner, that uh, Myron, he got the emails, but I added him. So my original email didn't get him, but he got him because he was added in. You know how you could put the spot for add a guest? So he got the emails and I didn't. So I don't know if mine just got looked over because there's a lot of, when I looked at it, once he uh, forwarded to me, it's a lot of fucking emails on there. So it's easy to miss one or two, possibly. Right, but that's still her job. You did say you did have an assistant because I see... Sada Marion, yeah, see, me. Yeah, I got something from her and I got something from you, also. yeah. No, I didn't, yeah. I didn't get now. What I did get, I did get the email in the beginning asking for my logo and stuff like that, and then I never got that. That's the weird thing, like, we, we gotta I, work on this. I never got that email, that's yeah, crazy because I, I got that, that. I got that email, I sent it back with my logo, and actually, both times because I signed up twice for the two different slots. So both times I got the email. The second one I didn't reply to because I knew y'all already had it. So I was okay. like, I'm sending it again. It, it is what it is. But the other day I happened to be talking to Draymo and she, if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't even have known about the emails. And then I hit DC up. So he forwarded everything to me. And you okay. know what's so crazy? Because I signed up for two different ones, but with two different uh, emails for the two different podcasts. With the logo, I sent both of our logos. I only got one flyer back with one podcast logo and not the other one. Oh, shit. <laughs> but see, that's the thing. Like I said, it's so many emails on that list. I'm pretty sure it's easy to miss one or two. Because it was when I seen it, I'm like, damn, this is a lot of motherfuckers. Like, yeah. Yeah, but that's well, that's really great, though. That's dope. That's still her job, like Amar yeah. said. That's still, <laughs> that shouldn't have Fire so I, I heard her it. ass now. Hey, listen. <laughs> Don't you fire them on behalf of me because I ain't helping them. Nah, no it's 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 that is some gangster shit. I can't wait to be like, well, um, my assistant will reach out to you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Listen, I ain't helping I nobody with no I, bill. I, that. That. I said, okay, she on her four hour work week shit. That's that four hour work week book. Uh, I'm trying. Talked about getting an assistant. You could just do that. Yeah. This is what I love about This is what I love about podcasts. And you don't see too many industries like this where, like, People get together and it's no competition. We all on some how can we win together type shit. Like, you know, they can they, they can listen to all of us. They can listen to your show. Yep. They can listen to you on my show. Like, whatever. Yep. No, I mean, Flynn, it's just this group of us because it's some hating ass motherfuckers in the box. It, it is. It is. I, I, I I but I think yeah. I think a lot of us got lucky and ran into each other. Right, because I'm yeah. like I'm like a lot of people taught me about the only fan, only fans, and I think I'm gonna get one. It's crazy, right? I went. They I said got all they gotta do is take care of my one. feet and take pictures. I went on CW actually that's true though for the first time. I got one of she did it. She did it. Creating a whole network after going on CL show one fucking time. Like that shit is crazy. Alora, yeah. No, I said I went on CL show one time and somehow oh, I and created, created a but, whole oh, network. Oh no, of I thought you said created a network like a network. network. No. I ended up yeah, creating a whole true. network of people just from going on her show. Like a oh, lot yeah, of them I probably would never would have met. That's true. But I ended up doing the same thing she did. I posted in one of those groups, which was the only post I've ever been able to fucking get get to slide through in those podcast groups. And then like Flan joined, fucking Draymo yeah. joined, like you know what I mean? Yeah. You know what? This is my ick. I'm gonna be honest with you. Some of them podcasting haters are the admins on some of those groups. That's true. Don't hate me because my idea is better than yours, and I'm posting yeah. it. So now you don't want to post it. Yeah. 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 It's because crazy. I'll, I'll, see, I'll see people post a show and I'm like, all right, I could post my show today. And they get rejected. And they get and they like, what the fuck? Yeah. Yep. I've been there too. Mm-hmm. See, bro, I'm I'm the idea sometimes what I real about some of these podcasting groups is that it should be like what we're doing now and working together and 
I know everybody started following everybody, and it just seemed like it's just like I just want to just promote my shit and that's it. And you're like, that's not what the shit is about. Like, yo, yeah. we all working together and we all community. Like, you know, we all I know when Amron and DC first said, Hey, we're gonna do this, I was like, All right, I'm down. Why not? You know, I, I donated an hour, two hours, and now look where we at. And it's been fun and it's for a cause. Like eventually, 12, you know, 38 hours, 30 hours from now. You know, it's gonna be like wow, or 38 hours from now, it's gonna be like, wow, this really happened. Yep, you know, you're making Facts. history. Facts. Facts. Really? I, I, I originally thought I was just gonna do one. This is dope. Hour. I feel like I'm in a million man mark. I, I literally <laughs> just did what almost five hours right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what I, th- I thought I was gonna do one hour, and it was like, all right, keep it moving. Now look at us out here. Facts. Yeah, man, I- I'm Man, glad you posted that. We, that, done, we well. done found new homies. That's yeah. how I, I know. Homies. That's it. I'm right. about to have Raw on the show. I'm, I'm gonna call it the plugs I met. Oh, <laughs> oh. Shit. oh. yeah. Oh. I like that one girl. She got a lot of energy. What's her name? Uh Christy. But she, oh, had, she, had, had, she had a ton of, a ton of energy. Yeah, she kept us up, right? She kept us up. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Let no, me tell y'all something. No, 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 I had no, y'all on no, when I got off with y'all last night. I had it on my TV and I came and laid down. I set an alarm, right? And I probably woke up, go to the bathroom. I seen y'all up there. I said, All right, they still grooving, moving. Come back. My alarm went off. I looked up. It was six people on their screen. I said, Yep, fuck that. I'm <laughs> they good. They good. Right. So by eight o'clock when I woke up, I was like, I right, bet. Cool. I'm hot. Yeah, they had new people come on at eight. Yeah. So I got out of cool. there because. They were talking about um. They were talking about what's that B and B and M. BDSM. Yeah, that's that's sex stuff, and it, you don't get tied up. They pulled the uh, up. You get tied up. I don't trust nobody enough yeah. to tie me up. I really don't. Now, now, if you want to tie me up with some plastic handcuffs, we could do that. I don't want nobody to restrain me to nothing. Hell no. I don't no. believe in restraints. I'm scared. I don't like that shit. Yeah. But like, if you want to smack my ass and choke me and pull my hair, you're more than no, welcome. That's not that's if you want. That is like a re- fucking quiet. That should be a standard, right? That you should just right. be that automatic. Like, like, air, like you, airbag. You know, but but listen, I don't know if it's because of my height or man. the type of the girth of woman I am. They'd be so scared. I'd be like, just go for it. Get it. Now, first of all, if you smack my ass and that bitch is like, I'm cussing nah. you out. What the fuck are you doing? Like, I I'm a light skinned bitch. I want to see handprints in the mirror when we done. Like, stop fucking yeah. fuck with me. I want to spank in. I like, want. For real. I want to understand where we at. Just the fuck. God damn. I understand where we at. We you gotta the- you gotta be like fucking. Don't call me white girl. One hand on front two. One hand on. Hold on. Wait. Wait. Stop Flan. Me. Flan wants to understand let you where understand. We at. We in the age of consent. A nigga can't just choke. We got to have a whole full-on conversation, written affidavit, all that shit for I choke, <laughs> smack. Nah, fuck out of here. I'm not and one of them I'm bitches. Not going to, I'm not going yeah. to jail because I misunderstood. I misread the sign. It ain't happening. It's not yeah. happening. Oh, you going to get all the signs from me. You going to know. You going to have to study <laughs> that shit. Mm-mm. Hey, hey. And Flan, she owe you anyway for trying to, you know what I mean? She owe you anyway. <laughs> Nobody owes him anything. <laughs> yep. You and Draymo. Y'all Nobody owe that owes man. him anything. <laughs> well, looks like we have some NDAs to sign. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Flynn. We sure. I just want to make sure. So I don't want to say you are the celibate one. So you're the one that's like you're 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 waiting. Is that what we're doing? Or are we just not having sex yeah. anymore? I'm just good. Like if the situation, you know, if, if something pop up and it's just that attractive, I'm gonna take it, but I'm good. I'm not pursuing nothing. I'm mm-hmm. really not interested. Like, you know what I'm saying? You're gonna have to, it's gonna have to be a unicorn for real. Like, you said, you gotta real. work for this dick. Bro. That's how that's how I feel. Like, she already got up. the twins. He don't need nobody something different. Else. God yeah, gonna have to twins? come down and tell yeah, he got me. got the twins. He don't need nobody mine. else. Who the twins? Left, 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 he said, God has to tell him that that's the one. I, I got to come sit on the edge of his bed. I thought, like, like, you know. He got to come sit at the edge of his bed and be like, hey, yo, homie, this one right here, this it. 
And, and I'm he still, still gotta make sure some... somebody else heard that oh, shit. Too. I still gotta make sure somebody heard that shit before I run. If y'all ever, ever see a ring on my finger and I say yes, Jesus told you so, huh? <laughs> yeah, I mean, he sent Gabriel. He sent his. He sent Gabriel down he to tell all me, the Israelites. Like, that's him. <laughs> Y'all saying that, but y'all wouldn't be like, I would honestly, that's my thing. That's I'm one scared thing. Of, I'm scared of man. No, I'm not scared of man, but that's my prayer. Like, my grandma and stuff is gone, or Jesus, don't come talk to me because I'm going to check myself in. I'm not going to believe that's real. <laughs> like, straight up, that's it. Oh, when, 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 uh, spirit, 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 spirits can come now. Spirits but can come, but don't come to me. Terms, it may not be literally like, it, won't, it won't scare you. It'll just teach you, you that God got your back because you're going to call on him. That's going to be the first thing you do is call on him. And then once you see how fast they skedaddle, if they're not anything good for you, you'll just know that you're God's child. That's right. all they're that gonna is. Come in a human form, though. It's going to be a person talking that shit to you, and you're going to be like, they're mm -hmm. going to get through to you. And you oh, spirits can come. Before the after the day, they're gonna randomly, the you just said that. They're gonna randomly <laughs> pop up in the bathroom <laughs> taking a shit, and you just gotta listen to what they saying. That yeah. Day. <laughs> Before the like after that. the day, yeah. I had a girl who wouldn't fuck no more because her grandmother died, and she thought she was looking at her. <laughs> what? Yeah. Facts. Wow. We, we, wow. We heavy into it, and all of a sudden she was like, "I can't." Cause my grandma might be looking down on me from heaven. Like, fuck oh me. hell no! <laughs> I'll be well, like, enjoy look. the show, grandma. Because you, you taught me this. This is your roots. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, grannies. God damn. <laughs> if you mm -hmm. see anything I have done, I apologize. But shit. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna say that's how we got here, grandma. You go. You know yeah. that's how we got here because of you. Yeah. Uh -huh. Y'all motherfuckers is dead wrong out this bitch. We not <laughs> dead wrong. You told, see, uh, you said on Pussy Talk. So you mean to tell me grandma wasn't in there giving out the guac guac 3000? <laughs> oh, wow. Not, not the 3000. It Who might said be like that? 1900. Oh, yeah. Wrong, wrong. I'm starting to see raw off the chain because he, you heard that shit he said to me. I was sitting on the screen like this. <laughs> he was like, go back and hold your mouth like that because that's how I said, you know, I'm not even going to. Pay attention to that bullshit. Like what, bro? But you heard it though, goddamn it. I heard it, but I didn't want to. It was unnecessary, and you know it. I don't know. Annie told me to say it. She <laughs> oh, <what? laughs> First of all, just because you're a Taurus, I'm a Taurus, don't mean we have telekinesis. There, you know. Uh, Sometimes I feel like we do, though. I feel like I we think do. we do though. I feel, I I really do because I'm just nasty. Raw that's say some shit. I'd be like, yo, that's some shit I would say. <laughs> that sounds just like me. This nigga. So it both be of like that. It be Amber, like that. Your, okay, so who who else, is a, who else is an Aries on here so we can feel like I'm that? Little, I'm a Libra. No one does that. No. Oh, uh, you a fine ass Libra? God fuck damn. Golly. Damn. My mom, <laughs> listen. Let me explain. Two Libras <laughs> made me. My mom and my dad was Libras. Oh, they would just lie. I can't, I can't they be lie to each other. God damn it. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with you. Libras lie, but it's for the betterment of the world. I, Man, have, I hate the liars. That's a lie. That's a lie. Slick, let me let me explain. <laughs> It's a lie like somebody on a deathbed and they like, don't I look Now you're people? lying right now. <laughs> <laughs> See? And point, it's not point, for the betterment of nobody. Point taken right, right here. You're lying. Self. Listen, so, you so I've, interacted with, I've interacted with adult Libras and now I live with one. I have a six-year-old Libra and that, I've never seen a child <laughs> lie that fast in my life. That motherfucker have a whole lie before you even get to her ass. She like, I already know what I'm going to tell her. So if she catch me in my act or she say something, I got the story. I got the answer. I got everything. I done seen her blame her sister for something. And her sister was fucking sitting next to me. I said, but how, Sway? How? How did she do it? And she right here. Yeah, y'all niggas lie bad, too. I'm trying to think the dumbest lie I ever said. Oh, I have a fake dog at work. What? You have a fake dog. Okay, let me explain this. So sometimes palm colored people care more about animals than they do actual people. Uh -huh. So my thing is, my backup to my backup, no PTO, no time off. You know, Fluffy done died. Oh, yeah. Well, oh, no, that's okay. That's 100% acceptable. You're good. That's okay. Fine. Yeah, okay, so I have like, okay. a picture and everything. 
Right. Okay, that, that's that's an acceptable true. lie. That's cool. Yeah. All right. That's, that's all a right. lot. That's a lot to go through though. Yeah, it, it is. is. It is. Especially when they ask about them, and I gotta remember. <laughs> Understandable. She said, "But then I gotta remember." Fuck. Yeah. My dog. Somebody woke up to you. So how's your dog? Who? I ain't got no fucking. No I mean, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then you yeah. got to double say, "Oh, I don't think of him as a dog. I think of him as his family." Right. <laughs> my fur baby. Right. You're right. <laughs> uh, I hate that shit. Facts. Uh, uh, no, I'm a dog and those fucking okay, baby horses. I, I see you. I, I can't do that. that. I can't do Pisces. Okay, Pisces. Uh, Pisces and Cancers are our people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, in my life, I'm flying. We usually what's do. Up? We usually what's do. Your, what's your sign? I'm, I'm a Sag. Okay. I'm a Sag. I can. Right. I like Taurus, that. Pisces. Pisces, uh, Amron is a hey, lion as Libra. Now I'm gonna think about that like that. So what is it said? Like, I, all I know is I am a Sag. I don't know what the fuck that that's. Oh, y'all, y'all are actually crazy, but not like a bad crazy. But y'all, so this I have my brother's a Sag, and if somebody push y'all to that limit, y'all flip the fuck out like real, real bad, like spaz, spaz, and it takes a long time for you guys. Come back yeah. to y'all, y'all actual being. Y'all go to the next universe for real. But y'all are very kind hearted and will do a lot of you know shit for people and things like that. Like y'all are right, but y'all crazy though. Yeah, but, but I fuck with y'all. Like, to... Definitely have y'all as friends. For sure. We Robbie out of coffee. Me the calmest person, and that's yeah, out of coffee. Like none. How the hell we out of coffee? You gotta go to the store. Somebody fucked up. Y'all out of coffee. Make Listen, the these people gonna be down here at five thirty getting on my nerves. Coffee, yeah. yeah, go get it. I'm Knock sorry. Something over right now in your office. Knock I'm sorry, over. I'll be right back. You better run the wild wild. Ain't no wild wild youngster. They get it, man. Go to Dunkin' Donuts. Get a cup of Joe. A box of Joe. A, a box of Joe. <laughs> right. <laughs> Hold on. I thought you said you'd be back. What you the Flash now? She on mute. <laughs> yeah, Robbie calling me the calmest dude, but that's that's why because I know. If I yep. lose it, it's over. Like I, I don't know. My how brother's to the back. same way, Flynn. He, I mean, he be super chill, but boy, you push that nigga, you push that one button, and he flip that switch. I be spazzing, and then halfway through, I ain't even mad no more. But now I feel like I'm gonna look crazy if I just calm down all of a sudden. No, you so gotta I gotta keep, keep going. going. Gotta <laughs> see it through, my boy. <laughs> mm -hmm. You gotta, gotta keep going. Gotta see it through. At that point, huh? Yeah. 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 You gotta burn it all the way down. We done started. Let's go. Me and Raw stubborn, don't give a fuck. Super blunt is, uh, is a motherfucker. Don't care if we hurt your feelings for real, for real. And then if we do, we're gonna ask you two minutes later. You good? I right. hate this shit. So, I'm still right. upset. <laughs> yeah, you good? I right, bet. Like fuck out of here. You ain't mad no more. <laughs> fuck. Mm -hmm. no. Still up. Yeah, you ain't mad no more. Nah, you, you should be over it by now. Come on. <laughs> I need to process it. I'm not ready. Yeah. No. Look, I'm mm -hmm. over it. Why ain't you? Exactly. <laughs> oh my God. My kid's father used to hate because I used to tell him it's not the end of the fucking world. Like, get over it. It's not the end of the fucking world. You gonna you gonna live, right? Now, you I, don't get to tell me it's not the end of the fucking world. It's not I, the if it's the, the end of my world. world, the world about to end. I'm blowing yeah. the whole shit up. Everybody no, but, then, but then the crazy part is I'm gonna do so much fucking shit that now you just sitting there like damn, I really was mad at this motherfucker for real. Yep. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> like, nah, I, I got really what you call. I got what I call a, a, a toilet paper list. And like you, it's a long way you'd go before you get on that list. But once you're on that list, I could wipe my ass with you. I'm done. It, it's, it's oh, over. And it ain't no coming off that motherfucker. And the only nothing. people that believe I got a toilet paper list is the people that's on it. Don't nobody yeah, else believe I can cut you off like that. But I absolutely that's definitely can't. some sad shit. Hell yeah. I grew oh. up, I'm telling you, I grew up with one of y'all. I know. I know y'all motherfuckers ain't. Inside and out, y'all. But I, uh, again, coolest, calmest niggas, though. Y'all don't like the party, Amber? too. No, I have. A, I'm, I didn't mean to change this zodiac question, but is there anybody since we've been on here together that you really want to work with after this? Like, who's your top? Like, you know what? I got to get the info. I ain't got a top, but hell yeah. Uh, honestly speaking, I'm probably gonna work with majority of the people that I see on this motherfucker at this point, but. Mm -hmm. 
I want to actually go on other people's podcasts. Uh, I'm always bringing a bunch of people on my shit all the time. And I actually yeah. have more fun on other people's shit, to be honest with you. So I'm, I feel like I'm about to go on tour and I'm about to just go on everybody's podcast yeah. and just cut the fuck up. I'm going to just act the fucking monkey on everybody's shit. Yeah, I'm the same way too. I want to go on other people's shit too. Like yeah. I'm over where I'm at. So. Every week, every week I have about uh, between four and six guests, and usually all of them is podcasters. Mm-hmm. How many shows do you do a week? One. Okay. But I do my show is like two two and a half hours long. I Ooh, also play okay. music. I play uh, underground music uh, throughout the episode. Um, my my podcast has ran almost like a radio station. Yeah, I like so that. I, I want you to be able to, and that's the reason why when I first went to audio, I stopped doing YouTube because I wanted you to put your earphones on and just go to work or drive or take a long drive or something like that. I wanted you to, mm-hmm. to, to listen and just enjoy whatever you're doing, like you listening to the radio. When you when you cleaning, when you cooking and all that, you put the radio on. You don't watch TV. You just put the radio on. So I wanted you to be able to put your eyebot on or throw it in your speaker and just do whatever you're doing. I had I had my homie hit me up. This shit was hilarious. She was like, yo, I thought that my Apple Music started playing when I cut your podcast on because I heard music. And then another song came on. And then another song came on before you started talking. But that's what I want. I want you to forget that you looking at a podcast. I want you to just enjoy your moment while you while you just listening because we're gonna talk some shit we're gonna get you going you're gonna you guaranteed to be cracking the fuck up 90 percent of the time when you're watching my fucking show that's big but the music give you that break because after a while you get tired of hearing people talk so i throw that break in there so that way you can hear some music you if you're watching on youtube you can run to the bathroom real quick and don't feel like you missed something get you a snack real quick and then come back to it as if you was watching tv at that time you want to okay. know you want to know something? Uh, any podcaster that I like n- have connected with or whatever that's audio only, I ain't even gonna hold you. The only time I listen to their podcast is when I'm taking flights. I can't listen to audio only sitting in the house. Like I want to watch it. I hear that. I want to see, mm-hmm. like, to see facial expressions and shit like that. And and I think that's where I fucked up at last season because I stopped doing that, and a lot of people was like, "Yo." I miss the YouTube. I miss watching y'all talk shit because I do a lot of, sh- I make a lot of facial expressions and I know it and I can't help it. Uh, do you? Uh. <laughs> so people was like, yo, I miss seeing that shit. So like you listening and they like, yo, I could have, I can imagine what the fuck he was doing right here. Or, uh-huh. or, or I may, I may like, like, all right, the episode where I said Annie ain't had no neck. So now a motherfucker, <laughs> a motherfucker gonna want to look like Ari. Right, what the fuck? Her Do neck she really like don't have no way, neck? Like. <laughs> Yo, let me tell y'all. So that that particular episode, right? I'm like, nigga, I'm in the episode. Like, did you really say that? <laughs> so he his is pre recorded. So when it came on Thursday, I'm sitting here in the bed and I'm watching it. And on that part when it came on. I text him immediately, like nigga, you really told me I ain't have no neck on the show. Like, what the fuck? I'm like, yeah. yo, and I'm like, so on the show, you see me, I'm like, nigga, do you don't see all this neck? It's the way I'm sitting in this chair, and then I got these titties pushed all the way up. So it do look like that. Like, stop fucking playing with me. I know I got fat, but goddamn, it's still here. You got neck. You still got neck in. I no, do. See, I do. The thing I... is, the thing is, though, I grew up in a household where. You gotta bust on people the whole time. So insults I'm, is normal. I'm constantly, I'm constantly busting on people, not even on purpose. I just can't help it. That's so so nasty. the conversation yeah, though. You pause <laughs> now. We need to pause. I, I was I was waiting for you to say pause, but I said, eh, wait, let him right. <laughs> nah, nah, all right, all right, all right. I'll say pause, but that's what we say here in Philly. Bust most people that every time I say that, people be like, What? Wait, hold up, you got vulgar. No. We say busting on people versus like uh what y'all call it, the dozens or ranking yeah. or shit like that. Oh, okay. I'm about to say we ain't going to do all that, bro. Okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> Ma'am, if you oh, don't go back listen. and go find that coffee. I'm going to have to take a bathroom break right so y'all are here at, at, at oh, a delicate time. Hey, we ain't trying to be talking to you while you're taking a shit. What put, the fuck? Uh, put it on mute. 
<laughs> we hey, here hello, everybody. Kiki over here taking the shit. Right, we <laughs> here you, know what, Ron, you raised a good point about the podcast. <laughs> And because when I listen to a pod, I I'm both I have it audio and on YouTube, but when I okay. listen to a podcast, usually I'm cleaning up and I'll just play it on the sound ball. I'll, I'll I'll listen to it in there. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, uh, I, Professor, I he, and he only has the audio only. Yeah, but I give yeah. people both the audio art and the visual vibes. Yeah, some people. Like, it's, it's looking like truck truck drivers and stuff like that, though. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. for yeah, sure. Everybody, everybody get a different experience when it comes to podcasts, and that's the reason right. why I said this season I went to audio and visual because uh-huh. some people, some people want to sit back on the couch and watch. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Like some yeah. people want to see those facial expressions or see what somebody wearing or see what they look like and shit uh-huh. like that. Some people want to see that, but then some people, like I could be in the gym. And I could just throw a podcast on, and I'm working out, and I'm cracking the fuck up, and people looking at me like, "What the fuck what is he the doing?" Fuck? Yeah, but I'm yeah. cracking the fuck up. I got to put the weights down because yeah. I'm dying over here because somebody just says some crazy ass shit. There has been times where I've listened to a podcast and oh, then went shit. home and watched it so I could actually see what the fuck they was doing the whole time. I tried yes. to do the video. Podcast video originally part. started all audio. Uh, a lot of people changed. People like Drink Champs changed the game and, and made it so you actually see them. I yeah. remember when podcasts was on like SoundCloud and shit like that. I've been listening to podcasts for a long time. A lot of people didn't even know podcasts was on SoundCloud. And uh, what was the That's other one? Jesus and Mero. That's what I listen to. Jesus yeah. and Mero. Yeah. Jesus and Mero. Yep. Yeah. Them. Drink Man, Champs. I, I, hate that, out I, hate they, I hate that they broke up. That's crazy. Oh, I didn't even know they broke up. Yeah, so they should have never left. They should have never, never left. Never left uh, Vice. Yeah, they should have never yep. left. When they left Vice, I tried to watch the show. Nah. It was a Showtime, right? Yep. I tried I to watch it, it and that it wasn't was as good anymore. Yeah, it was over. I was like, yes, yeah, yeah it, it, it didn't have the same. It didn't have the same flair to it. So I just yeah. gave up on them dudes. Yeah. But I didn't I know they to broke the up. Video up yeah, they said some, some, you know, some shit. I don't know. Yeah, I tried to do the video. I bought the neon sign and everything. Thought I was gonna set up, you know, some ambiance, but the workflow is too much. Just the the editing and and rendering and yeah. shit to get the video stuff out. That that was like I can get yeah, an audio yeah. podcast. I can wake up at two a.m. You know, record something and get that out by the morning time. That video stuff. Was too See, much. Yo, that shit took a how, long time, yo. Yeah, yeah, long, and though. that's the reason that's why we started though. We started that's the reason recording. I shoot and and post five days later. Yeah, yeah, that's how, yeah, that's that's how, how we that's how we started. Rolling. We used to wow, film, that was a record on uh, wow, oh, 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 oh. Kiki, what I hope fuck? she wasn't sitting down when she pulled it. <laughs> no, you know, her bare ass on that toilet, <laughs> it was like whoosh. Wow, but now so it's now we record on Sundays and put our episodes out on Friday, and that but that's how we started, and then we came across StreamYard. And mm-hmm. I personally, I love the live stream because now I don't have to put that legwork in. Mm-hmm. Now you really get, but I like it because you get the raw and un- uncut. Like, bitch, if I fuck up, you see it. Yeah. You getting it. You get to laugh at me when I do fuck up. Ain't yeah. no and stupid. See, ain't no doing none of that shit. That's the thing. I tell people all the time before they come on my show, I do not edit nothing. Uh-huh. If you said it, it's going on the fucking show. Yep. I'm not editing shit. So don't say some shit that you don't want people to hear. It's because that, that's on you at that point. I don't edit nothing. The only thing I do is I put like my graphics and my music in there. That's about the only thing that I'm doing. Everything else was all you. So if you said some shit about your mama and you don't want your mama to hear it, you better not tell your mama you was on my show. Just that simple. Gary, wow. you don't wash your hands last like that. You wash your hands. <laughs> <laughs> no, you put your ass on blast like that because we were did just you wash your hands? We didn't yes. Oh, if you heard the flush, we ain't here to sink. Right, oh, right, shit. right. We heard to... the flush, we ain't here to sink. Damn. Yeah. 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 No, because I, like I no, caught no, it because no, I no, caught no. it as soon as it. I gra- no, look. just it was embarrassing. Kiki. Okay, it's okay, Kiki. Is it? Is it? <laughs> <laughs> it's no, okay. No. Like when that's being live, when that's being live now, my mom was clicking from time to time, and my mom is texting me. But like one day, I had, I think I had 
So my, my titties was very much protruding, right? And my mm -hmm. mom got on and she texted me and was like, why the fuck are your titties out? <laughs> I'm like, it's right. not on purpose. It's just a good bra I got on, sis. What you want me to do? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or she'll, she'll tap in and of course it, it'll be she'll tap in on one of our dick tangents. And she'll text me like, yo, y'all are too fucking much. I can't even watch it because what the fuck are y'all talking about? I'd be like, listen, either you'll get with it or get lost. Listen. Okay. All you fellas, I need to hold your balls as you cough. <laughs> Man, no. You can't even put them motherfucking gloves on. What the fuck? Hey, she excited. <laughs> okay, now been over to cough. When are you inviting us to Baltimore? I want some crabs. Who's in Baltimore? I'm in Baltimore. Yeah, whenever y'all oh. come, listen, y'all ever come down? Hey, I, I read this book called "Be More Careful" from there, boy. Oh. If it's anything like that, goddamn it! First of all, that's an old ass book. That's old. Well, I've read it a long time ago, though. Exactly. I, that, I remember reading that as a kid. That's an old book. Yeah. That is. Yeah, if you come down, if you come down, Ron, I got you. It seems okay. like everything I say and do is always some goddamn backlash. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I was in. Um, I had went to Baltimore, Baltimore twenty twenty. So right when they had just opened it back up, um, Fourth of July weekend, I, we was going to Ocean City. But I was like, man, I'm going to Ocean City. But all the motherfuckers thinking because everything open, they're going to be out there. Bitch, I'm going to catch COVID. So, you know, I just, uh, I actually was, I was in Baltimore City. Uh, what is it? County or whatever the fuck. Uh, whatever. So we, you know, I did a little trip to Baltimore or whatever, but I can't remember the restaurant. But man, I got these motherfucking crab cakes. Them bitches was that big in my hand. I was like, God. What we do here? Damn. Yeah, I think that God, and that's my first time going, and I'm like, oh yeah, I gotta definitely go back and get the motherfucking crab cakes. Oh, yeah. I did a whole episode called uh, "I'm Not from Baltimore" because I had somebody <laughs> tell me I had a Baltimore accent, and I never been so offended in my whole fucking life. Like, I, <laughs> I, I, ain't, I ain't here to draw out you yet, so you good? Yeah, <laughs> just so that there. Sometimes when I say two. Uh, uh, it just depends on like what my conversation is. My best friend, like, bitch, is you from Baltimore? Because I had that too real quick. <laughs> It'll come out. I'm like, nigga, I ain't never even lived in that motherfucking city. I don't know where it comes from. So I, I used to go up there to go hit the harbor and shit like that. But I go up there and not understand a word. Though. Talk about being only a couple miles away from your home and can't understand nothing nobody is saying. That's <laughs> crazy. Yo, I used to work in D.C. And it was a lot of dudes down there that were from Baltimore. And I that whole you and do and two that's, that's just adorable. Me up. I love it too. Um, it me the hell off after a while. That Am is I? so cute to me. I have no idea why. <laughs> I can listen to it all day. You do I love to hear uh just hilarious talk. <laughs> yeah. I don't think yo, she look weird skinny, yo. Hey, oh, hey. Did she lose weight? She lost a lot of weight. She's skinny, skinny now. Yeah, I don't be paying attention. Her and B. Simone. Oh, B. Simone need to get a little bit of her weight back. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, she looked crazy. Yeah. Like, you could tell she was hitting that gym heavy. I ain't saying yeah. she looked horrible, but it's like, damn, she's skinny, yeah, she skinny now. She did a pair of skinny as fuck out of nowhere. You're like, what the fuck? No, I actually, I follow her on the gram, so I seen her. I seen her last month. She's been working out and all that, so I'm like, damn, that's what's up. Like, but damn, like that shit crazy. Just let me lose a little bit of weight, god damn. You tighten some shit up, just don't lose everything. She look like a kid now, like that shit crazy. Let me be a cool 200. I'm straight. Oh, oh shit, I done froze up. Can y'all still hear me? We yeah. still hear you. We hear you. But Gary, you never answered my question. You be eating the girls. Huh? I'm talking about the crab. I'm talking about the crabs. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm yeah. <laughs> I'm the, the answer is yes. To, yeah, yeah. The female crabs, yes. I eat the female crabs, yes. Oh, my God. Because she said you be eating the girls. I got 
What? No, I only eat Jimmy's. I can't do the girls because they be having eggs. Uh, all right, we'll go to we'll go to Jimmy's. We'll go to Jimmy's. You be eating the girls. Gary said, "Hell yeah, eat the girls." <laughs> 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 With fucking all right, right y'all. I'm about to go ahead and take it down. It's yeah, almost full study. Yeah. I've been going here since like 11 o'clock. I appreciate you. No doubt. I'll be back in a little bit because I'm back on that two o'clock anyway. I fuck around, be back before that. Oh, y'all get to meet my friend today. She's coming on at three. Three. Okay, then. So, that's supposed to be our hour. I explained everything we prepared. Just don't don't worry about that. Yeah, yeah, I, I had shit right. prepared, but it's fun. It, I mean, this is actually this has been fun, right? When Gary, Gary, when you came on, came on, uh, we were just here, like, yeah, nigga, so what's your show about? Yeah, that was it. We just went <laughs> you know, to try something, Gary. I wanted you to eat something weird. I was ready. You was ready? Mm -hmm. I have, you to... have anything weird to eat. No, okay, I already did all of it. When what made you start doing that? My kids was on YouTube, and I said, "Oh, I'll try that." You but like your, your podcast is you trying shit? No, that's the one. Of, one of the segments on my YouTube channel is I tried uh -oh. different stuff. So like, I did like the one chip challenge. I did the uh, world's hottest chocolate, um, little nitro, the world's hottest gummy bear. How was that? How was that one chip challenge? Because somebody do that. The shit one chip it. challenge was hot. Yeah. It, it was definitely hot, but the gummy bear, I felt like that motherfucker had me done. I was like, geez, this is crazy. Is it a big gummy bear, little gummy bear? Oh, it regular. Uh, okay. So is it like oh, cinnamon? Oh, oh, it, oh, oh it'll light you up. I promise you. Oh, oh, do, oh please. I'll, I'll, I'll send it to you. Yeah, okay. Do it, do, it, do, it on li do it on live. Mm -mm. Oh. Don't do it, Annie. Don't do it. I'm not doing that. No, it's, 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 it's hot. So yeah, I, I don't play. Okay, I, 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 you know, I like candy corn. So there was different mm. kinds of candy because it came out, and I tried the different flavors. You know, oh. Gary, when I ask you this, it's a serious question. Yeah, no, not already. <laughs> what made you start eating that garbage? Like, why did you do that? Amron, nobody want to hear this shit. Like, what? I mean, it's a serious question, Gary. It's disgusting. It's not. First of all, I told you, I, I understand. You know, it's fine. You know, everyone's not going to like it. It is the candy of the chosen. So I, I get it. Your palate can't comprehend. You, It can't comprehend. You, oh, it's candles, candles. How y'all know what candles taste like? It's flavored candles. Stop playing with me. Mm -mm. You know, so it's, it's fine. Okay, you you eat your little uh your little kung pao chicken. That's yeah. your lane. You know that's fine. You know over here we eat fresh. You know we, you know we, we just have Got different palates. fresh that's wax. Fine. Yes. Fresh. Ugh. It's okay though, Gary. If, if I sent you a bag of candy oh, corn, I bet you. If I sent you. I see your bag candy corn. I bet you be like, oh, this is good. I'm like, nah, nah, nah. you can't join the no, you can't never, join the group now. Never send me a bag of candy corn. Okay. Don't do that. No, they got different ones. I don't care. So here's the thing. I think you did like a sweet tart one or something that yeah, I know would yeah. not taste like candy corn. Nerd, they had a nerd one, yeah. Yeah. I might do that. It was good. Oh, uh, what's eating no say, regular candy corn? What, what do the kids say now? That's sus. Uh, it's sus. It's sus that I'm eating candy corn. <laughs> no nerd and sweet tart. Sus. I don't want yeah. that. I don't trust that. You don't trust I mean, it. I don't trust that. Okay. Uh, 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 I. You know what? I talk about, but do you, baby? I just I don't trust it at all. No flavors. I don't care what you tell me. You could tell Jesus dropped it down from the sky, and I'm still not. I'm sorry that you would be disobedient like that. That's fine. I will definitely at this point in time, yes. That's I mean, fine. I already fucked up and had kids out of a kid out of wedlock, so fuck it. Oh, that's okay. Babies are a blessing. <laughs> <laughs> but they say you shall be married when you have it. <laughs> uh, you know. Hmm. You know, I had look, I had two out of wedlock and had one while married. Fuck. Okay. Well, there you go. 
Hey. But do people really care about that still? Like some do. I didn't. But I don't. I, mean, I was married, but I didn't. It would have been fine if we didn't. I don't think it's like how it was back in the day. But you know, you have some people that still like. Uh, I'm not having kids till I get married. I done met um, a few people that's like I'm not having. Not that they're virgins, but when they get with their person, they're not having sex with them until they get married. Mm. That's weird. That's weird to me. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, Nick, bitch, fuck me. I'm kicking the tires what early. Talking about? Fuck me. Like, no. I want to try. I want to try. I want to make sure. I want to know what I'm buying, if that makes sense. Yeah. yeah so, yeah. again, it's a job interview. Mm-hmm. I agree. When you come that first round, you do good. You get a call back for that second job interview. You could do good on that second job interview. You're hired. You're in now, there. That is a permanent spot, but you're hired. It may be temporary. But speaking of babies out of wedlock, we talked about this on an episode of my show. Did y'all see how they were hating on Poe Kiki when she came out and bust out and said she had yeah. blessed her? Yeah, I was like, damn, I mean, she had a baby. I mean, she was dealing with a guy, so what, man? I'm like, no. I'm in a whole fucking relationship. What's the problem? Yeah, right. I, get, I mean, that's what they were doing. There's some nigga she was fucked or something, but it's her her man. Yeah, what, right. That's what I, I was like. Damn, y'all really be making shit about nothing. Like, she, she, I mean, you know, you, you click on Instagram, TikTok, whatever, Facebook. It's always something about nothing. Kiki, Kiki, mute that motherfucker. She sound like a uh, decent basement. <laughs> we Sorry, got Kiki. We got you. We got you. Mm-hmm. She sound like DC when he get up in the basement. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, you every time you click on something, it's a whole bunch of something about nothing. You read what it is, and you like. Eh, do anybody see shit like on if the shade room posted right, and say for instance like how they did with Kiki Palmer or whatever, and it was something about a celebrity, and you be like, okay, cool, and you like. Hold on, let me go see what these hating ass motherfuckers saying in the comments. Like, I I be going in the shade room comments just to see how ignorant people is and how hateful people is. Like, and then I read them and I'm like, yo, what's wrong with people? Why people can't just mind their business, let True. people life, yep. and keep it pushing? People always think they got shit to say. That's all. I get a lot of slack for this, but leave Lori Harvey alone. She's living True. her life, honestly. Like, yeah, I, that's the nothing- social media outlets. They're doing that. Uh, I don't see, doing that. I don't see nothing wrong with what she's doing. It if and as somebody, I seen somebody say, "Date until you're married." So if I date you right now, Gary, and we cool at the moment, right? Everything's going smooth sailing, but it hit a roadblock. What I supposed to do? Sit there and be miserable? No, we're gonna stop fucking with each other, yep. and I'm on to the next. That's it. What? What? And- so and that's what she do. The girl is twenty fucking six years old. What is she supposed to be doing? I, I agree, especially date around, figure out what works for you. The only thing I'm going to say is, you know, she can get in new circles and date. I mean, okay, so with the, <laughs> the new situation and how they bring in these pictures up, it is, it is weird. But when you are where you are and in that particular area, it's hard to get outside of it because y'all motherfuckers is always around each other. So you happen to, in, we might have met one time somewhere and then we keep running into each other and then that's how it happened. It, I mean, it's life, but I do agree with that part. Like, stop fuck with niggas that know each other. Yeah, but I've done that. Or like you meet a friend group and you realize you got the ugly one out the friend group, then you be sad. And it's not even the ugly one. You might just got the dull one and you like, damn, that nigga's more fun, more, you know, but... Yeah, yeah, I've been there. Shit, I got the wrong brother at one time. What are you talking about? But as a dude, if if you if you messing with somebody I know, that's my that's my homie. You asexual to me. You might as well be a dude, and that's forever. Yeah. Like, y'all break up, whatever. I I can't look at yeah. you like that ever. Like, I'm with you on that one, Flan. Like if you my homie, supposed to be like that, but people don't do that. Yeah, if you my homie and you was dealing with this nigga and I and I dealing with each other and he like try to shoot a shot, I can't even do that, bro. Like what up, homie? What up, dog? Mm-hmm. <laughs> we're friends Mm-mm. but I will say this now if we was in high school and you fuck with a nigga and we 30 something now that's free game 
here okay here's my thing how close are we and was there actual like body fluids involved because i think that's we i don't want to talk about the same dick with my friend like girl he's still doing it like that oh, <laughs> wow. Wow. you know i not not that not like that okay no. but we could have been homies or whatever you know in high school you got people you talk to and stuff but yeah if you fucked with him in high school bitch and now he happened to be my man at 34 Please mind your business. This is this this don't even match up anymore. Uh uh-uh. uh. No. Uh uh-uh. No. Yeah, no. Like, I said, I like, homie, like, Kiki. I said, homie, not friend. Homie and friend is two different things. Oh, so we ain't really like that. We homies. We 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 Kiki. That school. We you know. Oh. We the same group okay. or whatever. But I we thought, were friends. I was about to say. I so, thought that we was cool. any of my friends. Hey, I don't girl, you knew he thing. broke my heart. You know how big yeah, his no, is because no. I told you. I don't fuck if oh, that really? was a boyfriend in elementary school, bitch. If you my okay. friend, I'm not talking to him. <laughs> no. Okay, I'll go back to work. All right, bye. <laughs> but you know, mm-hmm. like. If we homies, no, hell no. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's free game. But if we friends, friends, and still friends to this day, I would never even look at a nigga you fucked with ever in life. It's not supposed to be, but people be grimy. Yeah, yeah. People, well, I mean, wow. All right, guys, I'm getting right. off. What, what's the next shift? Six? Um, six the next one comes on at six. Mm-hmm. So not too much time, about an hour and a half. Somebody yeah, got a show uh, I'll I'll eat breakfast a little bit later on, and I'll just be right back at it. I All need right? to go. Yeah, but Thank I'm you, Glory. I'm not leaving, but I do need to sleep. I haven't been to sleep today at all. Yeah, you probably should get some sleep. Yeah, I left and said I was going to bed, and then I had never watched Riches, and I started. Wa- I every time I took a break, I was watching it. So when I took this last break, all right, I'm like, all right, I'm gonna take it like a three hour nap. I watched the rest of the riches and then I got on start watching y'all and got on. And I was like, Well, hey, hey. So okay. I need to go. Yep. To all right, I'll see y'all a little bit later on this morning. Bye, Make kids. sure you get some breakfast. All right, guys. Eat some chicken. I had some chicken before you came on. <laughs> I had some- in the air fryer. Mm-hmm. Oh, you was on there when I was cooking it. That's- mm-hmm. Yeah. What did you put on your wings? I just made it plain because I was lazy. Okay. So it was just straight, you know, you're good. But sometimes that be the best. Yeah. The best, right. you know. Uh, but like in the air fryer, I do garlic palm in the air fryer. Um, depending on my children, I might give them like some honey mustard in the air fryer. Or if it's just me, I might have some spice, some buffalo or something. But yeah, um, I love a buffalo wing. Mm. I do. I do Old Bay in the air fryer. Ooh, I love Old Bay. Oh, on the chicken. On the chicken. Yeah. I, well, I put chicken. I season. I put Old Bay on it, but just straight Old Bay. I might have to try that one. Yeah, I put Old Bay on everything. Yeah. Where you at? I'm in Austin, originally from DC, though. Okay, so you're from Texas. Not from. But now Texas. you're in Texas. I'm in Texas. I don't, you know, I live here. It is home, but I don't claim it. I thought about moving to Austin uh, a few months ago. It's and cool. I have a, a couple people out there. They was like, yeah, no, nah, don't do it. I'm like, damn, why? They're like, it's that. crowded. It's this. It's that. And I'm like, well, y'all know I'm from New York, right? I've yeah, lived yeah. crowded all my life. Yeah, yeah. Are they, are they like from Austin type people or something? Well, they from Louisiana, but they lived in Austin for a very, very, very long time. So. Hey, uh, yeah, if you're from the East Coast, this is not crowded. Like to yeah. them, this is that's crowded. What I, that's what I when they said that, I'm like, okay. But then it was like it's diverse, it's jobs. I'm like, you're giving me exactly what I'm looking for. What the fuck are you talking about? I don't give a fuck about uh crowdedness. We do. We do get all the worst drivers from around the country here, though. Yeah, I'm like, I lived in Georgia, too. You know how that traffic is every morning? The fuck? No. And they lived in Georgia, too. I'm like, y'all know. Y'all killing me. No, fuck out of here. But um, I think I'm going back East Coast. I wanted to go to Texas, but my family is not happy with me. They like, why you keep going places where nobody at? Because I'm trying to get the fuck away from y'all. Right. I love but, being this far away from home. But with me having my kids and no support, that's their issue. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. dude, you got kids, so yeah. So 
Uh, I'm not moving back to Georgia. Uh, um, I say I did my time. I did my bid in Georgia. Uh, I lived in Georgia for 14 years or something like that. Yeah, something like that. So I know for sure I'm not moving back to Georgia. So North Carolina is probably. Yay, come on. Not Wilmington, though. Okay. Where would you move? Probably Charlotte. Oh, okay. Yeah, for real? Charlotte, 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 Charlotte or Raleigh, Charlotte oh, or Vegas. Nice. Yeah, my aunt lives in Raleigh, and then I have a few cousins in Charlotte. So, and then it's not far from. I so what five six hour drive, top maybe four or five hour drive to my mom's in Georgia. So, it won't be a bad situation. But yeah, come on. But yeah, I'm I'm. I'm trying to hold on to my kids get out of school in May, but I don't know if I'm gonna make it that long. So it's like I'm trying to be the responsible adult and not take them out of school, you know, mid year, especially with my oldest daughter being in the third grade with all them standardized testing starting this year and shit. So like, oh, it's killing me smokes. I hate it here. It's nothing here, like absolutely fucking nothing. You got to drive an hour to the next city that still don't have much of anything, but it got more than what I have. So mm-hmm. it's, it's it's a tragic situation. I'm in my house all the time. I don't go Me anywhere. too. I don't go nowhere. I work at home. I don't do shit. So I've never been this lame in my life. That's how I feel. The pandemic fucked me up. I yeah, was another I- person beforehand. I never been this lame in my life. The pandemic did not slow me down. Uh, I think I was out of work for two days, but I worked the whole entire pandemic. It's and, a blessing. And then, yeah, I was very thankful and grateful for that. And then when they opened back up, I was outside. And another blessing I've have, thank you God, have not caught COVID. So that's I don't understand this. So during Thanksgiving. My family had COVID. Um, Mm -hmm. Like my mom got it and she gave it to my daughter. I never tested positive, Mm -hmm. but I'm not going to lie. We was walking around this house like you can't leave your room. (laughs) (laughs) Um, We got these masks around here and don't come in my face. (laughs) Me or, or, or my, so I got three kids. My son lives with my mom in Georgia. Me and my daughters have not. My son actually just got it in November. And he he's Here. vaccinated and got the booster. Yep. So are we. Mm-hmm. So that's why I didn't understand. Like I tested like continuously. Nothing. I was straight. Look, yeah. I'm I'm vaccinated. My youngest are not. I did. My mom's like, what are you waiting for? I'm like, shit. That is fucking. So my mom ordered me some at home tests, right? And I pulled mm-hmm. them out of the package yesterday, and I was like, hey girls, y'all ready to take y'all COVID test? The motherfuckers like. Pew! <laughs> You want to do what? <laughs> because they they had to take it at one point in time because they were sick. So you know, you take them to the ER or something. They testing you for it. They didn't like that shit with your nose. So now they like, yeah, now nah, you're not about to do nothing like that with me. Since COVID test, hell no. My kids was like, yeah, nah, I'm we straight, ma. You, we good. I ain't sick no more. <laughs> I ain't coughing no more. But yeah, no. Nah. I was I in sober it. living when uh when COVID hit. And I was uh, I was like the, the chapter representative for like a, a county of houses. And that shit was crazy. Like people was catching COVID in one house. They couldn't they could not fuck their girlfriend who live in another house. So they was yeah. over there and they spread it over there. And oh they can't stay quarantined. Niggas couldn't make it two weeks. Without, yeah. Like just being in somebody's face. And that shit was just spreading like wildfire. Yeah, yeah COVID. And it's crazy. I... I, I and with working where I worked during the pandemic, in the beginning, it was like fucking rapid fire. Boom, boom, boom. And they would send you these letters like someone could either you were able to you told them to put your name or it just would say such and such had, you know, somebody had COVID on your shift or whatever. But the, we got them letters literally like fucking every two days in the beginning of that shit. And I'm like, yo, bro, what the fuck? And so at this time, I live with my dad. 
that his whole immune system is, you know, he um he had a double lung transplant, so our whole entire house was on like fucking panic mode. Niggas coming from work getting naked outside type shit, taking off everything in the garage, you know, shit like that. Um straight to the shower, things like that. So we was very cautious in our house. And luckily nobody in our house either uh at that time. I don't think nobody still have it. Um, you know, got COVID or whatever, but it was just way crazy how my job was. And I'm like, bro, why won't y'all shut this down? They like we're essential. Who the fuck need cocoa butter that bad? Yeah. Who the fuck need lotion that bad? But how they made it essential is they start making spray hand sanitizer. So that's mm. what sent you out the ass. We was making hand sanitizer like fucking crazy. Yeah, I was like, bro. I like I mean I appreciated it, but I really wish I was able to stay my black ass the fuck on. Oh, they sounded cool in the beginning when they sent us home, but they were talking like two weeks and now mm. like two years later, and I still don't really leave the house on a daily basis. Like I yeah, I never thought I would want to get up and like drive to work, but I just want to be somewhere fucking else other than in this room. Yeah, I feel you. Same screen. <laughs> yeah, I feel you. So that's how I am too. Like I, I was working at a hotel or whatever, and then I moved. I mean, I didn't move far from the hotel, but I just didn't feel like going through that whole getting on the base and showing your ID, scanning, doing this, doing that. So I'm like, fuck it. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to go back to work from home. And now I'm like, bro, I want to go back to an outside job. This is ridiculous. I'm like, I don't like sitting here either. But I've worked on phones. Like, I worked in call centers. Yeah, so that's what I do. Like what six I do years. That's, I'm call center at the crib. Yeah. But, um... Now that I do it from home, like, do you know call centers suck? People don't tell you about that. People be stanking, <laughs> rude on I've top of each other. I've worked in some brick and mortar call centers, and they they were very very <laughs> trash. But there's they suck at home also. Um, I like the company I work for. Like I told you, I put old people to sleep, and then it's technically it's a company kind of like Life Alert. So you like they fall down like help me, Amron, I need help. And hey, I'm really like doing that. <laughs> we're hiring. We're always hiring. Oh, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> I will for real. But they um, a lot of times it's just you know elderly people who are lonely. Like mm-hmm. they don't have anybody to talk to. Oh, so okay. I spend a lot of my nights talking. You know, Miss Shirley, Jamie, hey, Tommy. Okay. You know, and you work at night? Mm, I work third shift. Okay. So it'll be situations like, you know, little Reg ain't called me yet. Oh. Uh, well, what happened? And we just. <laughs> oh, I need doing. that. I need <laughs> that. I need that for sure. I need that. I will. I, I don't have a problem working third shift at all. I need that. That would be fun because I love to talk to older people anyway. And it's like, especially in the call center environment, a lot of times when I work for. I worked for Samsung doing tech support. I worked for Verizon at one point in time. I got tired of people calling me and cussing me out. Yeah. Like, this is different. Like, this is completely different. What I do... want to call you. Hey, Dremo. What I do right now is I work for a company called Sedgwick where they do um, leave of absence and short-term disability. I know Sedgwick. Sedgwick done fucked me up a couple times. Listen, (laughs) I'm done with them. And... I'm, I when I say I'm done with them, my the client that I'm working with is Walmart, the worst fucking people ever in life. Bitch, don't call me about your fucking short term disability check that you didn't get. Bitch, you didn't send all the paperwork in, but now you mm-hmm. mad at me because you ain't getting no money and you've been out of work for six weeks. Mm-hmm. That's my fault. Yeah, this uh, I swear I had a lady call me a nigga, and. I mean, I got the fuck off the phone so fast. I hit my my team lead up. Was like, yeah, I'm out. She was like, what happened? I'm like, yeah, go listen to that call. I swear to God. And I ain't been. I I haven't worked right ever since. I go to work and be like, yeah, I'm done with this shit, and I'll leave. I think sometimes the opposite of that is when on the phone you're racially ambiguous. Yeah, you get a little too comfortable. Yeah. And then I have to. Oh, what happened? Like as soon as like the whole Black Lives Matter thing happened, I had to explain to somebody like I'm black. 
<laughs> like there, there's no there's no we. <laughs> I'm I'm sorry. <laughs> and I never like I had to get coached on that call. But I was like, what was I supposed to say to that? Like, yeah, that's true. <laughs> I'm not gonna sit there and agree with them on some. I'm I'm black, so you people be crazy. I used to work for uh, I used to do a call center work for child support enforcement in uh, in PG County, Maryland, and them calls used to be off the chain. And we be sitting there like, you know, I can see your address, your social right. security number, I know all your info, you know where you work, and you talking you talking real crazy right now, like. Oh, people get bold on the phone. People get and, real bold on the phone. I was in that. I was in a situation like that too. I used to work for the Georgia Department of Revenue, so you got people calling because um, they shit. They tax return got offset. Bitch, you owe child mm-hmm. support. The state got you. Yeah. I'm sorry. And now oh. they ain't supposed to take my motherfucking money. Yep, clip. You got one time to curse at me. I just over it. I'm not going to lie. The one time I did get offset, I knew it was going to happen. I was just hoping that it wasn't. (laughs) Listen, these people always know and call and act like they didn't know that this was happening. Nigga, you knew you owed $4,000 in child support. You thought they was about to get that money from you? I owed a school. And 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 I had moved back to the state. Oh, yeah. So it was either child support or the Department of Labor was getting their money back (laughs) from unemployment. Type shit. Mm-hmm. Oh, them folks used to be mad. They used to call up there, cuss your ass out. The lines are open at eight o'clock, and they had the queue on the wall. Shit, it'd be a hundred people in queue at eight o'clock. Yep. Like, bro, we, you... you ain't got nothing else to do. Yeah, I had to do the, had to do the child support stuff face to face at one point. We was behind glass and shit. Of yeah, course. but uh. Dude came up there one time because his license got suspended because he mm-hmm. owed. And he, he came up to find out how much he owed. I told him it was like 800 or something. He tried to give me cash. He started pulling out like hundreds, like bills, just pulling them off. I'm like, nah, you got to go get a money order. So dude goes get the money order. He comes back. He gives me a money order for 400 I take it. I take it to the back. I get him a receipt. I bring it back. He's like, where my form for my license? I'm like, nigga, I told you $800. You gave me four. He's like, but you took my money. Of course, I took your money. You ha- you handed it over here. I'm gonna take four what instead of nine. Like, you know what I'm saying? You owe eight. You gave me four. I'm not gonna not take it, but right. I can't give you your license back until you pay the whole thing. I was scared to leave work that day. I thought he was gonna be waiting for me. Oh, yeah. shit. See, this is awesome. like that. I've really been watching this nugget porn, and once you put in this nugget porn, it opens like a weird really wa- like you really want to search it. How's like, that I just wanted to see what it was. <laughs> All right, what is it? What is it? I, I'm, um, I don't want to see like, it. I just need to know. It's like amputee porn. It's niggas with no arms, no legs, just dick. Yeah. Like, I'm a kid. calling them nuggets? Like, I that's guess so, how they yeah. call them nuggets. <laughs> the fuck out of here. <laughs> so you're curious, right? <laughs> this is the end of the world type shit, right? This is how you know <laughs> But here's my problem, though. Like, I've, I'm noticing... There's not much diversity here. So if there was somebody interested in getting a porn who happened to be an amputee with a little melanin, you'd be like kind of popular, I guess. I mean, oh, they all- of course, we got to dominate. At some point, we got we to let them have one. <laughs> let, them, let them have one. Yeah, because it's nothing but lack of melanin here. Very interesting. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm, I'm mad at this shit is spreading. I'm mad. Are this. Fucking, this is too fucking funny for me. There's somebody watching this right now that's about to go search that shit. About you to not go, go look up nugget porn. You just want to see what I'm seeing. Now that I know, Ooh. I don't want to see what you're saying. I'm glad <laughs> that I didn't search it at all. Fucking nugget. Mm-hmm. Oh, me. so now that we talk about jobs, what's the worst job you ever had? All of them. Nah. All <laughs> of them? The job joint was close. I sold uh I sold credit card processing machines at one point. Oh, I know and that. I mean, that's a good return for that. Like calling calling businesses at like calling restaurants at lunchtime and shit like that. Like that's a guaranteed way to get cussed out in several languages. I done probably heard all kinds of curse words and languages I ain't understand. Uh, 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 that had to be the worst job I ever had. Um I did that nice selling bullshit. I worked for Vector. Oh my god, <laughs> I sucker. 
They the man said I can make like a thousand dollars in like two days, and I was like, "What?" I went to the interview, but that's about, <laughs> far, that's about as far as I got. Yeah, they got me like that with Kirby. I went to the interview, and I was like, "Yeah, nah, I've been here, done that. I already know what y'all stilo is. Stop fucking playing with me." They got me. Um, I don't know. I had a lot of bad jobs. Oh, I, I worked at the movie theater. But I was too old to work at the movie theater. I shouldn't have did that shit. Oh, uh, you was one of them grown folks <laughs> working at the movie. Yeah, the late it was some bullshit. I was like 22 and I wasn't even that old. But everybody I worked with was 16. And it was just awkward. It was real awkward. I was the old bitch at 22. That don't even make sense. <laughs> when I got out of rehab, I was probably like what 36, 37, and I went to work for McDonald's first job I could get. And so I was the old head in there, but I love that shit. Like just being able to talk to them little kids any way I wanted to. And mm -hmm. No name, no nothing. And you know, this is some bullshit. But then I, I, I did love my time at McDonald's. I could go to work and just not think and just, I, I know there's nothing you can ask me to do in a McDonald's that I can't figure out. This IT stuff, I worry about that shit every day. Like I go to work, they might ask me something and I, don't, I ain't gonna know. McDonald's, I never had that problem. Nothing you can add. I know the whole menu. I'm good. <laughs> yeah. I think for any fast food job I had was trash. Facts. Yeah. When I moved back home, I couldn't, like, I was looking for a job and, you know, I'll, I'll work. So I worked at Burger King and it was so depressing because it's like, I have a whole degree, but won't no motherfuckers hire me. <laughs> um... <laughs> So I went to Burger King and I ran into somebody I went to high school with and they hit me with the, like, I thought you would be doing so well. Bitch, oh, I'm working. <laughs> I'm working. What I do you mean? <laughs> there right. could be many other things I could be doing. Like, what are you talking about? I mean, you must don't love your life because I'm handling your food. You might want to uh, think twice about how you talk to me right now. Right. Mm -mm. People yeah. give you a sad face. I'm, I'm working. I'm employed. Mm. Shit. I could be fucking your daddy. How about that? I think about that. Y'all never think about that? Like when people do like weird shit to you, like, bitch, I'll fuck your daddy. <laughs> 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 I'm <playing with me. laughs> Don't play with me. I'll be your Yo, step. I did <laughs> not expect that shit to just come out your mouth. Holy shit. Like that's my ultimate, I guess, as Big Smash had his draw for. Keep fucking with me. I'm a yeah. fucking father. <laughs> I mean, have you ever fucked uh, like somebody you know's father? Um, yes, but I didn't know that was day daddy. Oh no, nah. <laughs> I knew was that. Let me tell you something. Okay, I told this story before. This was my homie's father. Damn, this my type of shit right here. Damn. This was this was my <laughs> homie's father. Like, nigga, he used to take us out on, uh, to dinner, all type of shit. I used to spend night at their house. Now I was grown though, but you know. That nigga was my nigga, and she did not know that her daddy was my nigga. She didn't know I was I was this close to being her stepmama. But I don't know if this is rude, but if you old enough to be my daddy, like I'll still call you Mr. So and so. Not yet. <laughs> <out of respect. laughs> yeah, out of respect. I respect my elders. I, respect. I dated a Mr. Rico for about a year and a half. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he never corrected me. He just thought that shit was cute. I don't know why. <laughs> well, Nigga said, I dated Mr. Rico for a year and a half, and he was good. Mm -hmm. You trying to mess up the mood? Call me sir and see if that don't Sir, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> we up, I'm on boat. I'm on gone. Yeah, I, I mean, I, me and her daddy used to fuck all the time. She, she, she ain't never know I was in her house some nights. <laughs> all type oh, of daddy. Wait, she was still living at home? Yeah. Okay. She you know, was at that nigga at, at the house some nights, everything. Yeah, this shit crazy. But I that, feel that, like now that, that I'm the time. Adult, that was the time. I mean, like, there's an age I won't go now. Like, I'm 35. Like, I'm not going to double it. Like, that's weird to me. Like, I shouldn't be that fucking me. with you. That yeah. uh, But I know a few, like, 62s. Like, you looking kind of good. You don't really look 62. I don't know. I think my limit is like 45. 
It depends. I think it depends on the person. But I'm not I, like. But, yeah, I was I, look. I was about to come back with my little hold on. But that's like my limit. But if you're older than that, and you know you you don't not say you don't look because I done seen some niggas of that's fifty something that's like mm -hmm. oh, okay, I see you. But like if it just like you said it depends on the person. But like just out here like if i'm like looking or something or anything like if i'm on like a dating app or something my limit is 45 always 45 mm -hmm. uh -huh. if denzel leave pauletta he could get it he's 68 <laughs> i do it right now on camera for y'all to see it so there's proof because people and, don't believe and i'm like this <laughs> <laughs> but when my closest to porn i do i do it right now listen uh yeah I'm. I had a real so like when I was younger, I was very like nigga. If you ain't older than me, you can't talk to me. I ain't talking to nobody younger than me. I'm not with that shit. Hell no. I got a little piece of youngness, and now that's seemed like the only thing that's attracted to me. So how how young are we going? Because I can't do anybody who can't go to the liquor store. Oh no nah, no nah, nah, come on now. No, hell okay, no. I'm just, I don't know how young we going. I'm just asking. No, 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 no. I got a 22. I, my youngest brother is 17. I could never. Right. So his friends uh, will definitely. No, I have, not cool. I have a 21 year old brother, a 22 year old brother. No. Now, my 24 year old brother, I fucked his, I fucked his friend for 10 months. <laughs> but. Okay. I was eight years older. I'm eight years older than this particular brother. So he's actually older than my brother. But I mean, I fucked him for 10 months straight, but I'll still fuck him to this day. Nigga, we used to be scheduling fuck appointments all the time. I'm coming to the city. What's up? Meet me at XYZ City. What's up? Like, we just met in Atlanta for Christmas. Hello. No, that's what I'm not giving up. That's, that's what is it. there. Is I was it? that friend that all I'll, I'll fuck your male relative. I'll do it. Oh like yeah, that, that was what I hate to say. It, that was people used to get mad at me about it. Like I want you to meet my cousin, but don't fuck him, okay? Girl, I'm cousin, right. a cousin. Now your brother, mm -hmm. I might, I might give you a little leeway with your brother, but your cousin. Mm mm. I don't. That's and it was your friend. Me. Look, that's your friend. Not your. That, that's how I see it. Your cousin <laughs> is your friend. No. You know, but my co host that's coming on tonight, I wouldn't fuck her brother just because we all grew up together, and I think yeah. he looks like a big version of her. Like, that would just be weird. Like, I don't want to fuck, no, <laughs> mm -mm. I want to do that. So, let me tell you how my brother, so my brother is five years older than me, right? And he had, had this one dude that his homie that we used to go get the weed from or whatever, and I used to be like, Yo, tell your friend I said, What's up. And he used to get so mad at me. I'm like, bro, tell your friend I said, what's up? Like, stop playing. I just moved back up north. Tell your friend I said, what's up? And one, he wouldn't do it. So one day the nigga came, actually, because my brother would always go out. The nigga came to the car. I was like, so uh, I keep telling him to tell you what's up. What's up? <laughs> my brother looked at me and was like, bitch. Like, I seen it right now. That's that sage that came out of him. He was like, bitch. Got to do it. I seen it written all over his face. He was like, yo. His friend was like, what's up? I was like, what's up? Say, like, stop playing with me. <laughs> but then he'll turn around and be like, yo, I'm trying to hit your friend. I'm like, but you wouldn't tell your homeboy what's up for me. But I was supposed to put you on one of my homies. I'm right. no hater. I will put you on real quick. The fuck? It depends. And my brother said, what's up? It depends. My um, really for me, I guess my brother would be like my cousin, just because I don't have any brothers. Um, <laughs> yeah, we yeah. grew up together. But I used to think it's weird when people used to like my cousin. Like, used to like ill. You because sure? Still, be, yeah. Well, yeah. When I was younger, I was like that. Now that I'm older, me and my brother have some of the most disrespectful conversations in the world, and I it. Actually, all my brothers, except for the one, I, like, I got one of my brothers that live with me. But all my other brothers, they will come up to me and tell me all their sexual escapades. And I be sitting there like, for real? Like, I'm giving them pointers and tips and advice. Even my oldest brother. And as soon as I start talking about any sexual escapades of mine, niggas is giving me all type of dirty looks. I'm like, Man. 
Shut the fuck up. Like, what are you talking about? Right, like, <laughs> they be like, we don't want to hear this shit. I'm like, but I just listened to how you telling me your bitch wanted you to fuck her in the ass type shit. Like, bro, that was real disrespectful for you to tell me. But I can't tell you how this nigga face was all in between my thighs. Like, this is absurd. I, I, yeah, that, I ain't weird. telling my sister nothing, and I don't want to hear nothing from her. Man, so I had to check so many dudes over my sister. I used to be parked in her social media, just oh waiting for a nigga God, to like, just please like a picture today. <laughs> waiting for it, huh? somebody in a minute, and mm -hmm. I need I need to release. So go ahead, go ahead. Like oh this. my, oh yeah, that's that. Look, now that I know you're sad, every time you say something, I'm like, yeah, I hear my brother coming out. I'm yeah. trying to stick that the calmest dude people know things. Yeah. So I, gotta, I gotta let them know it's a little what? more to it. My brother call call me. Look, while he down there, where you at, girl? He called me like, yeah. This white bitch, whatever, whatever. Who said it's all that's down here? What? <laughs> right, right. So, and it seemed like that's all he keep meeting too. I think he met like one black girl or whatever. But I'm like, he like, yeah, this white girl. She, but she lived a little. She didn't live in Wilmington. She lived a little ways. And he was like, yeah, she had red head. I wonder if her her uh, drapes match her carpet, whatever the fuck. However that saying go. And I'm like, what? You want to know if her pubes is red? Also, nigga, like this is weird. <laughs> and then we having a conversation. Hey, so he told me he go up there for like I think a day or two or something. He on his way home. He called me. He like, yeah, nah, this shit ain't gonna work. You know, the first time we smashed, it was cool. It was wet. It was this. I'm like, okay. And then he like, yeah, but then the second time that shit was like sandpaper. I had to fake my nut. I was like, yeah. <laughs> No, I, I never I'm still on the like, older dudes I would have sex with. DL Hughley, he can get it. Um, <laughs> DL, DL, she ain't here. nothing you was talking about. She in a whole nother, yeah, she, older dude roller decks right now. DL, DL yeah. actually, <laughs> as DL got older, he started to look better. Honestly, I'll still mess with Wesley Snipes. Oh, um, That's I'm black. sorry, I'm That's still black. on. Ne I'm still on Nino. I want him to say a few lines, and I'm with it. <laughs> I want to rock a bar, baby. I want to do that. Alan Payne. Yep, he could get it. He could get it. Um, sure. Yes, he can get it. Um, I had to think about that. Mm -hmm. okay, Fucked yeah. you up with that one, huh? Oh, yeah, I forgot him. I should not have been the last dude standing on this joint. I'm in the Damon wrong Damon Wayans. <laughs> you in the wrong situation. <laughs> I mean, Flynn, what, what older celebrity you try to... I know Angela Bassett got to be on that list, though. Angela yeah, Bassett. Because if I Neil, like bitches, I would be on her, too. Neil She's Long, still beautiful. Uh, Halle Long. Berry can still get it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But it's a laundry list. Yeah. I'm I not going to lie. I was kind of mad at Halle Berry for that movie. What, Monsters Make Ball? me feel good. What was that with Billy Bob what? Thornton? That Monsters made me mad. Ball? Yeah, I ain't like that. I'm mad that's the one she got the uh the, the Oscar, Oscar for yeah. me too. Super stupid. Same with Denzel. I'm mad that uh training Denzel. day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One movie where he say nigga like three hundred million times. times. <laughs> Oscar. My nigga <laughs> will be the one of the greatest gifts of all time. My nigga. Uh, Okay, this is gonna sound weird because I don't really like light skinned dudes like that, but Ice T can get it. I feel like I owe him. I owe Detective Tutuola to Tutu saving women out here. Tutuola. <laughs> can, can we talk about how shit flipped? Like Ice T is now a detective on TV. And he Ice was Cube makes family movies and shit. He was on Sesame Street. And they was gangsters, gangsters in the world. Gangsters as fuck. Like Ice Cube had a video where he's sitting on a, a throne on a mountain of skulls and shit. And that is nigga on Sesame Street. Like mm -hmm. Ice Cube was screaming, fuck the police. Yeah. It's a whole generation of people who don't know these was the most dangerous motherfuckers alive right. for a minute. And y'all loved them in all these these different roles that they got going on now. Yeah. It's rebranding. Rebranding. No. The one, the one that kills me, yeah, I see playing the, the detective, but this nigga in the Cheerio commercial, yeah, <laughs> yeah that's really nice. that you one right there took me out when I seen it. I said, "Oh shit!" What is that thing where you can get like celebrities to tell you happy birthday? What is that called? You know what I'm talking about? Mm -mm. Where they make like a little video for you? 
No, I never do that. I can't think of what it's. I'm gonna, I'm gonna Google what it is. But I try to get one for my daughter because she has a thing for iced tea. Again, oh, we love Detective Tutuola. Um, how old is your daughter? Nine. And she's okay. have a thing like she just love iced tea. Yeah. And then you know that commercial where he's like selling like car warranties. Oh. Every time she's like, "That's Detective." <laughs> yes, Detective. I told you when you used to be a pimp. He probably still is a pimp. Right. Yes. <laughs> you see, Coco. She looked like one of them little. Nightwalkers. Coco scares me. She's done too much to herself. Mm. Speaking of plastic surgery, like I, I talk about I'll buy myself an ass, but in reality, I would never do anything to my face. Like even mm. as I get older, I don't want to do any lifts or anything. No. Nah. Um, how we feel about Lil' Kim? Is we did anybody go get her yet? Look. <laughs> <laughs> we we we're not talking about Lil' Kim. We got her. little leprechaun. Yeah. I, I'm gonna be honest with you. When I be and I love down for myself, fuck I play Lil Kim songs to remember I, who I am. I love Lil Kim, but I'm so disappointed in what she did to herself. Like she was so beautiful. I had this whole conversation. I said when she got the nose job, she was good. I'm okay. She she didn't. You know, some people just didn't like they fat nose. Cool. That was it. After once you start doing the little, uh, honestly, she wasn't even. She did a little bit more before she did the the year and a day, right? Mm-hmm. Right there is where she should have stopped. Mm-mm. So was that like oh six? That right there, it should have never went no further than there. Now she looks scary as fuck. Like Kimberly fucked up, bro. A whole nother person. So disappointed in her when it come to that, all because she wanted to look like fucking Victoria Gotti. Like, bitch, is you serious right now? And it, it just is so disturbing on listening to her talk also. If you listen to her talk in the 90s and listen to her talk right now, you're like, this is not the same fucking person. Mm-mm. Nope. I don't even want to get... Like Spike Lee deserves the pussy. Spike Lee. I'd fuck him too. <laughs> I owe it to him. Um... <laughs> she is still going through the list. <laughs> <laughs> He came right back to that motherfucker, though. Like, I'm looking up celebrities over 60. That's what I'm doing right now. Oh. Um, he's owed it. I think that's for the culture. Lawrence Fishburne? Nah. nah. No? Nah. That, his, them holes in his face is not it. I'd feel him. Nah. <laughs> nah. <laughs> fuck that. Nah. I can't fuck him. I don't know about over 60, but you got it, sis. Uh, he fine. But, like, something that's older than me, yeah, you know, but... I used to say Eddie Murphy, but he don't He don't want me. When does that movie come out? Which one? The new one with him, Neil Long, Lauren London, and Jonah Hill. I don't know. Why were people upset about that movie? I thought it was an okay concept. They like, why is it always an interracial couple? Why is it always a white man with a black woman? Why can't it be a black man with a white woman? I said, bitch, we had enough of those. We have. Y'all but- remember in the 90s where the same like 12 black actors and actresses kept doing the same movies over and over again? Yeah. And we were trying to act like they weren't the same movies? Uh, <laughs> or it was the only ones you've seen, period. Period. No, nope. <laughs> nobody changed. Ayo, no, everybody hates Chris, right? Hmm. The show. Just him. Period. <laughs> <laughs> wait, Chris who? Rock. <laughs> oh wait, why do we hate Chris Rock? Because he let Will Smith smack the shit out of him. Okay. All right. Can we can we discuss that? Come on, we can we can discuss that. We can switch it. That's that. All right. When it uh when it happened, I seen the next day it was so many women that was like, yo, you know, that's that's how my man gotta be. My man don't play about me and all this other shit. And I, if if you let to me, if you a woman in that in that scenario where it's the biggest night of your husband's life, and somebody say something about you, he say something. Somebody don't attack you they don't step off the stage moving towards you like you in imminent danger they say some shit about you that you don't like borderline disrespectful it's a joke we at the oscars that's what's really supposed to happen but whatever and you let your man go up there 
and smack him on live television to me that's that's you didn't care about that nick like you you can't care about that nick like why would you let would you really let your dude go do something like that in your quote unquote defense just for something somebody said no nah. it was not then like, here's what i'm saying if they were to been like a separate conversation later and then he got slapped like let's say they were at a party they were talking i ain't like that chris again said some smart shit, and then he got smacked that would make more sense to me but um the way that happened was just weird first it of was all, weird and called for the way that nigga cop back and slapped was just absurd for me and the simple fact that what really pissed me off, I'm, I'm going to get to Jada, but what pissed me off is Chris Rock from Brooklyn. He's no longer allowed to say he's from Brooklyn. Like, I'm so offended. Like, nigga, that's not even how we get down. What is wrong with you? But um, I agree with you, Flynn. Like, why? I mean, well, to answer you, no, especially on this, the things that he was getting awarded for that night and what was happening why would you you should have tapped that nigga on the lat on the leg like nah baby it ain't nah, even yeah, that it's cool like yeah yeah it's cool let, let that one slide but the simple fact that all these women like yeah and nah, then nah, nah. bitch yo nigga won't even fucking buy you a quarter bag of chips and you talking about it my man don't do this for me bye Bro, your man is cheating with goddamn Keisha right now. Of course he's not about to do that. But the 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 thing also with that is how Jada is straight okay. and blatantly affected my man afterwards. Like, I don't need nobody protecting me. <coughs> I'm like, damn, sis. Like, this your husband, bro. Like, even if you felt that way, you didn't have to say that. You could have said something totally different. I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't think Jada really liked Will no more. Just, just I don't be honest. Think liked him anyway at all. Look at what she used to date. Tupac. <laughs> will okay, him, sure. So it's probably like a a different kind of what she used to. But to me, I was like, hey, she winning because she got with him. Really, you know what I'm saying? But I get it. I think he is more of um, you know, he takes it. He might and I think that's what turns her off. I think it's when she stated under that little red table talk, it's hard being Will Smith's wife. She definitely said that more than once, too. Yeah, like it's it's not just like a regular marriage. It's like she I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm shocked she didn't do more with her career. Cause I thought she was doing pretty good in the beginning. She took a back seat to his. Cause he started to go crazy. His his career started to skyrocket, and she took a back uh, for him to do his thing, which is admirable. But shit, bitch, jump back in at some point in time. True. And then when she jumped back in, I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm not really a fan of red table talk. Like every blue moon is kind of like, oh, that's a good topic. But that all that, mm, yo, the. Facial expressions that Willow mm. does is so fucking annoying. Mm. It's crazy. <laughs> that shit is so fu I love I love her mother. I yes. love her mother. Like Danny. Oh my god, but Willow and Jada could fucking <laughs> kick Jesus Christ. Mm -mm. I do need to go see that one with her auntie and her sister. Oh, I do want to see. Where they went? A uh, shot. She. It was. Uh, I don't know if it's the last one, but I know the last one. You know, dropped was with Ashanti, her sister, mother. Uh, oh, no. domestic violence situation. Uh, going on, but Jada ain't been. The same. She ain't been the same after. I don't fucking set it off. Shit. Which was such a good movie. It was. Do you do you know Nate? I need that money. It's my tagline. I would some <laughs> I'm in a bind, Nate. 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 Nate. Please have sex with me to pay my debt off. I'm about to switch phones because this one is dying. You can okay. put Jada on my list though, Amara. Jada, okay, I can see. But is no. she how old is Jada? Jada just turned 50. Can yeah, I ask? Can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. 
what's what's the um topic like what what's the list uh so <laughs> this motherfucker is bouncing back and forth we'll start talking about something and then she'll go back to which uh celebrity over 60 she would fuck yeah oh Right. See, but we'll, so we were just talking about Jada Pinkin and the Will Smith and this, and then she going she about to go back to who she gonna fuck. How old is Trench? Like, why we gotta do sixty? Ooh, yeah, that was just two. her. That we was her, get, like in Raheem, like we, something like we, that. Like I know they're in the fifties. Kiki, we not doing sixty. She's doing sixty. Oh. Okay, so let's. I'll drop it down ten years. Like all okay, we get so is so like Morgan 60. Freeman. That's not happening. Right. Morgan Freeman is eighty uh ninety two. Stop playing. God, God, you would fuck God, <laughs> right? That, who is that? <laughs> Jesus. I don't Arnold know. Schwarzenegger. Mm 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 mm. The oh. accent turns me off. Mm mm. I have to. I have to go. Uh, let's say over fifty. Okay, let's turn it down. Okay. But yeah, Trent, over 60 you know? is, I'm, I'm like, I'm not there yet. Like, I just got in my 40s, so I'm not there yet. Don't knock it till you try it. <laughs> it, it well, does it work? Yeah. It, they still have babies at 70 and 80. Yes, it works. Like, like, it's like, technology like, these days. like, when it's soft, is it, like, wrinkly? Let's not do that. Like, come on. <laughs> do I need to okay. do that? If y'all need to do that, I get you know. Okay, Flan, Flan, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> I'm just let, let me let me bring it back. Pussy is good. Titties are great. Okay, hold I'm on. Sorry. Wait, look, Flan. When you was uh doing your shit, Flan said, "I hate that I'm the last nigga standing because this conversation <laughs> is really because we was we were just talking about some shit." And Flan, Lenny said, Kravitz. I hate. Oh, Lenny Kravitz definitely. Lisa Kravitz. Bonet. Yeah, but, but listen, guess- you got. Listen, these women are beautiful. So you got the pick of the litter. We don't. Obama. As we get older, we get more distinguished. When you get the salt and pepper shit going. The salt like and that. pepper is so goddamn sexy. Jesus Christ. It, it can be, but there I'm ain't that really, many sexy. Like, it, there's there's really not no many sexy people. Down here. Is this in Hollywood? Um, It could be anywhere that we may know. Leon. Leon deserves it. Leon definitely deserves Le- it. Leon is, oh. Uh, mm. No. What? He still look good as fuck. How old is Tyson? Tyson Beckford? That's a good question. Hold on. Nah, she talking about um, Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson. No, not Mike Tyson. <laughs> I would never. Again, Mike Tyson deserves it too. Oh, Tyson Beckford is 52, so he makes the list. He will, okay, bite, your, he will bite your ear off. Just Dr. Dre? Eye. Dr. Wait. Dre and Ice Cube. Dr. Dre is going to hurt you. He does not have a good track record. <laughs> well, I'm not trying to be with him. Uh, yeah. um, he, he do like slapping bitches, though. <laughs> the, bad Dave, the Bad Dave Chappelle? What's that man name? The Bad Dave Chappelle? You know the Bad Dave Chappelle. He was in Jason Lyric. He was the brother. What's that man's real name? Um, I don't know. 16. I don't know who that is. Okay, y'all remember the movie Jason Lyric with Alan Payne? Yeah. The brother that was drinking and the mama had to tell him to get out. I'd mess with him. Bro. He could get it. Now, you know, I'm I'm sleep deprived right now. I have no clue who the fuck you talking about. When I, I'm fuck up his name. I know I'm not saying it right. Uh, Bokeem Woodbine? Bokeem Woodbine. And no, it's a hard no for me. I do that. I do yeah, that. That's a hard no for me. Bokeem. I had to look up some names. Hold on. Let, let's talk about Bokeem real quick. He's been in 40,000 movies, 20,000 TV shows, and no accol- accolades, no awards, no nothing. Like, why they did my man like that? I don't. He, because he's the bad Dave Chappelle. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know else to describe him. Um, He's had some good roles, though. In reality, he has had some good yeah. roles. But even in like black people movies, he ain't even won like a BET award, I don't think. Nothing. NAACP. I'm like, fuck. We need to figure out what that's about. Vanessa Williams. Vanessa Williams. Yes. Which one? Which one? Both of them. You know, there's a dark skin and a light skin. Yeah. I think them both. I I, I don't do the colorism. The one with the locks and then uh, green eyes. 
I'm good on both. I'm good on both. Okay. 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 Janet okay. Jackson. Janet Jackson. Yep. Janet. So pretty. I can't think of no old. I need. Bitches. I need a list so I can see. She's googling them. That's why she over there on point. Yeah, I'm googling. Uh, Garcelle. Who about Terrence Howard? No. I no don't like, like. I don't do light skin. I don't like light skin too tough either. This nigga talking about he an astrophysicist and he didn't invent it. The uh, like the. Energy that is saved away. You seen this shit that Terrence Howard been talking about recently? No. What? Oh, yeah, no, he's still that. Yeah, he's been doing something. I don't know. I think he's on one or oh, a couple no, of. No, I was not aware he <laughs> is. A- <laughs> he's he's he dropping white paper. You, y'all. You met. No. I met Terrence Howard in real life. Damn. At Food Line. Buster Rhymes. Yeah. We do Buster uh, yes. Rhymes. Yes. Yes, Method Man. Mm. Yes, Method Man. yep, mm. yep. Mm. I said his mm. name right though. The old school rapper Raheem. Shot Raheem. Yep, yep. Yeah, Raheem. I would take all the chocolate because the chocolate aged so wonderful. Rakim. Rakim. That's it. Yes. That's Ooh, really? like, who the fuck is Raheem? Raheem <laughs> sounds fine though. So I said yes. Yeah. Rakim. <laughs> yeah, I would definitely. I would eat. His life, I would eat him. Oh, <laughs> I'm gonna have to dip soon. <laughs> My man said, I'm about how, to. How old is uh Carrie Washington? Oh, she's beautiful. She's 40 something. 40 something. Yeah, I don't think she's 50 yet. She's too young. Too young. Yeah, she's 40 something. Oh, but she I'm is beautiful. Yeah, she's think. very beautiful. What about Viola Davis? She got a run. She done done she some... it. <laughs> Some of her roles, Make some of them like sleeve type roles, it's just too. Yeah. Yeah, I, you know, I, I can't. But, but her body is banging. Like, did you see her? Um, what that woman that King. Was, Yeah, Woman King. Her body is banging. But you gotta you gotta catch Viola when she all dolled up. Yeah, it's she a got a strong vibe. face. Yeah, she one of those chocolate women that you know you know they got that ugly face when they not made up, but they not like ugly ugly, but she a little off. But when she when she made up, man, she's a fine little chocolate little lady. I tell you something, she is. She all right now. I just like chocolate. Like, I, if I was a man, I would want chocolate women. I didn't know I had to type into my best friends like, "Bitch, have you noticed all the niggas that you've been dealing with is is black?" I was like, "Oh, yeah, I thought, chocolate." I thought, I thought I liked the my color. <laughs> chocolate can hurt me. Any other. Huh? Chocolate can't hurt me because I will fall oh, head okay. over heels. Yeah. So, but like my complexion, like I, I, I would, you know, I had some fine ones. My complexion, like I would take them a little serious. But chocolate and a and a white pretty smile, like that would just hurt Ooh. my heart because I know he's going to chocolate cheat. and a crispy white smile is a fucking heart melter. Jesus Christ. Thanks. So no. I hear I hear uh, men often say, uh, "We don't have type; women do." But men do have types. They do. You know what I'm saying? Like we I just, hear that all the time. It's like kind of contradiction. It's kind of contradiction because one second we could be like, "Well, X, Y, Z," and like, "Oh, well, I can't, I can't deal with her. She's not my type." But then you just say you didn't have a type. So, Flan, do you have a type? Does men have types? Men have types. They just step outside of them so often it doesn't matter. Like, who cares? Like, the lines you know, is blurred. You, <laughs> you have what you like, but that doesn't mean you turning down anything else outside of that that's coming your way. So, yeah, what's the point? Like, I have an issue when your exes look like they could be related. That just be weird to me. Oh, my God. Why do you want bitches that look the same? That's so crazy. Women do that, too, though. They do. Like, all your exes look like cousins. That'd be weird. All my exes live in Texas. <laughs> my whole thing is with, bigger in Texas too. So I don't mind people having a type plan. <laughs> <laughs> my whole thing is I don't mind when people have a type or a preference. My whole thing is just don't down what you don't like. If that's not yeah, your cup of tea, that's perfectly fine. I agree with you on that one. Men don't know how not to do that. Mm-mm. In my Ooh. opinion. Because it just seemed like I, I'd be in a barbershop, right? 
Yeah. And I know for a fact, like I'd be at the, like when I used to be in the clubs heavy, I used to see certain dudes date certain types, right? Mm -hmm. But a certain type that could come in and I know that that person would be on it, but because all the dudes was like, oh, no, nah, dog, I can't really get with that. But he hops on the bandwagon and talking bad, but I'm like, but I know you will smash. I seen you with something less than, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, that's what I don't understand. Like, be yourself. That's that's the type of man I like. A man that can stand up to other men. Like, it don't matter. If you like little mole looking people, like little mole little people. You and know that's what I'm saying? Because there is men out here that like, that are attracted to just midgets. And they're regular. George Clooney. And they go get their midgets. And they walk and be like, she's beautiful. And I don't even like pink meat, but he, he's fine. I would do George Clooney. You know what? What's the dude from The Office? Have you seen him now that he got a little, uh, was it Steve? Steve Carell. Yes. Now that he got that white box going, that's kind of cute. That's kind of cute. Steve Carell. I'm just uh, going to go ahead and Jamie put Fox. my head down for that. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie Foxx. Um, okay, let me explain. Okay. Um, I, don't, I like Jamie Foxx. Matter of fact, he's one of my favorite artists. Um, Unpredictable is my song. I'm mad that's the song that you chose to sing. Like, yeah, that's my jam. Mine is slow. <laughs> hey, you play slow, I might just give it to you. It's like liquor to me. Oh my god. Remember we were talking about songs on our um on our sex playlist, Unpredictable's on mine. Uh -huh. I feel like that's a good we could go with that. We could go with that. It's a good beat. Um Oh, I did have y'all talk about that. <laughs> yeah, but I don't think and then I we became a porno show. Yeah, I don't think I really want to see him naked though. Like, I think he could keep his pants he, on. He's, he's very nice naked though. I know he is. I'm good. Some of them is just kind of weird. Yeah, he I, he looked good naked. I don't know something with his jaw. I don't know what that is. Something something weird. I'm telling you, something. Yeah, off. he has. He has. He definitely has a weird look to him. Y'all can't say nothing about men. Y'all can't say nothing about men. You see how y'all that y'all dissecting this nigga? His jaw. His, his <laughs> jaw. His jaw. What boxes Jamie Foxx don't check? And we talking about his fucking I jaw. I would hit right it. Now. I would hit it. Something's something's off. I'm telling you, something's off. I'm getting a weird. You just vibe. have a funny look to him. You know what I mean? And then you probably used to him playing Wanda and stuff like that. So you definitely see that. Maybe I'm gonna throw maybe another white. It. I'm gonna throw another white one in there. Brad Pitt. <laughs> Kiki, did you read my mind? <laughs> Must did y'all say that together? Yes, um, we said it at the same fucking time. But we can, we can pick Brad right Pitt. Here. Yes. Don't hmm? get too comfortable, Flan. Yeah, I said it's that. Like I was too excited when I said that. I you was. Oh, we can throw white people in there? Okay. Bet. Yeah, he was like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> my bad. I, went, I ain't mean to be that Keanu excited. Keanu Reeves. It's all right. Old Keanu, you, actually, I could still, I could do Keanu now. I could see no, that. Keanu now with the long hair and the beard is fire. But you know, speaking of Brad Pitt, I'm proud they had their daughter went to Spelman. I was yeah, proud. Yeah, I love, I love that. Oh, oh, you know what other way do Rob Lowe? Yes, yes. Mm -mm -mm. Three mm -mm. checks. Mm -mm. Come back to it. Shaka Khan. Shaka Ooh. Khan, she's Shaka nice. Khan. There's a um wait, there's a podcast that's doing like Madonna this story right now. Madonna looks horrible. That she Madonna looks like a fucking scary alien. She's but I feel like she did some weird me. stuff to me. She used to be. Have you seen her now? Wait, she aged bad. No, I'm, she didn't I, age well. But I feel like Madonna. That might Madonna be kind of funny. A lot of her face is so pretty. No, Madonna did has done a lot of work recently. No way. Oh, she touched. Oh, she did work. You know who else pissed me off that did work that didn't need it? I always thought Vivica Fox was gorgeous, and then she touched her face, and I'm like, for what? Like you were the. You were the chick in the hood that all the dudes followed. You know what I'm saying? Like, why would you touch yourself? I felt like Vizca Fox was weird after 50. Look, I don't know. Where... Look, Kiki. <gasps> oh, shit. That does look scary. Oh, oh no. Hold on. Let me find another. I bet you oh, she would look, I bet you should have looked. Madonna now versus old Madonna. That's the Madonna you told me. That's the yes, Madonna I know. That's pretty Madonna. That's pretty Madonna. 
I'm trying to what because her face, she has it, her eyes and her face, she has like this, she has a look to her. Oh, here you go. <gasps> That's what she looked like now. Yep. Mm -hmm. She like the white little Kim. Yeah. Yep. Right. Some ghoul or some shit. Yep. She been going crazy on TikTok. Like she doing a lot of fucking TikToks. But yeah, Madonna's. <sighs> okay, but like, can, I, can I say something? Like, I, I, you know, I'm not the one for work. Yeah. But you know who did some work for himself, and they actually look kind of like I see why they did it, and it like it came out okay. K mm -hmm. Michelle, but K Michelle was pretty. Period. Yeah. Okay. But so, her work is like fire, though. Like I mean, I you know love, what I'm saying? I love K Michelle, but I don't like. I'm mad that she she didn't like how she looked, but she changed her look, and she actually doesn't look like how little Kim. No, she don't. Look. But I think it was a little bit too much with the nose area. Yeah, she totally changed her look. She looked like she yeah. could be her. She looked like she could be her cousin now. Oh, you, you know, know what I mean? What? The Rock. We forgot him. Oh, yeah, definitely. I, the you rock. know, he's lame. I would not give him no cuckoo. No, I want to do a Samoan so bad. <laughs> I, I would just probably do a not one, but not him. He is not on it. He, mm -mm. I got another white one, and I'm. He just seems so me. lame. Like I don't like pink meat, but I'm gonna leave. Um, I'm gonna give you that one. Hugh Jackman. Wolverine. Wolverine? Mm -hmm. Okay, I can see that. I can see that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, Jennifer Aniston. Okay, Rachel. Yeah. She's pretty. I like yeah. Rachel. Yeah. Okay. What about Rachel. Sharon Stone? Like, she's always been a fox. And she's still. She's still she's old. She's too she's old. Still, she's too old. But she's still she's old. nice looking at her age, though. Yeah, like, man, I used to. She's, she's, she's a nice looking woman. Like, Oh, what about the lady with the natural lips um, that dated Brad Pitt? Um, Angelina Jolie. What about Angelina Jolie? She flat. Oh, what about that, that pretty food. lady that played in Devil Advocate as his wife? Remember, I don't know her name, but she is such a pretty woman. And she um, she's like a model for perfume. Uh, it's a white lady. Blonde. Um, I'm about to see who that is. Very pretty. Oh, Charlize Theron. Yeah. Oh, she's was, and that's so crazy. I was gonna say her just now. After Monster, I, it's some like it's some roles that could just fuck, that just fuck it up forever. <laughs> and just after Monster, I just can't. can't Monster. Monster. Blair yeah, Underwood. Killer. Mm-hmm. 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 Yep. Got it. That Got it. Yeah, she, she did too well. Can't ever see her <laughs> just name. That was a good movie. Uh, what's Bruce Willis' ex-wife? Demi Moore. Demi Moore. She's beautiful. She's pretty. I like her smile. Like she's she got so, that little. She's she's what and we was talking about the that. You can tell she was a cute little girl. <laughs> she's one of them white women that age very gracefully. Yeah. Take it back to the Ebony uh, Regina Hall. I forgot about her. Oh, she's beautiful. Oh. With the pretty Demi eyes. Mama. Regina Hall. She's the one with the real pretty eyes, right? That played on um, it's a thin line between love and hate. No, that's Lynn Whitfield. Her too. Yeah, her too. Well, now who's the one we're talking about? Regina Hall from Best Wait, Man. Oh Regina yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what it's like. Smaller frame. She died. She the one who died. Scary movie. No, that's that's Monica Calhoun. The one that okay. died. What about Ronnie? That's Ronnie from uh, Ronnie Hocox, the, the, the stripper on um, Players Club. Players Club. I don't like the way she looked now. And yeah. Ooh, okay, if you had to do an old woman, right? The oh. woman that played as um, and she's a beautiful black older woman to me, but she is older. Um, she played on. What's the name of that religious? It was a religious. Okay, never mind. Because I'm, I'm not going to. Vanessa Bell Calloway. Is she the oh, one that played you. on um, uh, Bayou, Eve's Bayou? Ooh, I know you talk. Lynn Whitfield. Lynn Whitfield. Oh yes. yeah, she now she's gorgeous. Oh, she they, we just said her. Yeah. Oh. Yes. Yeah, no, she, she's also an actress. I feel as if she's done a lot, but I don't think she's gotten her role yet. And Angela Bassett. Oh my oh, we God, got, her yeah, body yeah, is the man. That was the first one we said, baby. <laughs> For real? <laughs> when the woman, with the woman, yeah. Yeah, Angela Bassett, hands down, that's like, she's like 65 years old. 
I said, if I liked women, she could touch me. I touch There's me. no way that she, you know, like I'm going to the gym and I'm going to just think about her. Like, matter of fact, I'm going to just put her body on the goddamn mirror when I'm working out. <laughs> Kimberly, Kimberly Elise. Yeah, she's beautiful. Yeah, she's Who's pretty. Kimberly? Uh, Kimberly Elise. Set, set it, it off. off. Uh, set it off. Diary of a Mad Black Woman. Diary of a Mad Black Woman. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She had him in a tub. <laughs> oh, her. Christina, Christina. <laughs> I know Holly Berry came up. Oh, yeah, yeah, she did came up. Yeah. She did came up. She, I think she was like one of his first three. She was like the first three, yeah. Oh man, Christina. Um, why not? You don't. You wouldn't do Michelle. Obama. Yeah. Oh hell yeah. Gotta add her. Just out of respect. Out of respect. <laughs> <laughs> My man said out of respect. Gotta get, out of respect, she got to get taken down. Hey. Hello. Hey. Hey, there, lonely girl. Join the party. Oh. What's up? What's up? Oh, my God. It's 5 a.m. I know. Y'all are so mm -hmm. lively. <laughs> yeah, we lit. <laughs> we up. Oh, what's we're going on? <laughs> oh, right now we're naming older celebrities that we would smash. <laughs> um, gotta be at least fifteen up. Fifteen. That's all that. That's older. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. that. That's that wrinkled up balls. Oh yeah. my god. All balls are wrinkled. But all he could be my wrinkled. lover. Right. Thanks, Wayne. All <laughs> balls are wrinkled. I'm gonna do like Dave Chappelle, get some Botox balls. But you know what's um, the you know what's the good thing about aging balls? It's like they kind of drop. They kind of drop and like from the back when he's hitting it, like he can hit your clip. So it's like amazing. No, too much of that makes me uncomfortable. I'm not even gonna lie. Really? Like that too much of an after back that's weird. That's weird. You know, I Rob I never knew what was going on until it, it hit the clip one time. I said, oh. Oh. That is a fun situation, Kiki. Jesus uh, Christ. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to let the ladies have it. It's okay, been, I'm sorry, Glenn. That's, that's all good. Y'all need y'all time. Y'all need y'all time. <laughs> yeah, look, this is above my, my, my pay grade. <laughs> Yeah, Courtney B. Vance, Angela Bassett's husband. Yeah, get you some sleep, Flan. I apologize. I can just be so nasty. Y'all, it's, it's all good. Enjoy yourselves. I appreciate y'all. Right. See you later. All right. Later, Gator. But Paula, tell us about your show. Who are you? Um, I'm Paula. My show is Talk Show with P. Um, Basically, our safe space to talk your shit, whatever shit it is, uh, whether we agree or disagree, but we learn something while also advocating for mental health. I buy with depression, so I'm a mental health advocate. And yeah, I like talking shit. <laughs> Me too, well, welcome, girl. Hey. That's what we do. <laughs> Thank you. And I'm sorry, you said you're from Nigeria? Oh, Tanzania. Tanzania, Tanzania. okay. It's oh, Africa, yeah. baby. Hey, no, we to the West, but yeah. <laughs> no, we international. This is nice. I love it. I <laughs> fucking love it. But I'm at I'm in Atlanta, Georgia at the moment. Okay. 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 Tanzania. Tanzania. I was just in Atlanta last month. Nice. Right. Did you have a good time? Girl, it was like going home. I lived there for 14 years. It was nothing new for me. It was, it was like, hey, y'all, what's up? Just I'm back. <laughs> I'm back in this bitch. Yeah. <laughs> they was trying to convince me to come back and live there. I'm like, nah, I'm good. Yeah, I, I'm ready to leave too. I'm, 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 I'm done with Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely, you know, somewhere that I'll always go, but I don't want to live there no more. Uh, me again. too. That's how I, I feel. I want to go because I'm like six foot. And and don't take the, this the wrong way. Whoever's listening, it's like I don't want to live there because I'm six foot, and I don't want to be mistaken as a man. As you know, what I'm saying dressed up. <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, Yo, would, what the hell? That would make me so mad. Oh my 
<laughs> you know, sometimes to me, I think that's a compliment because there are some beautiful, beautiful, beautiful um, female impersonators or like Listen, some drag queens. It may be a compliment for a gay man to feel pretty, <laughs> but it is not a compliment for a, a somebody <laughs> to tell me that I look like a man dressed up like a woman. That's just not flattering. <laughs> okay. I, I get you saying you're right. When you it say, really when you isn't. Say that, I don't blame you. It really isn't. <laughs> oh my goodness! It, it is very heartbreaking. So you thought you thought I was a man that was dressed like a woman, and I'm a woman. Yeah, I think that is kind of like. I fuck you, men. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it happened to me when I went down there. That's why I'm like Atlanta. Oh my god! It's like, like dude was like vetting me like hey man is you a dude because like i'm like whoa wait a minute i'm all female i'm just saying nah, but i i get why he doing that because they do begin tricked i mean it'd it be the city where you know a, 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 a lot be going on so <laughs> you <laughs> the man had to make he was sure trying to make sure he was trying to be sure shit Hey, mm -hmm. just the same way he asked you, was you sure you wasn't a man? Bitches gotta ask them niggas, you sure you don't take dick? Bro! Yeah. We, we oh no, me and him got into it. <laughs> we got into it, and he ended up saying, he was like, I'm sorry to make you mad, but I just had to make sure. I'm just like, no. It's, you can't come back from that. No. It did try to get my number. <laughs> like, what? I mean, now that it's sure, you know? Back to <laughs> business. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now that you know that I'm not a man, you can keep it pushing, though. Like, yeah, keep it pushing, pushing. Right out. But I want to ask you. It make me think, like, did you want a man from the jump? Yeah. Yeah, that might have been a preference. That is a red flag, though. Like, why, yeah. did, why would you ask me that? So I want to ask you this, because, Annie, I want to kind of go with what you were saying. Um, what You had said something about whether or not men are sleeping with men. Would you date an openly bisexual man? Absolutely not. No, but I do have a story. Okay. <laughs> Let me say something. Even on dating apps, when men just start saying they wanna experience their decor or all, I'm just I already know, like no, because <laughs> I'm already having a hard time having to like to other females i don't need when you tell me you're going to hang out with your boys i'm wondering your boys you or your care? boys boys like i ain't got time for all that like paula, no offense I and with you, paula. for those who like that good for you but for, good me, for nah, you nah, nothing nah, wrong nah, with that nah. but it ain't happening with me and paula I'm nah. with you, Paula. oh shit. hold on let me, light, let me light this motherfucker real quick god damn it god we ain't it. doing that i'm sorry and you can be hot <laughs> as fuck rich as fuck like i can experiment with you but i'm not gonna date you if you're rich and you got the money you know i can i can experiment with you and make you have your moment but we ain't dating Okay, so I met this guy. I believe I met him on Paula. So, social media I'm or there with you. or something. But anyway, so we were cool. We, uh, you know, instant vibe or whatever. He's a tourist just like me, so I already know like freak level and shit like that. And so we, you know, you had already planned it in the head. You were already. <laughs> so we we talking and shit like that, and he was telling me like. Yeah, you know, I'm bisexual now. It threw me for a loop. I'm like, what? He was like, like I don't fuck men, but I get my dick sucked. And I was like, oh, okay. Girl, so, he heard that hesitation. He do both. So, um, I'm like, alright, so we always been cool, whatever, whatever. We would kick it, smoke, whatever. So, this one particular night, I had went and fucked with a dude and that shit was trash right so i had hit him up was like yo what you doing come hang out and i was telling him the situation he was like come here right now i want to smell your pussy smelling like condoms this 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 so i'm like what the fuck so i'm like you wanted, you wanted to test the nigga which yeah. is <laughs> right? so I'm, like, I'm like oh okay. that's what the freaking sound like i'm like oh uh, it like threw me off, but I'm like, fuck it, shit. I was disappointed, so I'm like, fuck it, let's see. And, uh, you know, we went, nigga, dick big as hell, everything. You know, it was like the perfect situation. And um, 
I fucked them. I sure did. I didn't. I won't date a nigga that's bisexual, but I didn't have no problem with getting the ping ping or whatever. I'm anything. scared. But he wanted me because to put my all in his ass. <laughs> y'all ever noticed that all the big dick niggas? Yeah. Are yeah. Gay? This Look, no, he wanted me to put my I hate in big dicks. I, I, like, no, no, Paula, Paula is one no. of us. I like her because now somebody understands that average is okay because like big big things kind of hurt a little bit. Listen, I want to enjoy sex. I don't want to feel no pain. Like I, I love sex. I want to make sure that I'm up on that dick and shit. But if you're paining me, that ain't no fun. So I like medium as long as it's chunky and not chunky. thin. Yes, chunky and like <laughs> I should be feeling all the way, bro. Y'all be underestimating this. I know. Hey, because you know what? The chunky ones, no matter what the size, gonna stretch it. Bro, I like it. all the like, Listen, bro, I that like yeah. big dicks and I cannot lie. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> like, fuck out of here. I need, no I, I, like we was talking about earlier, I like an eight or better. But I could deal with a, I could deal with a seven. But I don't, anything smaller than that, we, we got to have a long conversation. Like even six, I gotta look at you like, are you six, really watching I'm, I'm my, very my time? Of you. Six, I, I'm six suspect. is cool as long as it's fat. Six is okay, like it's okay. But it's but but if you know what you're doing with a six, you you could come through with that for sure. Yeah. Wait, like, wait, 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 I wanna go back to savagely humble. So that nigga literally um, said he gets his dick sucked. Now I have a thing like that because first of all, I hate sucking dick. I'm very good at it. So if I'm giving you my time, my mouth is literally doing some art shit on your dick. But then now in my head, I'm gonna think like, so are you comparing it how I'm sucking? Yeah, so a nigga is sucking you That's how I'm gonna be in my head, like. <laughs> Out my pussy though. I ain't even bad at you. Fuck you Annie, that's what I'm saying. So okay. But I wouldn't date you. one to get to your question. I would never be I'm, in a relationship with one. No, ever. I'm yeah, I mean, I can you. experiment, but literally yeah. dating, like we are nah. dating. That's my my, my mind. And, nah, my, I'm sorry. My, mm, my mind will be all over the place. Like bless bro, you. you. Like you like Thank Paula you. said. When you go out, is you with your boys or is you with your boy boys? Like, <laughs> I, I, I would always have my mind will always be like that, so I could never like be with that person. But shit, what they do? <laughs> Y'all, yeah, here's my thing: a lot of men are bisexual, especially black men, and they hide it. Uh -huh. So they were involved with something that they would never tell you that they did. I would rather, I would rather know personally. Give me but the option. Just because you've been with a dude. Don't mean you gonna cheat on me automatically. That's because that's basically saying that he's messing with other women too. That's true. I'm just saying and right it's now, scary. people being more sexually open, I'd rather you tell me the truth than hide it. Because what oh, if you make God. a mistake and like you go raw? Well, that's the same thing as being. And then it's just like it's kind of taking a, a a really big chance because. Not only are you doing women, but you're doing. But it's taking so a, a chance. It's taking there's a, a lot of regardless. pH balances mm -hmm. going on. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah. I had this guy, um, and it, he became my very good friend. Um, he liked dressing up, you know, in lingerie, and then he started experimenting and he was enjoying. He literally called me one day, excited, yo, I got my dick sucked and I loved it. And every back and then, like, he can he cannot do it for like three months. He'll be dating a nice girl, and then he just takes me out of the rando. I miss, I miss that shit. I'm gonna go back on the app and see if there's a mm. guy. So, so so I feel like every now and then. Even if he did it one time, it's still gonna come back like that. Like, yeah, for sure. Oh my god, I missed that right. So, so I just know that not and, and if you tell me that's gonna screw up with my mind, literally I'ma leave you. I'm sorry, I'ma be like now my mind can't stay still because yeah, I'm yeah. literally every time you're out gonna be wondering that, literally. It's, 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 it's a scary world, like bruh, yeah, you don't and know. No, and no offense, um that side there's there's more diseases compared to just 
So I'm not trying mm. to like, I like clean. That, I like to be that's clean. what scares me. Like, oh my God, I'm about to get my pump pump check just because. Right. So, <laughs> all right. So speaking of that, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of in like pegging. Oh, I would peg you. I want to peg you. So peg you. I, I want to do it. Fucking up with a strap on. Yeah. I would do it. Oh, no. But, but listen, though, it's a lot of men that never been with a man, but they want that. Like, oh, they, yeah, that's they, true. they get off from it. It's a lot of, like, I've had two dudes approach How did they know they wanted it, though? So. I have two dudes that approach You know, they start with somebody, can you play with your uh -huh. finger in my asshole? Yep. You know, you know well, you, let me just tell you this. You know what? Because, and I'm just going to keep it real. I think a lot of this comes from being kids and kids seeing stuff and experiment with each other. Because even as a young woman, I had girls like grinding on me mm -hmm. and doing crazy stuff like coming up. You know what I mean? And but I, you know, and you I'm catch sorry, little man. boys doing stuff too, and you got to whoop their little butts. Yeah. So I wonder if that's where it comes from. But, like, but I'm going to tell you what it is the man's G spot is in their prostate. Mm -hmm. This and is what and stimulate work. them the most, Kiki. I and understand. Listen, listen. I understand that. But what made you want that? Like, you don't know until it happens. But you here's understand? the thing. I had a sex therapist on my show, and she literally, because um, she preaches most of the stuff she teaches, and she cancels on, she practices it with a man, and they're like 10 years different. And I asked her about pegging straight up, and she was like, Listen, it's good for the post-trade. It gives you amazing stamina for the men. It lasts mm -hmm. longer. They haven't yet, but it's on their to-do list. Yeah. Like, they literally have a to-do list of things. And she's like, it's very good. Like, from the feedback she's had, that pegging actually does increase. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I'm, I'm with, I'm with Amara and like, I will. I'm just will, not ready. I'm with Amara. I will fuck the shit out of a nigga. What? I will. <laughs> The walls to smithereens. Oh my god! I had two dudes approach me. I even uh, the nigga was like, "I I will buy everything. Just do it." I'm like, "Shit, set it up." That's what, what I'm saying. It? I will do it like, to I'm experiment with, as long as you, I'm not dating you. But if, if you, I'm in a relationship <laughs> with you, I'm not sure. I don't know. But when I'm just dating, like, come on, bring all the shit. Let's just, yeah. That way, if I don't have to see you the next day, I don't you give a fuck. Yeah, you can't be. With, we can't be together, but I'll definitely. Fuck I just don't know if I can. I, I just don't know if I can do it. Oh man. Now, if, 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 I'm trying to even think if there's like money involved, because I'm thinking like, hold on now, if you pay me to keep your secret, but like, uh, you know what's so funny? Just I don't said know. You know, and you know what? I got... want to get peed on to be turned on. Big ups, big ups to y'all that for y'all to be able to do it. I just don't listen, think I could be able to do it. Yeah, um, I don't even like sticking one at me. Listen, Jess Hilarious Ooh. was on the podcast. We need to talk about that, Kiki. What the fuck? She said a Jess Hilarious said a celebrity dude slid in her DM I with the bread, everything. You know what I'm saying? Thought she was a man. Mm. Willing to pay you send the flyer out, do this, do that, because they thought she was a man. And uh, I'd have been like, listen, I know I ain't no man, but I do it. Right. Mm. I forgot who oh, but, it's it's on, but the person for the right amount of money I would. On, Me too. I'll be a man for you. What I gotta do? Yeah. The yeah. person podcast she was on, she was like, shit, I'll beg that nigga for the bread. Hell yeah. Man, I'm telling I'll do that shit for free. I just want to see how you react. Like, I want to see what it is. I want to fuck you like you fuck like a nigga will fuck me. Like I, I want to give you what niggas have given me. I want to take you to smithereens. I'm sorry. It's just like it's something I got to do it at some point in time in my life. I got to. Okay, Annie. I want to take notice of this. We have two people here that aren't showing themselves. That's okay. We'll, we'll keep it going, but can y'all introduce yourself? Paula, did you bring guests? I think they are my guests. I saw Guantra coming in. If there's a Guantra, I'm not sure the other person. Mm -hmm. Yes, want is here. It's okay if y'all want to come in. We're just talking about dick and pussy. I know Guantra is shy, so I'm not sure if she... <laughs> she, she can talk. I don't know if she's going to put her camera on. <laughs> Those are my people in Tanzania. So... Oh, 
Oh yeah, she typing raw. And I, our baby just turned one two days ago. So new mom in the house. Okay. Hey, hey congratulations. But yeah. I'm not saying it. I'm just saying there's a lot of good men out there who are single who would love to be with a beautiful black woman. They just scared because women are being apprehensive to bisexual men. And I don't get it because in reverse, men love that shit. So, Emron, you want to take it for, for, for some of us? You, 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 can, you can help support our bisexual. <laughs> Yeah, so I had a homeboy. I had a homeboy. I had a homeboy. I had a homeboy tell me men can't be bisexual, but women can. I said, How does that make sense? So, if those men that hate on gay, but they would literally sit there and watch lesbians, I said, So, you telling me. I fucked you, and then I'm like, yeah, I'm about to go fuck my bitch. This this bitch, you cool with it? But if a nigga like, I fuck women and I fuck men. He just all that he's gay. He not bisexual. Like, that doesn't make sense to me. Thank you. That don't make sense. Like, how how can a man not be bisexual but a woman can? Yeah, I, I don't think I don't think it's a um. I don't think it's a question of they can't because they obviously can. Right. Um, but I think that women are more out with it. Mm -hmm. And True. Um, this is what I, this is what I am. This is what and and then they're not going to trick a man. Right. Whereas men trick women all the time. I seen this video on, and I don't think that's fair because you don't give people the option. Yeah. To decide. You later on me. five down the line, you're like, oh shit. Okay, so now, now yeah. is um I'm, uh, I'm too deep in or oh. yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but I seen this video of this dude. He said he's like I'm bisexual okay, or whatever. So I you know whoever I love, I love, but I'm only gonna marry a woman. Yeah, I'm sorry. Say that again. He he was bisexual. Mm -hmm. He like men, he like women, but he will only marry a woman. And then he once we get him. and then once we get married, are you gonna be like in our marriage kinda all oh, cause because why are you putting it like I have to marry a woman? How do you know like Yeah, I, I don't know. I didn't get here's it. Either, the thing. But... He's worried about what other people think of him. But mm -hmm. if you're already out but here he saying video, proudly but he's talking about him being Yeah, sexual, but if you're already so out here proudly that. saying it. Yeah, just, I don't think just it's marry who you gonna or unless he want kids, but I'm like, yeah, but he said he's only marrying a woman, but he he is bisexual. I was like, okay. yeah, they're, go they're gonna have a poly marriage. Hey, he just he said I gotta have a boyfriend number two. <laughs> Ooh, <he's cool. laughs> I, 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 and I mean, this is the relationship starts three and above, so you know. <laughs> Kiki said, "I, I, I." This I, conversation I, has me speechless because I don't want to say the wrong thing, so I'm just gonna kind of like. Kiki said, "You will not cancel me." <laughs> yeah, we're heading to the to, to the Guinness World Records. They're gonna come for you, Kiki. <laughs> <laughs> I think they are. <laughs> they're like she. Cancel culture, don't play. <laughs> they do. Yeah, but like, like she. I, I noticed a couple times, like when I get passionate, like the whole. Everybody get quiet, like you you tread down there if you want to, and then I'll be like, Oh shoot, okay. So um go ahead, change the subject. <laughs> Listen, I've been there, I've been there, I was canceled in, in the beginning stages of my podcasting career. Wait, um, why did he cancel you? I wasn't canceled. Is that why you're now savagely humble? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she humble you now. You humbled yourself. <laughs> <laughs> now nah, I wasn't canceled literally, but they kept saying you're gonna get canceled. So the 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 conversation was a girl, um, one of the girls' uh, friend, her husband or something, basically was in her cousin's inbox telling him he wanted to suck his dick, right? Mm -hmm. And so it was this whole thing. They went back and forth. She wound up getting with another nigga, same thing, and it was the whole I'm not gay no more. So I was like. No, fuck out. Like, I start going crazy. Fuck out of here. You're gay. You're gay. You're not about to tell me you gay today and you're not gay tomorrow, bitch. You gay now. You gay tomorrow. It, there's no, to me, there's no, I'm not gay no more. You're she so went gay. in attack mode. Yeah. 
<laughs> I, I, I would agree with that. On that part, and it was like, you can't say that. Don't put that clip out, bitch. I had that clip strongly out there. It's somewhere on my fucking um, Instagram, but sure. No, fuck out of here. You're you're still gay. But that's what I'm saying, Annie. It's a lot of men who are bisexual, but that's what I'm saying, that whole I'm not gay anymore. So when I was in college, me and my roommate used to fool around every day, but I'm past that. Yeah. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah, this is freaky, happens. freaky on. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel... I got to pee. I don't know. I just, <laughs> I, I just want to look at Kiki's face. Y'all you the love Kiki. <laughs> She can't even continue working anymore. She was literally filing out files and shit, and now she's just like, "It's, I, it's." I just want to say it, but I'm just not. It's just, I just can't. I just can't. I would just rather you don't be cancel. Here. You know, Kiki, black culture don't be canceling shit for for more than twenty four hours. They just do it for twenty four hours, and then they. they <laughs> We don't <laughs> stick to our cancer shit. <laughs> we don't. That's crazy. Um, dang, that's a hard question, but I already know it's just a hard no for me. But let me Thank ask you, you guys: with this, there's no relationship being more than two people. You know, everybody's in this polyamorous, and are you all for adding a partner in your relationship, or are you still, you know, old school? I just want minds, minds. I mean, I'm, can I say? Can I say this? I have I have met this lady, right? Because you know me, I'm like, no, I'm too selfish, da da da. But I met this lady, and she's, I mean, when I tell you she's gorgeous, I'm like, and she has a job, and she's got this beautiful home, like, but she's single. So I asked her, I said, "How are you single all these years, and are you comfortable like just dying this way?" You know what I'm saying? Because you know. It's a real it's a possibility. Question, you know? mm -hmm. Yeah. So she says, oh, no, baby. <laughs> She's like, you're of age now. I can talk to you. I said, okay. She said, uh, she said, I am okay. She says, see, let me tell you something about men. And this is how she schooled me. She said, you're going to find out. You're going to get in a relationship. You're going to get cheated on. She's like, that's just what's going to happen. This is what she's telling me. And she said, you have to figure out somewhere down the line in your dating, if you want to be the one that's getting cheating on, or do you want to be the one that he's cheating with? Mm. She said, so figure it out. Right she said, because either way it goes, it's going to happen. And she said, you can't. She said, this is the nature of men, right? So now fast forward from like, what? Because I'm 41 now, so... I finally get what she was saying because at first I'm like, okay, first of all, I'm not about to be a side bitch and I'm not about to be this. this. But then now you got to look at it as if, what do you want to be? Because men are really out here cheating. And it's not just men, it's women too. You know what I'm saying? But men are like really out here cheating. And then you can look at their wives and you'd be like, oh my God, he has everything. They have a perfect marriage. And he's not happy with, the trophy wife, the this, the that, you know what I'm saying? He still has to go out and get his little dish on the side. Or he might just have that one woman or two women that he deal with on the side and he's not alleviating from those three women or those two women. You know what I mean? So you're That's saying you okay with polyamory? Dick. You said, well, will I? Yeah, so you're saying you're okay with it. I'm not saying I'm okay with it, but I'm not saying I... Oppose it. Uh, oppose it, because... Yeah. I don't I don't if, know if, if I, it happens, it happens. If, if it happens, it happens, but I don't want to be a part of a family if if you understand that. But that's kind of how poly is, I feel. Yeah. Like it's kind of you know, either they both love on you or you like you all kind of love on each other. Like, you know, one day you all on a date, three of you. The next day, you can be on a date with just two of bonding, two of yeah. you bonding. Like, it, it, it's I ain't like, with that poly. I thing. have to, I have to figure out, I have to figure me out first before I can answer that, <laughs> because I'm not. There's not a bone in me that's saying no. You know what I mean? But there is a bone in me because I don't, I don't, I don't want to be like with the girl. I know that. Like, I don't want to be with a female. So if I have, I want the man. You know yeah. what I mean? 
So, and if those females who get part of me, okay with that, just going down on you and then, and you not on them, you know? Now, I, I might consider that. <laughs> She said, you can eat me up, baby, but I'm not returning the favor. <laughs> I hear that hot shit. I never. I would one. never Fuck know. Mm -mm. So, like, that's how I was when I was younger. I was so opposed to threesomes, like, ain't no bitch touching me. Nah, 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 nah. As I got older, I'm like, you know, I'm open to it now, but just don't expect me to do anything to her. She could me all day, but don't expect me to do it back. That that that's my whole thing. My I've whole actually with the threesome shit. I've actually seen threesomes where the girls don't even interact. You're right. It's just I like do. one on his face and one on his penis, and yeah, it, yeah. they never touch. It's all on levels of your agreement, because everything goes these days. People are just oh, as long as the communication is clear. Like, okay, bitch, you can hit me, but I'm not doing that. Cool. Right. Yeah. As long as everything, everybody know what the situation is it's yeah. at hand coming into it. And don't but you bring. The, with the Your mouth up here right? to French kiss me because I'm not French kissing right. no girl. With the, with the yeah, especially right? after you've been down there. But no friends, like you can eat me out, but I'm not I, again, I'm not eating you. And I don't it. mind experimenting, but when I'm dating, I can't be in a poly. I'm sorry. Like I want okay. you to so if you want to cheat, that's fine. Go cheat, oh, I'll go shit. cheat as well. But I'm not literally being in a relationship where I know no, I want all the I, I, I unless I'm the one entering a a relationship. Let me be your pillow princess. So it feel like mm -hmm. it, it, am I asking for my thing is love on me nowadays, and y'all know how nowadays is. Am I asking too much, or am I living in a dreamland if I want my own man? No, you're that not is, asking too much. No, that's nah. your right. That's your right. Period. You shouldn't be. You shouldn't be asking a lot. But I'm gonna be honest with you. So I okay. <laughs> I'm not proud of this. The voice of reasoning. Let's see. Hold on. She's not proud of that. But why is your arm looking like you had on a one of those thermal shirts? I did. Oh, okay. But I um... like I said, did you get burned or did you, is that a <laughs> okay? Go ahead, baby. Go ahead, Amari. I'm sorry. I was in a situation with somebody that was married, but I was not aware they were married. You didn't but have the situation the yeah. went on for way too long. I'm gonna be honest with you, I was kind of stupid because I should have picked up on some signs. Like, you can't ever call me after 11 and on certain days. Why it, not? It happens, baby. It happens. <laughs> no, it happens. When, you, when you're in it, you don't see the red signs until you're out of it and you're like, fuck, that was a sign. Fuck. Well, <laughs> but when you're getting that dick, you ain't thinking about all that. <laughs> that's, 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 that's too bad. Sometimes that's too my, dick, my dick, you know, I'm sorry, but you know, I, I, so see, I, I see how people end up being in those situations because Sometimes a my dick is just it's good, it's fucking great. I tell you that right now. Hey, yeah. hey, good dick. I make you do dumb shit. True. Yeah. Wow. Very true. So with we and we had this conversation earlier. This dick matized got, is real. Dick matized is yes, real. Yes, that this is when I got crazy on Smash. Definitely. Earlier. We was talking about the side chicks. This, wait, this, blah, wait, blah, blah. wait. Because Amaron was talking and we talked over yeah. her like so she much. didn't finish her story because she said she and I am so into I want to know, like, because girl, her story so far got me intrigued because I've been tricked too. Let's yes, go. So I was really hurt by it once I found out what had happened, but I'm not gonna lie, I kept going for just a little bit of a second. I kept going because I was happy he was helping me out financially. Yep. He was a good man, there he was go. a good man, but he was good now with some money. <laughs> He was a good man to me. Right, he was a good man to me. But I finally that realized was he wasn't. Man. Right, he wasn't my man. He wasn't mine. Right, right. Certain things I couldn't do. Um, and I think it was like my birthday or something. And he was like, "Well, look, your birthday on like a Wednesday. You know, I can't see you on Wednesday. We could do something on like Friday." And it was That's like, "That's triggers." What do you That's mean? When you start feeling you're cheating yourself, right? You start questioning mm. yourself. Right. And I felt like I deserved more than that. And right. then he was he even tried to play with me for a moment. He did this for a good two weeks. Well, you know, I'm I'm thinking about separating. No, you're not. Oh, no. They don't always say that. that. Don't they even pull that, that card with me. Don't do that. Hey, but, but to go back. <clears throat> go ahead. I'm, I'll start just finish. Y'all pausing too long. We can't pause too hard. <laughs> Sorry. I'm done. I'm done with that. But I mean, I know better now. But I realized I was stupid for even thinking that he would leave. And a lot of yeah. women be caught up into that. 
They do. For 10, 15, 20 years being the side chick. Yeah, I ain't never so, see that, that video. It's not easy to, to fall in that. So, ladies, I need for y'all all to know if you're watching this, no. He ain't going nowhere. He got Ooh. on one knee and asked that girl to marry him. If he, he was one knee, he would have already hey. left. That's yeah, it. Never you know what? Video. Because women will go after they find out. Women will go like, but you know what? If you're tricked into it, like I'm my one friend, she went and um she called the dude's wife and let her know that um they what's been going on because she was Ooh. tricked into it. She didn't, she wasn't given the option, you know what I mean. And then, but there's some women who already know, and this is the part that pisses me off. If you all, if you already know that he's in a situation, right, and he tells you from the get go, and it, you your dumb ass decides to mess with him, it's all on you if you if you get into it, if you get your heart into it. You yeah. should not break up a family or a home just because you got into your heart. You need to, you know what I'm saying? Like I think that is so wrong. That is. But okay, if you ahead, tricked, baby. once you know, either get out. And if you want to do revenge, that's fine because you got tricked. But if you knew from the beginning, bitch, that's on you. That's yes, on you, you for sure. That okay, was, Savage, go ahead, baby. I'm sorry. I talked no, all fine. over you. I was going to go back to that poly shit real quick, right? Niggas, mm -hmm. love, they love this poly, poly, poly. So I was, you know, talking to a dude, and I'm like, so what you think about a poly relationship? And he like, yeah, I'm cool. I said, no, 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 no. Come back. Fin let me finish. I want two boyfriends. Mm. Y'all so quick to say, I want two women. I want two boyfriends. Would you be down with it? And he looked at me. Slaying right here in this bed right now next to me. He looked at me. He was like, nah. Uh, nah. He was like, well, I, I mean. I understand it's different. He was like, well, I mean, shit, but I got to be able to have a girlfriend on the side. No. I want two boyfriends. There's no girlfriend on the side. I'm the girlfriend. But I want two niggas. He's like, we got to live in separate houses. No, we're going to lay in this bed together. What Just like I about? would be doing with those females. Right. The same mm -hmm. way that dudes have their two women with them, I want to have two boyfriends. So what's what's the problem? Oh, that and, would be so. Can you imagine that? Like, like two fine dudes, right? And like, like you can get I as mean, freaky as you, know, you want to, and it's okay. I like, mean, he was actually teeter tottering, like I might fuck with it type shit. But I, I just wanted to see what he was going to say. But you know what? But I mean, I really, I would do that though. Can you if, imagine? If I get you have to have a high sex boys. drive. I do. So it would I be do. fucking great. I do too, me. but I'm just figuring like that's a lot of dick. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you ain't got to fuck both of them on the same day. Yeah. Oh, you don't know that. I mean, I, I, <laughs> listen, I said you don't. I didn't say you. it wouldn't happen. Because you say that's a lot of dick. So she was saying, yeah, like, you ain't got to do it you don't all day do with them on the same yeah. day. Especially, especially if you have agreement that you're the only woman. Like, you have to take up all of that. So you better get one that has not that much stamina. Nigga, I could go. I want so both with stamina. I I'm want one it. that can go and one that could just chill out for a minute. I'm with it. Shit, what we doing? So, but yeah, I mean, I would be down for that shit too. But to jump up on your story, savagely, like um, I was at a podcast conference, uh, meetup in Atlanta, and we we're just hanging, and then the same question came up about Polly in our black community corner, and then the guy was like, "No, I want to be able to have another girlfriend, but my woman cannot." date but we're in like an open relationship but i'm the only one allowed to to date i'm like that's, that's just not selfish. an open relationship i, I was like that's just controlling and selfish like who even wants mm -hmm. if you want an open relationship you do your shit i'm gonna do my shit right that's a pickable that's relationship shit, like, i'm like your nigga will find any ways to make to shit be one-sided yeah you know, like what the fuck for sure that's some selfish shit mm, that's if you think for you to, to go out and date other people i should be able to do the same shit hey i'm gonna make a post about that poly shit on facebook watch i bet you my shit go crazy i bet you the ignorant niggas that's on my facebook is gonna have a lot to say, but watch. It's You're trying to get cancelled again, it's huh? Gonna stir up some shit for sure, but um, you trying to get cancelled again? The year just started. The year hey, just started. It. <laughs> it is what it is. If it was my, if it was my time to go, it was my time. You know. So, but yeah, shit. Give me two boyfriends. 
<laughs> Either way, I'm gonna have two boyfriends. I'm gonna just be cheating. So figure it out. <laughs> That's so, if, I, if I do a long distance, I'm cheating. Yeah. Oh yeah. Nah. Oh, friend, I'm with you, Paula. Uh, long distance, nigga. You better have a girl, another bitch with you. Like, yeah. like I'm, I'm so fine. sorry for the noise, y'all. Oh, you're fine. Fuck that. Uh, I love it. Mm-mm. Oh, she she getting cozy, cozy. <laughs> I'm at work. I I'm see. Just thinking, I'm just thinking about this though. A lot of times with polyamory men will say they're into it but i don't think they fully understand you're taking care of two households too uh-huh. they don't. that part it's a financial thing uh-huh. mm-hmm. they it's, already they keep it up it. taking care of one house and now they're trying to hide uh-huh. if you a broke nigga please don't tell me you poly <laughs> bye yeah. there's no way if you ain't at least got if you ain't making you gotta make six digits or better, probably a little bit more than that. Especially if the, especially if a household have kids. Yes, mm-hmm. but I always wondered in those situations where it was like a poly family came together, like this, like sister wives. Yeah, like how do you explain that to your kids? Like we just, yeah. we just gonna keep it moving. I just, I don't get that part. You got two mommies in one day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can say one one you breed with. I'll be the one that you don't have to have kids with. And she had sister wives, he was getting them all pregnant. Mm-hmm. No. So okay. let, let, let me I'll tell you, um, I met this couple and um they came on my podcast. They also have a podcast, right? They are a white couple in their fifties, and um they have a podcast called Accidental Swingers. Um so <laughs> accident. Um, so they shared their journey. Their podcast is literally, and I've masturbated listening to their podcast. That's how hot it is. They they oh, share I need to about find this. They share about their their adventures, and sometimes you know, while they're doing their adventures separate, they'll call each other. So they put those voicemail, those voice note clips. They're like, if somebody, the husband or the wife is waiting at home, and one of them is going back home, they call each other to tell the entire how it went, so that the the person at home is getting hot and ready. So when she's home, back home, they do it again. But they became accidental swingers. Their neighbor invited them out for dinner so they didn't know they were getting proposition that night they just thought dinner with the neighbors so that neighbors brought it up and they're like ah <clears throat> like we live next door to them and we didn't know that's what they do All so right. on their way home they started kind of talking about it and thinking about it and um the guy had already started looking into it a few years was listening podcast so they started talking about it and they started dating they opened their relationship up and the guy literally says that he enjoys watching his wife get a uh, deep throat and being fucked by two guys and he's there watching that shit turns in home they be having uh exchanging partners and fucking in the same room or separate hearing that like it literally they do it and then i'm um, doing COVID because it was on a lockdown they found a couple who they kind of isolated together and now they are each other's boyfriends and girlfriends and oh, they're wow. together and they're always together and i got to meet them uh when i went to the conference in may because i had met them actually and interviewed them for my podcast and literally the boyfriend and the girlfriend is the one who saw me they're like Paula, come have a drink and i was sitting i was like damn okay so <laughs> <laughs> i think like Mm. I think that like I think like maybe it works for people who are very high sex drive. And also I feel like like they've been married, they have like their kids are grown. They they had to to have a conversation with their kids once they were doing COVID pandemic because they would be like, Why is this family here with us and constantly locked in the bedroom? What are they doing? So they had that conversation there. But you know, they've been married for 30, 40 years, kids are grown. I feel like at that time, if you want to open it, it's kind of at this point, it's like, My nigga, you ain't going anywhere, but we want to <laughs> continue experimenting. I had an older couple. 
And I'm so slow. Listen, I'm slow. Like, because first of all, I'm not used to a couple coming on to me. Okay. So I'm kind of slow. So we were in um, Jamaica and you could tell that they were a wealthy, very wealthy. You know what I mean? So we were all just hanging out. And like I, I, they just gravitated to me. So we were all just having fun. And like, you had your bikini and shit. Yeah, you know, you know, I was, I was having a good time. Yeah, definitely. They gravitated to but it. this is when I knew, like, when they got so drunk, and you know, I don't like nobody touching my face, but I allowed her to because she was drunk. She was all on my face. She's like, "Oh, I just love your face." And I said, oh, yeah. "I said, no, oh, okay." So I grabbed her hands, and then she like tried to go down. I said, "I said, okay, listen, lady, you about like a." Almost seventy years old. Oh, this ain't gonna and then her boy, her boyfriend slowly came up behind me. Like you would thought they was fine as hell and young. The way they tried to get me in their bed. Okay, I said, uh, uh-uh. come blame them for shooting their shot. At least they didn't. No, 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 no. If you no, are, we, we if you are to, or not. No, we continue to kick it. They was just like they want to travel with me and stuff like that. Like I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, my pockets ain't long like y'all. So we, this is happening like twice a year for me, and y'all's is probably like every day. <laughs> I mean, you know, they uh, they're gonna they're gonna handle your 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 services, your your requirements for you to service them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's what I couldn't do. I couldn't, I couldn't do it. Like you get to get free trips as long as they were like grandma and grandpa. They were so cute. That's okay. (laughs) It's like I don't need to travel that badly. (laughs) Miss Myrtle and them might have been fun. What if no, no, (laughs) (laughs) not Miss Myrtle might have been fun. Oh my god. I'm going to use the fucking food. Oh, my so, God. So, okay, so the vote is no to bisexual men, no to poly. <laughs> so no poly unless it's a two-boyfriend situation. Okay. That part. This is a tough <laughs> one over here. <laughs> yeah, because poly is like one household, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't think... I'm, 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 I'm still going to say there's no yay or nay for right now because I don't know. Like, I got to do a lot of soul-searching. But yes, TLC is doing the um searching sister brother brothers, I guess. I guess brother oh, yeah. husband. Searching brotherhood or something yeah. like some brothers. It's got like, scary. Like, I'm about to say ain't no sisters and brothers doing shit over here. <laughs> but it's a lady finding her two dudes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, oh, two dudes. Oh yeah, that's I mean, hey. Yep. I mean, that's if y'all like it, I love it. But my whole thing is we would have to have a schedule. That's the only way that would work. We would have to have a schedule. And I like, I don't know. If I really like you, I'm annoyingly clingy. I don't know how I could do that. Hey, I'm, <laughs> anno- that. I'm, a, I'm annoyingly horny. So me too. I mean, like, but I guess what, if just, this, what if I'm too much for them? It's <laughs> very much a possibility. Yeah. So. I've been too, I've been too much for one. Anything is possible for sure. Mm. I just mm-hmm. thought about it again. God damn. I, I have a high again. sex drive. Like, I really do. I got to try again. I just thought about it again. I got to try again. You got what? I said, I just thought about it again. I got to try again. Try again. Oh, I'm about to say, <laughs> how you get dry if you got turned on? You, <laughs> you know, Aaliyah said it's first you don't succeed. You got to try. You from try again. Ooh, so you, here is, I'm going to ask you. Like, you smoke like eight blunts just now. Oh, you, you know, I'm dead. <laughs> I'm I'm almost on 24 hours of being up. Girl, don't worry because I'm about to stay up all day today, so I can go to sleep tonight. So yeah, so I'm I'm hitting 24 hours in a minute. So I'm gonna ask you, ladies, this: since a lot of our beautiful black men are locked behind the wall, and I've really been watching Love <laughs> Decker locked up lately, they taking dick. So what? Well, we already talked about bisexual men. Would y'all do when those situations like? Get you a prison pen pal and wait for him to come out. No, no. I gotta, I gotta write somebody. If he locked up with somebody I know and they keep it one thousand, I'm like, hey, is he getting bent over? Nah. So you need a spy? Yes. I'm not doing it because I'm, I'm not, hard, I'm not messing time. with somebody. That... I don't have the patience of it. I, I don't have the no. The one it's thing is, like, time. if you want to be a pen pal with them, like that would be dope because you'll mm-hmm. never be lonely because you know, like. They'll always be on you. Feelings the thing is, when they about. get out, when they get out, and then oh, yeah. 
especially the ones that depend on you, because the one love and lockup, she spent 10 G's on him when he got out on outfits, food, and he he his hand is open to her for everything. He's not even out trying to go get him a job or saying, hey, baby girl, I got you. No, they, mm -hmm. they finesse the hell out of you because that's what men do. Mm -hmm. They finesse the hell out of you and they got they got all day to do it. Yeah, I, right. I, I, I want to fuck a guy who came out of prison who has been there for like 10 plus years because some some few years I just want to see that. that you talking about you don't want to get hurt. He about to dismantle your he, he gonna, yeah. Your hips is going to be no more, girl. You know, I, I, I just want that then go on home. Like, but I don't want to pamper. I don't want, I just want to feel that. You want to you wanna get that pent up energy. Give it to me. He about to <laughs> mount your <laughs> ass. <laughs> That so, part. I'm not, I'm I'm not sucking your dick because I don't know what your <clears throat> dick has been up to. Right. But I'm not sucking your dick. But you can definitely. <laughs> so I, I, used, have a I used to say that, but you know, I used to, I, I used to not be a dick sucker at all. And like in my older age, I am like a, I like it. I, I kind of. Why, why weren't Why weren't you? Is my question. I felt like was um disrespectful for some reason so but here's my question was receiving disrespectful to you no it was amazing <laughs> but hey but, I got, but hold on. I got i got karma back because my one friend he just doesn't every do time it. you tell every DJ time Collins, I this, I he Collins. doesn't do it and i've done it to him and i'm like sitting here like why aren't you doing it then it's like now i'm looking like oh yeah you're kiki all that selfish stuff yeah, this is how others felt. You know, what was I mean? he Caribbean? Yeah, yeah, he was Jamaican. Yeah, that's out. That's I, a red flag. That, but that, <laughs> that's not. We we've had this discussion. I ain't trying to hear that shit because I had a Jamaican that only wanted to eat pussy. Yeah, that's a, what I'm saying. Uh, it's some out there that will. Um, I had two Guyanese men that loved it. They eat pussy. Don't that is it's a lie. But my whole th okay. I don't want. I don't want you to do it and you not put any effort into it. Yeah. So if that's not your thing, that's not something we're doing. But that's not something you're receiving neither. I guess we're right. not doing that's, it. That's my thing. Like, I got to, um, I should have been like, no, you're not going to receive it. But it's like, to me, it was just like, okay. Like, I got over it. But then I didn't get over it because that's why we're not <laughs> messing around. So look, though. If, if because he had amazing dick game. I mean, See, that's the thing. Right we'll there. come and then get right back up and then beat it up. That's the thing, Kiki. If your if your dick is like phenomenal, I'm not even upset that you don't eat pussy. But I'm not again. I'm not sucking your dick. Though. But you get tired. Like even if it's the bomb, you get tired after a while. Like okay, yeah, you gotta do true. something. This high school shit right here. That's true. But I I probably if I know the dick is about to be great, my mind is not so. Yeah, I have you. Stuck on eating pussy. You. Having a good dick game than a than a good mouth game. No offense. Right. I do like, well. I mean, I need both of them to be. I, great, I mean, yeah, I need. I, I want both because it's a mixture of you know getting me there. But if I had to pick, I'd rather that than that. Yeah, I feel you. I don't. I'm big on foreplay. Me. So my whole. But I'm not really a fan of being digitally stimulated. I'm but you see, my, my pro play is also on my boobs, you know, and uh, as long as you're a fucking good kisser, like, that's where it all starts. But if you can't kiss, I'm sorry, we're not going anywhere. Like, True. in my head, True. it's already like, huh? Ooh, when you find a good kisser, you know that's actually going to be so passionate. And when I get wet, like, as soon as you start making out with me and you're touching them, like, I'm like, <laughs> what a fun. Let's go, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I'm going to sleep with a wet dream today. Oh my god! Wait, Amy, you're not a kisser. No, I don't like kissing. I don't kiss anymore. everybody because, like, I don't like. I had a bad people. experience. <laughs> what happened? His like, you know how you flirt all day. Mm -hmm. I mean, all day, and y'all around each other, and just having a ball. And then out the blue, in the middle of sex, he breathes at you, and his breath smells so bad. Like how many? I dropped the phone again. Oh how many? She fell asleep. No, she dropped I the phone. 
<laughs> no, but look at her eyes. Her eyes you... are really trying to stay awake. Yeah. Look at that. No, no. Every time you say something, I drop the phone. That I'm just like, you know what? Like... <laughs> <laughs> but am I right? Yeah, I can't. You know, that... That, that would traumatize me too. That's one thing. That's one reason why I don't like kissing. And but I just I'm not a kisser. The only time I am like I gotta be like super duper in love with you type shit. Well, no, or I, I, we I, I, are I, having some crazy amazing sex and it's still not with everyone because I didn't have some amazing sex and I'm like bitch what the fuck you doing like don't do that Can I because for, for me I feel like if you're when you fuck me missionary and you start kissing me we go together so yeah that that's, that's that now that part can be scary I I won't kiss you if if it's good D Listen, and like if you hit you the bottom, on top of me, and, I and we're not together. Face, Kiki, if you on top of me, I can see your face, and you kiss me. We go together because now this is sensual as fuck. That's that. Hey, that's that. I do dick. That's that. I, bitch, I, I love sensual sex. Like I'm all for it. Like that shit. Like that. You know me, I'm baby. Yours, Give it to me. Look my, into my eyes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we go together after that, Paula. Like, I don't. I stop all crazy. that connection stuff to be. I don't know if it's because I don't want to be hurt, but but that's the thing. I don't. I don't I, like as much as I love sex and I have high sex drive. I can't fuck you if we're not. I, I don't feel a connection. Like literally, we were just talking about this online. Like, I'm, like, I'm, I'm, such a, I'm such a connection mm-hmm. person. I don't know if it's the cancer in me. Like I'm so much in the emotions and feelings, okay, and that's why I get screwed mm-hmm. up so much because I look for that connection and then. Once I have it, the sex even becomes, and then now I'm like, oh my God, I feel like I love him. What's your sign, Paula? Cancer. That's why. Mm -hmm. That's exactly why. You are are sensual. Very. Let me tell you something. Give me all that. Like, feel me. Like, baby. Let me tell y'all something. My best. That's why even I don't don't enjoy masturbation that much because. I want to feel like, yeah, I can masturbate all day and I'll still like, but I want to like feel, I want to yeah. like, ex- yes, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm glad. She said, body on me. Baby, I lay it on me. It. Lay it on me. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I'm going to have to make a call after this shit. Right. Oh shit. <laughs> nah, uh, my best sex have come from a cancer. Oh, mine is a Capricorn. Very, very sensual, very, very soon as I see him, I'm on him. Like, <laughs> as soon as I see him, I can see him walking and my whole... Look at Kiki blushing. Kiki, what are you thinking as... about? Kiki blushing Listen, over there. It used to be so bad. As soon as I'm I see him... I'm thinking of my, my favorite sex partner. As soon as I see him, something would come over my body and all I wanted to do was fuck him in the middle of wherever we was at. Like, it was crazy. It's still crazy. That nigga could text my phone right now and I'm like, oh my god. Like, bro, wow. Why? How did you do that to me? I've never, nobody, never in my life done this to me. Yeah. And that's why it's like, it's like they fu- show you different. The Listen, one who showed you things. This is why he's my forever person. I, I told that nigga straight up, I don't care who you with. I don't care who I'm with. Nigga, if, if we in the same you city, you got a soul, like that, man. You yeah, got it's, a soul. What do you call it? It's like a sex mate. Yes. You my forever partner. Like, I don't care what we got going on. Bitch, you get married. Just know when I touch down, it's happening. I have one of those. It's my asshole. I have one of those. Like, and it's an Aquarius. So mm. I don't think I've ever had Aquarius uh, it's in the bed. I've had that I know of because I probably had him. I've had one and he, he ate some good pussy. His <laughs> dick wasn't his dick wasn't big, but he fucked the shit out of me though. I tell you that. <laughs> Mm-hmm. It, didn't, it didn't work out. Yeah, but I didn't. It, I it didn't work out with us either. But like we broke up in in in, in eight months, but it was like an intense connection and shit. And it's three going to four years right now, and we still like that's my buddy. We are now, you know, talking about having a child and shit, but we're not together. But we. Hey. Like See, that's a thing, right we, but we, 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 but we, 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 you know, that's that's, that's a connection. Right. That's definitely a connection right there. But yeah, nigga, listen. I tell one, people, fuck this connection shit. That should be fucking the hell out of you. One <laughs> call, that's all. Fuck that. Mm-mm. I'm getting it. 
nigga. I like, just got it. Look, I just got it in December while I'm talking. <laughs> <laughs> but I would. The Capricorn was my best. Yeah. I ain't never so, had a Capricorn. But I wouldn't want to be with them. I'm good. You know what? I'm going to take this back. I can't even tell y'all that I never had a sign because there's some niggas that I have no clue what they do. You, you don't know yet. True. Yeah, so I don't even know if I had one or not. I don't know. But yeah, mm mm. I no. At this Damn. point, sometimes it's it's best you don't even know if those other I, uh, those other niggas signs listen, up. It but was sometimes so, that's how you start making excuses for my fuckers. Right. It was so many that I could care less what your name was probably too. So, Bruh. It, it was what it was. Fuck that. You know, I hate the whole. It's only those who matter that you took the time to even wonder what their sign is. You like, know, yeah. I hate the whole conversation about the body count situation. Oh, I, I don't do that because we grown. That's I'm, weird. Nigga, what the fuck my body count? Nigga, three. First, if you're so concerned about my body count, you don't even need to be part of it. True. My body count is three. Right. Like, mm. Oh, who, who, what age are we to be asking about body count? I'm a grown ass motherfucker. Right. Why do, we do, do what, what I want to do? Right. It don't do match how many people I fucked. What I did before you is none of your business. Exactly. And what I'm going to do after you is none, none of, of your business. So either you're with it or not. First of all, as soon as you start asking me that, it's already a turn off for me. Like, yeah, it's an immediate uh, turn off. Like, bro, you're not even about to do nothing with me. But I, I when I have these conversations or I hear people or women be like, yeah, I've only had five or ten, I'd be like, damn, I'm really a hoe because this is absurd. Bruh. Like, you had when I'm what? single, I'm really single. And people and, and, and this is the thing. People say you're a hoe or something, but no, the whole point when you're single is to date around, right? Right. And, but but people misunderstand that they expect, okay. Here we're talking, look at Rory have him. She dates. I just had to up and move to another girl. relationship and people are still calling her a hoe, but she's literally in those relationships. And then when you're single and literally fucking to her, you're still a hoe. So, but then when men are doing it, oh, they're getting to know that, oh, it wasn't the right, oh, I, I'm being yeah. honest. I mm -hmm. don't want to cheat. I'm, so where's the line? Like if I'm dating, and and sleeping with people it's a mistake and when i'm in a relationship and i break up and move on to another one it's also a yeah mm -hmm. listen so I've had, like, fuck I've as had many so people many. and i tell people fuck as many people you want get the experience so that say when you that actually be in a, you can be co you content better say because it. you 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 did the fucking shit you yes. don't want to be in your 40s having a midlife crisis because in your 20s you were so concerned about body count and shit mm -hmm. Motherfucker, those people who are talking about body count are literally out there count collecting those bodies while you're right. here <laughs> Big facts. i've had so many one night stands it don't make no sense so it is what it is like I'm, I was a serial, fuck you and leave you alone type shit. I'm a fuck you. I was a serial data. I was a serial fucker. I was a serial. <laughs> like, I don't I love care. you, Paula. <laughs> Paula, listen, I will fuck you right now and never talk to you again in your life, ever. Like, no. Yep. It sounds weird, but that makes me want to like that person more because I want to know why. Why don't? Now, why do we do this? I, so I went through a super. I have savage what I, I have a questioning phase. problem. I went I went through a super <laughs> savage phase. Like when I separated from my husband, the first time I separated from my husband, I that was when I found myself sexually. You know what I'm saying? Like I found. Just like I, I'm I, back I, in the streets, my right. But no, I got in tune with myself, and I didn't know. Like I knew I was, you know, freaky or whatever. But I realized it once I got with. Uh, this other dude and I'm like yo okay I see how I am so I was super savage where there was no feelings there was no nothing I see you I want it I, whatever however we became about interacting with each other I got it and I went to the next one it was no we about to skills. be together yeah. and now and now I can't get rid of some people <laughs> I hate that Maybe I figured out. I hate that. that I unlocked my sexual. You know what? You know what makes me so crazy? And like, because I wish that I had exes that I can go back to, but I probably only got one out of everybody I used to mess with. Oh, I got a few. Because, go but look, check this out. Because it's like, it seems like every time, like, we were good. Like, 
You know what I'm saying? And I never, I'm maybe because I let too much fester. I never trip on none of my dudes. Like I'm always that cool female. You uh -huh. feel me? And then it seems like at some point you do something so disrespectful that I have to go all the way in on you. And I have a disrespectful mouth that once I say stuff to you, it's no coming back. Like, you know what I mean? It's like no coming back. So that's why, because I think they all what? think I would kill them. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> she said they all think I would kill them. I probably would. So this is the thing working on this too. So 2022, um, I was primarily single, but I have this weird thing that a lot of my exes don't leave me alone. Like it don't matter how much time it'll be, they'll you come back. Cuckoo. You got that, you got that golden pussy <laughs> But also the thing that bothers me with that is like, especially one of them, I just like when I I only fucked him once when I was 19. And like randomly now, like I'm 35 now, he tried to slide back through, like, hey. I see you. You ain't got nobody. <laughs> Yo, you grown now. Wanna give Listen. it another another spin around? <laughs> and I thought about it, but here's mm -hmm. the weird thing. So we were doing like a little long distance thing, and he wanted to play like a dirty Simon Says like continuously. How sexy. It was. It was cute at first, but he got weird with it. Like even though I work from home. Like we can't do this five times in a day. Like what's right, what's right. It can't be. It can't be the entire time. It's just yeah, yeah. Like I, and it I gets tiring. That's why I can't do long distance. Because if we are constantly just, it, it gets hey go hey. <laughs> <laughs> but Welcome I feel, I feel you, Emma. Like I have a a, a guy that I, um was my boyfriend. When I was like sixteen, and we you know had a conversation not too long ago and he was like yo yo shit then was crazy i can imagine what your shit is now and, I, and i'm like 16 it was like that for real like that was my little girl version of me he was like yo yo shit was wet at 16 i said well bitch you ain't about to fuck with me now i had to leave him alone because number one he was bullshitting about us seeing each other you mm -hmm. got two times the flake then i can't fuck with you no more mm. um but also it was just i don't know i just felt like he wanted a version of me that doesn't exist anymore yeah like, that, I'm not and that, teen anymore that could be the issue when you go back to an ex they still want the person that you was when you with them that's why i gotta leave them right there mm -hmm. yeah but it was cool though if you listening because I did send you a link um, <laughs> hey friends <laughs> I mean I, I might do it again but I don't know, I don't hey, know. we ain't never opposed to it but it might not go as far as you want it so that's it so yeah fuck that but I definitely told him he we could do it because he ate what he did at 16 so I know he, well he wasn't 16 <laughs> He was 18, I was 16. He ate pussy good back then, so I know he eats pussy really good now. So we could we could definitely do it. Even though I was active as a teenager, I don't count anything before I was 20 because I didn't know how to have sex. I'm gonna be honest with you, I just used to lay there for a very well, long time. Look, well, my, my first baby came out. Because to keep it real. So look, my first baby came out at 17, so I was doing something, clearly. You open your doing. legs. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I did not know what I was doing for a very long time, and man, but no, I agree. It was like, one I guy who showed me what it was about. I, I, I watched yeah. a lot of porn, so me too, girl. Uh, see, I didn't, I wasn't, I didn't start watching porn until I got older. I, no, I watched like a lot of porn, but I hated experimenting with toys. Like, literally, I got my first needle two years or three or when I turned 30. Like, there was this <laughs> thing in my head that I loved it so much, the fear that if I start enjoying, uh, I might replace it. Because I've had friends who be like, yo, I'm good. My needle is good. And I'm like, no, I don't want it to ever be that Let me tell you something. Let me tell you so something. I and I am turned out from this squirrel thingy, right? <laughs> there is no replacing a real man. I don't care who they are or what they, they just saying that because they can't get nobody at the time trying to keep up with the jokes. That's just yeah, that's what it bad. is. But let me tell you, there is no replacing 
oh, touch on touch feel and a real penis. Yeah, but at that time I didn't know, right? I didn't know that because I, I, I came, later I came to realize that because I seek connection, so I want that sensual, I want that touch. So that's when I was like, okay, you know what? Fuck this! I can actually enjoy a needle and still not. Because even when I was masturbating, <laughs> I was like, I still want more, like, because I, I don't have the touch. So I was right. masturbating just to get it. But at that time, the more I masturbate, the more honey I get. I'm just like, oh my god, it's so fucking. That's so fucking true. Like, what the fuck? Like, where's the dick? Dick. Like, yeah. I need the hands. I need the touch. I need the feel. I need the. They you know my nipples need some 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 attention. I need so it's like okay so. But yeah, for the longest I didn't do toys because of that fear in my yeah. head. Yeah, but I, believe, I always said in my twenties, I I was just fucking. But once I figured it all out, baby, it turned into a whole different. You experience. crafted your skills. <laughs> but also, I didn't know how to ask for what I wanted either. Like I didn't know what I wanted, mm. so I learned to be more vocal with what my needs were. And right. then once I mastered that, we was good to go. It was over. With, yeah, mm -hmm. and it's Very also still hard because some men, when you kind of try to tell them what you like, or they take it like, "Oh, you think I don't know what I'm doing?" Kind of mm -hmm. bullshit. Instead of like, "Bro, I want both of us to enjoy." You know, it's not like because yeah. every every person you're with likes something different. Oh, right. oh yeah, so true, so true. No. That, you're right, Paul. Especially about that. Like that might have worked with the rest of them, but I don't like that. Right. <laughs> exactly. Like I know that bitch told you yes, that's but to me, bro, nah. Mm -mm, mm -mm. But then but sometimes they take it the wrong way, like what you saying? What what you mean? And then it turns into oh she's like, damn, I was just trying to have some sexy time. Mm hmm But I would be okay with that. Like if you tell me like, hey, I don't like this, can we try this? I'm okay with that because I want to please my partner. Exactly. And I wish more people would go into it like that. Like, it's not just about you. Exactly. <laughs> and that's how you end up even having good um, sex or even experiments is because you're talking mm -hmm. and telling each other what you like and teaching each other the right way. That's why sometimes people end up going to cheat instead of just having that conversation with your partner. Like, you could have avoided all that by just like, babe, so how about, you know? And it's sexy, you know, telling your girl or you telling your man what you like. That shit is is a whole other form of, you know, connection. Me and my it connection. <laughs> yeah. For sure. It really is. CL, you about to clock in. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Thank I you for you. coming back. Did you sleep well? I'm jealous. She yeah. looks cozy. I three up at seven every day. I'm tired. Damn. But I was up in here till about midnight. Nah, I loved your session yesterday. I was laughing my ass out. <laughs> I was cussing everybody out. That's what happened. Bruh. She cussed everybody out all the time. <laughs> right? I've gotten better about cussing everybody out. But lately, Yo, yes. Yeah, in the partner. beginning, she used to be like, shut up. Shut up. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. We used to be like, God damn, hold the fuck up. Shit. That's good she just though. started back telling people to shut up. Actually, she did. She you did know. stop saying it. And then she's like, "Nah, nah bitch, shut fuck that. Shut, shut up." up. My um, <laughs> something that I like, what I hate with men is they can't identify the need, mm -hmm. or they always want you to ask for help. I'm like, if I got to beg you to be my man, I don't really need you to be my. Please man. go away. <laughs> right. You see that we have other bills. Why haven't you volunteered to pay one? Mm. Especially and if that's you live the in my thing. House. I don't need to literally come and say, babe, I need help. If I'm already talking about it, oh, you know my situation, I don't need to ask. Right. That's what I'm saying because I feel like in relationships, we need to identify needs and find solutions rather than other person communicates they need help with you or not. Because guess what? If you help somebody that has a need unsolicited, that thank you is more appreciated. That thank you is there without... You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you, thank you for doing that. But I, my thank you is going to be better if you actually identify the need because you care about me and take care of it. Because oh, you about to get you. your dick sucked real good if you do it without me telling you. God. Mm -hmm. That, but on top of that, I trust you more. Our bond is going to be better if I know yeah. that you're here to, to help me or take care of me. 
Definitely. I, I I feel you on that one. Like, if you, if it's you short. Like, let's look, look, for example, my check was short. And you just look around. <laughs> 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 they don't say nothing. Like, okay, babe, I know your check was short. Let me get your nails done. Or did you have lunch money? No. Or- Nah, uh, fuck that look around. Nah, these two niggas. Oh, that's crazy, yo. Yo, that's right oh, that yeah, <laughs> Did you did you call them? Did you ask? Oh man. Oh, that's that's oh that's crazy. Make me want to punch you right in your fucking face. Right. Yeah. What you mean? When you're dealing with someone else, it's like I can't even come to you emotionally. So yeah, that is crazy. And then you wonder why I go find somebody else mm-hmm. on the side. I, <laughs> That's why what you want to do. Somebody else totally would. Mm-hmm. But I, I hate that. that what you want to do, somebody else would. I just feel like if everybody genuinely tried to take care of each other, identify needs, and provide solutions unsolicitedly, relationships would be better. Mm. I, I yeah. think, but that common knowledge of what you're saying, I don't think a lot of men have that. Like, I really don't <laughs> think that even comes with it. I don't I don't understand why. I wish I had an answer to that. Girl, but, don't even ooh. hurt your brain on that one. <laughs> Shit. You'll be thinking for a long, 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 long time. But honestly, I also hate the narrative of people comparing your relationships to exactly how you grew up in certain situations. Cause I ain't your mammy. <laughs> it's not my fault. Your mama worked at McDonald's for 20 years and all y'all had Jordans. Your mama was selling pussy. How about that? but it's certain things it's like y'all you never put two and two together that don't even make sense it was three of y'all and she worked seven to three at mcdonald's no (laughs) make it 525 at that or she's on the side but either way she was doing something else she was calling nate she was in a bind that (laughs) was That wasn't reality. Yeah, that's that's but, true. She was definitely also, selling pussy though. But also in reality, it's one of those things. Every relationship is not the same. Everything is not duplicated or identical. You have to meet your partner's needs. And I don't know. I, apparently, we just supposed to figure it out on our own and take care of a man like a child. I guess yeah. I don't know. I think, but, I think, I think, I think, he needed, but he can't identify needs. Let, let's go back to that. I want to feel like I'm needed, but then you can't identify needs. Well, you do everything on your own, motherfucker, because I told you what my needs were, and you still couldn't identify them and provide for them. So mm-hmm. what am I supposed to do? Right. Mm-hmm. Just let it fester? Mm, yeah. Then and then it's better. Better. Except what you didn't ask me. You know what? Let it fester, and then when you blow up, you the crazy bitch. Yes, that's what that is. So, yeah, Mm-mm. I can't stand the whole. I want the relationship like my grandma and grandpa. Bitch, he used to beat her ass. Yes, what are you talking about? They you forget about that part. <laughs> and he cheated on her and had several children outside their marriage. Stop saying that. You don't mm-hmm. want that. Just because they've been together for fifty years, do not mean that shit has been great. Granny went through a lot of shit with grandpa. Mm-hmm. No, 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 no. Create your own narrative. Stop trying to be like somebody else. Fuck that. True. And we need to stop abusing mental health. Some people be using that in excuses in these relationships. I'm depressed. You know I got this. I you mean, the, and, and some is true, but some they just be dragging it's the shit extra. out of you. That's yeah. no excuse for acting how you act. Go get help. I was depressed, so I talked to her, and then next you know, she fell on my dick. What? <laughs> Oh, it doesn't okay. make sense. It's not adding up, sir. But also, my whole thing is me too. So what? <laughs> me too, sir. I'm depressed too. Right. What do we? The what entire world is depressed. <laughs> but we ain't falling on dicks. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm depressed, so I fell on his dick. You was depressed. She fell on your dick. So where? Where are we now? Now we are poly. We are all in this together. (laughs) together. (laughs) High school musical. We all in this. Oh my god! I'm not fucking with Paula. Oh shit. (laughs) 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 Paula gave me too much for me. Oh shit. 
She came in here lit than a motherfucker. You know, I also think it's with dealing with an adult when it comes to one's needs. I don't. I think that's a maturity thing too. Yeah, that makes sense too. That's why don't be jumping into a relationship if you're not mentally there yet or financially there. Oh, talk your mm. shit, baby. You know you like it. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good. You came in at a good time. I know. <laughs> Our face is so glowing for 7 a.m. Damn, girl. <laughs> she up, up. Listen, y'all lit over here. I think I can go take a nap now. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for staying. My 24 hours has been up. I need to go to bed. But unfortunately, I'm sure I'll be back up in about two hours when my kids get up since they don't have school. Wait, okay. So when does our 48 hours hit? 6 p.m. Uh, 6 p.m. tonight. We are now on one day, 13 hours, seven minutes. We going. So it's right. oh, well, we all the stipulations because y'all know white people always like to find the loophole with the fuck we did. So I that's what I'm hoping for. So once everything's done, I gotta email the footage. Um, they says it takes about six weeks for them to comb it to make sure it meets all the rules, and then from there we all will get our certificates and we will meet the record. So fingers What's crossed. The stipulation hopefully. all time, just for the record, because we already a day and a half in. <laughs> hopefully we should be good um i don't think there were any real pauses what i was really concerned about was connection issues because you know the internet be internet and sometimes oh no we was <laughs> laughing the whole time we always had a giggle in here it wasn't silent it wasn't mm -hmm. silent for it sure not words. we had a giggle a cough a, mm, a, ah. or something. <laughs> it, it was, was noise was in footage constantly so i don't see what the issues are but we will see but i think we're good I think the other guy had an audio uh, podcast, though. We have a visual. No, he had a video live stream. The one that was that one that got the right did. Right for I this. Thought it was audio. They have no, it's it was like four different ones for streaming. So I think we had an audio one. Both people, though, if it was a one guy who did it, it was one guy that did it. We were trying to figure out how the fuck he did it. I'm still trying I don't, to figure he out how he, he, did. Diaper. he had to. I want to know how the fuck he did it because there's no way how he pissed. Ate, did anything. That's what I'm saying. When I submitted it, they said with doing a handoff is fine as long as it's a constant footage. Like as long as it wasn't like recorded segments yeah. together, it was fine. Oh well, then we definitely did the handoffs and standings mm -hmm. and all that good shit. It was like oh, a yeah. four by four race. That's what I was thinking about. It was though. Pass the baton. <laughs> hey, you guys. I'm gonna join you when I get home. I'm about to clock out. <laughs> Be safe. Right. Drive safe. Yes. Well, right, Miss Vaughn, tell us about your podcast. Hi. Um. So I'm actually waiting. My um co uh, partner is actually should be joining on in a minute. Um. But I am Miss Vaughn, and I have a podcast called Father Should. Um. Where we talk. Uh, fatherhood from a single dad and a surrogate perspective. Um, uh -oh. Coming up on our fourth season, um, which will be premiering in or dropping in February. So, okay. yeah, we've um, <clears throat> been doing this for a little bit. So, thank you for having us, and we are so glad to um, be able to help do this record book thing. Thank you for joining. Uh oh, we got somebody. This might That's be them. Right. Yeah, I was like, it might be him. <laughs> it is. Morning. Good morning. He look, like he's still trying to look, he like I'm like, wake up, wipe the cold out my head. <sighs> Pretty much. Pretty much. I know Miss Vaughn came in ready and he came in. <laughs> oh, y'all had y'all shirts together. I love it. Know, right? yeah. Gotta represent brand. Brand. <laughs> Good morning. Right, right. Good morning. How's everyone? How's everyone doing? Good. I'm yeah. going to bed. <laughs> Thank you. <Andy. laughs> <I see. laughs> I'll be back <laughs> later, guys. And Paula, you can still hang out if you want. All right. I'll stay for a minute. Let me hear what. 
because I have a, I was raised by my father, so I'm all about fathers getting credit. So you know, I appreciate that. Appreciate absolutely, that. absolutely. I don't have a daddy. <laughs> you, you know what? You do have a daddy. It's just probably not in the sense of. I mean, I know biologically I have a father, but I don't really have a relationship like I wish I had with my father. Mm -hmm. um, you, got father, you got father figures. And I did. I did have father figures, but and I didn't call them daddy. I would say that. I had an uncle that was in my life that pretty much I was, was my father you figure. You called them uncles. You called them big brothers. Like you've had, you may not have had a father who was extremely active, but you have had male yeah. that play hey. a very strong role in your life. We all have. And they mean just as much as a dad. At least in my opinion. I had a dad, but I also had uncles. I had a lot of male figures in my life. Good. So how did y'all come up with this concept? Um, so basically the concept was uh came out of a road trip that I did with my son. We drove across country. I'm from Oakland, California, and um we drove and I live in Maryland. And uh, we drove all the way from Maryland to Oakland, California, uh, made a few pit stops along the way. And as uh, after we were leaving, well, um, stopped in Vegas and I remember Phi Beta Sigma fraternity. And it was our conclave year. So we were just hanging out, um, having fun. But I didn't realize because I was more so posting to my social media just so that because it was just me and my son so just in case any god forbid anything happened you know people could go back to my social media and see exactly where our last location was uh, but a lot of people were started to follow it and like road, road did the journey with us basically so when we got to vegas i ended up getting to a conversation with a bunch of brothers and who were initially like hey we thought you were crazy as all get out to be doing this road trip uh but then that unfolded to just a group of men just having a conversation about being fathers and what we do and don't do could do um should be doing and that just stayed in my head and so as i was driving uh making our way to california uh, we had just crossed um the state line and all of a sudden this word father should just popped in my head and i was like man let me just jot that down um and that was it you know uh i kind of sat on it for a while um i wasn't sure um because i wanted to do a podcast i was you know uh kind of teeter-tottering on it and then i get back and one of my frat brothers is really good good friend we've had on the show a few times um kind of, we were at an event and he just grabbed me and we ended up having about a 45, some 60 minute conversation just between he and I about what that journey meant for him um, and watching it, wishing it that it was something that he would have had an opportunity to do what he did. And, and that just became, um, that kind of, that kind of solidified it for me. Like, okay, this, this thought that's been in my head, let me move forward and actually, Put some traction to it and here we are you know three seasons later um i contacted contacted Ms. vaughn on it and i uh, was like hey i have this idea and um as she'll tell you you know initially i was i was super gung-ho because you know you go on youtube and of course they make you feel like all you need is just the equipment start recording and then boom you got a podcast and that was the direction that i was that, that i was going in my head and she easily was just like, no, pump your brakes, play. You can't do this within a month. <laughs> so uh, we ended up sitting down talking about it, strategizing the whole thing. And um, literally, we didn't start until January of <coughs> 2020. No, yeah, yeah, January 2020, right before the pandemic hit. So, you know, we had all the equipment and whatnot for people coming and sitting directly in front of us, you know, and doing that, doing it that way. Um, and then, of course, we had also then once everything happened, we had to pivot and now do what is it we're doing here, which is, you know, more of a virtual uh, interviews. So. OK. Yeah. I love it. How long did it take you to drive cross country? Um, Too long. I took a week. 
I took two weeks off. No, I took two weeks off from work, and uh, um, I purposely, you know, took our time. We stopped in. Uh, we stopped in several states: Mississippi. Saw my grandfather. We stopped in Louisiana. Saw other family members. Um, we did the we did the tourist thing, you know, for the first week, and then we spent the whole week in California. So, okay, yeah, like I said, too long. <laughs> Nah, 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 nah. We had, we had a good time. We had a good time. Mm -mm. I can't do that long in a car. But I appreciate you for it. Hey, that's, that's, <laughs> why, that's why you take breaks. You know, you take breaks, make frequent stops. You know, you, we had a whole two weeks. So, you know, we we do, you know, we did what we wanted to do in the time frame that we wanted to do. I knew, I just knew that, that I wanted to get there within a week. I mean, regularly, if you drive straight through, it could take you like, you know, Two and a half days, if that. So, I love it. Yeah. So, normally on your show. Uh oh. <laughs> I have no idea what just happened. Oh, me neither. Well, well good morning. Right. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. yeah. Good morning. How are you? And I think this it does say live, so but no, that was it me. Okay. okay. <laughs> Sorry, that was me. Um <laughs> all right, so I understand there are certain things that I get the, the name fathers should, but what do you guys normally discuss on your show? Uh so a variety of topics actually. Um primarily things centered. Um I will say when we first started, it was it was just really just talking about just fatherhood, you know, in general. Um, and then we had an episode, um, I think it was like, what, episode 10 out of season one, which was entitled... Um, the I and Co-Parent is insignificant. Is, is insignificant. And then that was the shift for us. Wait, um, wait the I and Co-Parenting is insignificant? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So if you think about the spelling and co-parenting, the I, mm -hmm. the co-parenting with a child, a lot of times it, a conversation is, this is what I want to do. This is what I, instead of what is best for the child. So when you put, when you say, when you start the conversation with I, it's like, I, that's insignificant because you're talking about yourself, not your child. Like a lot of times you won't you're not going to like all the decisions and you're going to have to make a sacrifice. But because you're talking about the child and not I. It's right. If we're truly operating, because I'm a co-parent myself, we've been doing it for 17 years at this point. Um, if you're truly talking about co-parenting, then it's literally, it's just that. It's co-parenting. It's mm -hmm. not individual parenting or anything thing of that nature. Uh, so that was a huge shift for us because I, as a as a dad who's been in that in that lane, never thought about it really. You know, as far as having a conversation about it or even discussing um, the importance of communication, how you communicate with one another. If we're truly doing what it is that's in the best interest of the child, then yeah, that means that, that we definitely have to talk more you know whatever it was or whatever our our beef was or issues with one another we have to take time to sort that out because what it ends up becoming is a problem for the child in which it is that we that, that we are raising for those who are who are actively um and involved and even realizing that some who are some who may not be actively involved could very well be because of whatever the, the, the situation is. You know, we had a conversation on that pertaining to um, that it's a thin line between, you know, between being a frustrated dad versus a deadbeat dad, you know, because you can, or, you know, and, and really even just a frustrated parent. Because um, I've I had a few women that reached out that are in, that would be uh, as what's referred to as the non-custodial parent. That's, we've had that, had conversations on that. Um, and how much for me that's a, that's a trigger because it instantly, when you think about it in saying the word or using anything with the word non in front of it, it means that you are, it's instantly reducing your, your involvement, you know, um, as if to say that you are not involved, technically speaking. Uh, so we have conversations on that. Uh, we talk about, we talk about, um, 
uh, surrogates, you know, which are obviously aunts, uncles, you know, as you and Ms. Vaughn were talking earlier, those people who are, who may not be biologically, who may either be biologically or not, bi not non-biologically connected to you, but still make it a point to be very vested in your life and how it is that, that, that you go on living and moving forward. Uh, so we talked about that. Um, I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. I just want to make sure I'm understanding this. Are we counting like step parents as surrogates too? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Everybody. Yeah. Okay. So we say parents with um, surrogates is, as I like to say, everybody who didn't have a part of that nut. So if you're a surrogate, if you know you wasn't a part of that creation of that child, you're a surrogate. So when you talk about that, then that's why I said when you were just like, I didn't really have, I was like, no, but you have, you definitely have some figures who did some shaping and some inputting and planting the seeds that, you know, help to create the beautiful person that you are today. Okay. So I get in that situation counting, you know, like aunties, the big brother program, mm -hmm. so forth and so forth. So but are, I, I'm a little, I'm just curious to this. Sure. Because I still see an active step parent as a parent in that person's life. Like I'm not taking away the mother or the father from that, even mm -hmm. though you weren't biologically involved. Mm -hmm. So calling them a surrogate, is this like a, a, a new PC term? Like, are we wanting to be called this? Because to me, I feel like that's almost taken away from the role a little bit. It's not, not taken away no. from the role. No, it's it's it is. <sighs> It, oftentimes you you have situations where and really it, it really all depends on on the, the situation we have sometimes sometimes we've had people on who are step parents um but yet at the same time sometimes don't may not feel like the step parent it still may feel like the outside person even if the especially if the other parent or the biological parent is still relatively involved you know, even for, for me myself, I was a stepdad. Um, my 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 outlook on it was one of where I'm not here to necessarily play father. I'm more of in a supportive role because his actual biological father was very much active in his life. So I don't want to necessarily come in and try to make it seem or overshadow his his responsibility and his role so i took more so the 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 even though i'm in this this marriage to his mom so my role for me, it became like okay wait i'm the supportive person you know because at the end of the day whatever the decision that that those two are making for the child in which it is that they biologically brought into to this world right mm -hmm. they still have they still have the top right to do so you know it's not it's not me assuming that position. So from that standpoint, excuse me, from that standpoint, I viewed it very much so as like, okay, well, hey, I'm being a surrogate over here in a supportive. Doesn't take a to, I'm not one that's big on the factor of titles. Like, sure, I can be called a stepdad, but in in essence, the, the like I said, just the situation did not necessarily lend for me to be so well, so immersed in that title as opposed to what my position was realistically and I also, I also think that that comes from a comfort level because for some i will say that i have a what will people like, i have a half sister i don't call her my half sister that is mm -hmm. my sister. i think for some people um depending on the environment that you were raised like yes you may this may technically be your stepfather but you may call him dad or papa or something like that but but that's how you were raised. And so when you and then when you go out and kind of have and that's where it kind of came now. When we went out and had these conversations, um, people are just like, oh, so are you just saying step or are you saying um, that my role was insignificant? No, your role is really as a support system of the parent, because as they say, it's, it takes a village to raise a child. True. No parent can raise a kid alone. So you you literally have these villages who are really um, surrounding your child. And we've said it on the show many of times that half of the times Sarah gets around because of the child, because these parents, he'd be like, yeah, screw y'all. Because we need help. <laughs> you know, but I'm here because your child, I absolutely love 
your child. I love, you know, I love what, and I say it all the time, my nephew, I love the way he, he brings out a softer side of me. Like when my little cousins, they bring out, they bring out kids to me, they bring out a softer side. Sometimes they parents, I don't like them. I don't, there have been plenty of times I picked up people's children, barely spoke to the parent and me and the kid could, that's, but that's because I'm literally invested in the kid. Okay. I love that. But I'm going to be honest with you. If I'm not cool with you, I'm not hanging out with your kid. Um, <laughs> like y'all the package. Like y'all the package. No, no, no. Oh. I will say that in dating, it became a fact oh. where I do not, I don't like to meet kids and stuff like because that became a hard thing. But friends and stuff like that, especially if I've known you since you was in your mama's stomach or you was in your daddy's balls, like I seen you grow up, so yeah. What you said, you no, it's enough for you. Look, I, I'll be the first one to say I'm. I'm. I, I take kids on a case by case basis. I am not good with good with everybody's kids, you know. Um, hell, I take mine on a, on a day by day basis. So that should tell you yeah. something. <laughs> That's very true. <laughs> but okay, so. Going through your podcasting journey, I'm very curious. So, mm-hmm. how did we make it to three seasons? What led you to keep going? Uh, the people. Okay. The people, the responses, the just the conversations. Um, it, people, it's it's a there's a. I feel like definitely, and especially with social media being the way that it is and things of that nature, we to a, to a degree, I feel like podcasting. A, has brought back the art of just having conversations, you know, mm-hmm. and being able to talk about things. Um, and so that's been the driver, um, especially when we started to, you know, especially when Clubhouse emerged and we got on onto that and we really built a community there as far as uh, people coming in and having um, just, again, just real conversations about what was bothering them and being in this space where, um, there's no judgment, you know, anytime when we start a conversation, we say point blank, there is no judgment here. You know, there's no judgment. It's a safe space. It's it's, a safe. This is completely a safe space, you know, because you have to, you have to realize that even in conversation, we're not always going to agree, you know, mm-hmm. at the end of the day, as long as I, as long as I respect your opinion and we come to, to an understanding of this is your viewpoint and this is my viewpoint. And now I have a better understanding of what your viewpoint is, which allows me to be able to operate differently when it comes to you or better operate better with you walking through this journey called, called life. And that's just, that's just it, you know? So that's, what's kept us going. Um, because it, it really, especially from the co-parenting piece, like you realize like how much when we start to talk about co-parenting, one how lopsided the conversation can can be in most in most situations um and that just really became came the the, the driver for it for me per- personally um yeah and we're just it, it's just again it's just fun to have the con- conversations and really just um talk to people touch people um and and i can honestly say that for for us every guest that we've had on has been i've never walked away from any episode and have not feel like i learned something you know that i can't that that i that, that i left this conversation with some knowledge or some notes and whatnot and the next thing i know i'm up on google like okay now i gotta dig a little deeper and find for get, get some more information so that's a blessing so y'all research y'all guests beforehand because i'm gonna say i've had some episodes that i'm never releasing like we literally had somebody on and i'm texting him like we're not using this he was like right just stay up because we're gonna have to record this episode like it it is you know it's a crapshoot like some sometimes can it um they will sell you a very good game and then they come on and you're just like you are dead in the door now. Like you have absolutely no personality. What you're saying, it literally makes no sense. Like, yeah, yeah. what the hell are you talking about? Yeah, so we've had several of those. We've had, you know, <laughs> then we've had several who, you know, we're like an hour 
but it ended up being almost two hours. So you're saying you got to try to cut a con- a whole conversation. And that's where, you know, we figured out sometimes it'll have to be a part two or something like that. But it is, um, we used to try to do that the first season, but it, it did not. It, it proved it, it more of a headache. Yeah. So it, just it, like it did not work well for us. Um, and again, I think that's the, that's the joy of podcasting, right? Like you find what it is that works for you. I mean, I've, I've researched and looked at tons of webinars and things of this nature. It's like, oh, you know, this particular structure, this high. There is a there is a level of structure that we have, but for the most part, like we get people that, that are like, well, hey, um, are there any questions that you're going to send, send me? No. Mm-mm. I'm not sending you no questions because this is a conversation. If I was to meet you on the street, I wouldn't meet you with a list of questions. <laughs> you know, we would just literally be having a conversation. And that's pretty much what, what it is. So, yeah, we've had some we've had some doozies where it's just like, uh, yeah, no, no. And and you can tell within like the first 10 to 15, 10 to 15 minutes of the conversation. It's like, OK, yeah, I got to we got to. What? <laughs> gotta wrap this up. It was barely a thirty-minute conversation. Be like, "Oh, thank you so much." Right, like, right. I felt that because sometimes you just don't vibe with everyone. Or I'm gonna be honest with you. Sometimes what I thought I was gonna get is not what showed up today. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. I, Jesus. And even though I want to, sometimes clout. I guess my couple of clout chasing interviews like oh my god they have so many followers they talk about this and this and this and then right. when you get them on like right. this yeah. is like you paying for that like you can if there's no way you got all of like some, no we we definitely have had that issue that's why it is usually even when we get a guest we will tell you kind of what we want your subject matter to be just so okay. you um, but then that's also very much um, a lot of ours is either word of mouth or somebody will refer somebody to us. So we will find out kind of what your topic is. Um, we have started kind of having like offline conversation like, hey, this is what it is. This is what we think we want to discuss. I would definitely get with Fleming. I'm like, OK, this is the person. And it's usually I think it's only one time we were just like, no. It ended up working out for the best of us that we did not have this particular person, but okay. we're very much, we give each other, I follow him in the sense of he ain't going to make us look bad. And even if it does, again, I will send a good text message while we're in the interview, like wrap it up, dude, we're not doing this. Yeah. So, um that's kind of where like our kind of communication goes. And then we will just, you know, we will let we give them a good 10 minutes and we'll just let them talk and that will really let us know like okay this is going to be very interesting or a lot of times we will have an interview and we will think it will go one way and it will completely go different but in a good way and it's just okay. like, yeah. that that really helped that and that's helped that's why we threw out that script it was just like no nah. because every, at first especially from our first season to our third season it our first season sounded very structured. Okay. It was because it was like a list of questions and it was like, no, no, no. Had to make sure we got these questions and all of that stuff. But now it is like we're doing right now. It's a conversation. I prefer that though. It's more natural. Very much natural, more more organic. organic so absolutely. And you don't have a whole lot of dead space. Nope. True. Yep. But also, I feel like I'm missing something. Are y'all a y'all? Like, how do y'all know each other? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like th- I should have asked that earlier, but. So, uh, we are not. I, I got. <laughs> we are not a y'all. I got connected to this one via uh, my frat brother. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah, he's uh, he's, we have a mutual friend. We have have a mutual friend who is from Chicago, like she's from Chicago. And when they Mm -hmm. moved, 
they brought a whole bunch of people from Chicago with them, like over the course of time. And every time I would come to their house and it was just like, oh yeah, meet so-and-so. Oh yeah, well, this is so-and-so. They're from Chicago and blah, blah, blah. And so that was how we met. Um, and then she'll tell you point blank. She didn't like me at first. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. She didn't, it, cause, cause she's, to be honest, some days I still don't. Cause she's a smart ass. Like, by, by, <laughs> by, she's a smart ass, you know, but um and and I'm a nice person, you know. Um a true. <laughs> I'm a nice person, like I said, I'm a nice person. Um and you know, we we've had our clashing moments. Uh and actually on the the la um our season finale episode on this on this third season, we talked about that and the, the fact that we don't always see eye to eye, you know. We we definitely clash, but at the end of the day, um I know that I trust her and I know that she has nothing but uh, my best interests at heart. You know, uh, we have truly grown a, grown a friendship that is just, um, you know, it's valuable um, to me, you know, and I would not feel like it's valuable to her some days. Um, yeah. Right. Some days. Um, but that's that's pretty much pretty much it. So here we are. I respect that. Well, I will say, and anybody who has listened to it, they know that um, I wanted to, I didn't want to do this at all. I no. said I would assist. <laughs> okay. And I know assist means assist, not cohorts. So I said I would be the assistant until you found somebody else. Yeah, she put and on me it, about every episode. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna find you somebody and whatnot. Like, I'm here find you. to assist. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I was like, I will find you somebody to do this, and then it kind of became a um, it became like our child. If I want to mm -hmm. say, like, the podcast became like our child. So it's funny because we talk about co-parenting, and we literally co-parent a child. Because we're not together, but we have we have certain responsibilities that we do, and um, yeah, I've I've been ready to throw in a towel a couple of times, but it was as the people who we've connected with, the guests who we had on, um, I I find myself enjoying it. I, I, as much as I fought it. Um, it ended up being helpful to me. So it's an outlet. I love it. It yeah. is. It is. It is. Very therapeutic in a lot of ways. So it's a joy that we get. <laughs> Crazy. So you guys are in Maryland now? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So coming from California and Chicago, how's Maryland? Very bad. I'm ready, <laughs> I'm ready to go. Um, nah, it's uh, it's been there are things that I have experienced in life being here. Uh, actually, come April third of this year, I will have been here for twenty years. And oh, okay. So, so you're local now? No. <laughs> <laughs> New. Um, no, I I wanted to uh, let's see because I got here in 03. I was ready to leave by 04, and 05 is when my son was born. So okay, that uh, that definitely you know, um, being here and being here for him was was majorly important to me. So that 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 put the butt, put the brakes on real real hard. Scott, not going nowhere. So. Um, so yeah, uh, but he is 17. He will be 18 this year, and um, a, a running joke actually on on the show and even in the clubhouse uh, when he hit 13, I was like, okay, you got you on a five year countdown, bro. And yeah, yeah, and everybody was like, you know, what what do you mean five year count? Could five years? You know, as the once he hits 18, I will have done my part to get you to the point of where you are now able to go and live your life with some still with still with some assistance but it's not a it's not a it's not the daily requirement as it was when you were like six you know and through through those years you are ideally a young man and whichever you decide to go through as far as college or 
uh, whatever aspect you're going to do, you have that freedom to do so. Um, and I'll just be over here <laughs> when you need me to come and talk about whatever. Um, because I, I think that um, in that situation, in those co-parenting situations, um, me being away now would be beneficial for him, I think, more so as, an, as a young adult because it gives him an opportunity to go someplace other than where it is that he's been at for the past almost 18 years. You know, um, coming from mom's house to dad's house, it's literally like we're about, what, 20 minutes away from each other. So there's no really, there's no real big difference, you know. Um, and one of the things that going through, uh, through COVID um, allowed for, for me was to, to, really kind of disconnect from that expectation that you have as, as a parent when it comes to our children, you know, that, 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 because when we were on a schedule, you know, like when you go through co-parenting, you go through court, you know, everything is set for a schedule. So here's the schedule um, every other weekend, certain days throughout the week. And in your head as the parent, you want, especially if you're the one who's not getting um, a lot of the time, right? You want to you want to see your child. You want to spend time with, with your child. And with COVID, that schedule got interrupted. You know, um, and it was really a it was really a, a learning point for for me uh, in the sense of being able to let that expectation die. You know, and just realize that now I'm dealing with a teenager who's very much so trying to find his way and live his life. It's not about what, what I want. And what I really wanted, when I really sat down and thought about, well, what do I really want out of the situation? I just wanted to be happy. You know, I wanted to be happy and I wanted to be, be a contributing factor to society, right? I'm not trying to send out a menace in, in, into the world, you know? Um, and right now his happiness is going to hang out with his friends. It's not, it's not necessarily seeing dad, you know, for a whole weekend, you know, it may be seeing dad for a couple of days. Um, and I had to be okay with that, you know? Um, so with that and, and getting okay with that, it was also realizing, cause I think a lot of times you have where um, parents who live for their children, right. And lose sight of what made them happy, you know, or what they made lost, what, 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 what they enjoyed doing throughout life. Um, because our kids grow up and they go off and do their own thing, you know, um, and that's just pretty, pretty much it. I, I, it was the, it was the, the, the realization that, okay, well, cool. I can let him go do him, do him. I can still go do me. And, you know, we both pick up the phone or call, we'll FaceTime. Um, and really it's just a thing of like, you know, check, make sure you're all right. Make sure you're still breathing. Did you need anything? You know what I'm saying? How's school going and stuff. And it's really more so just the check-in now um and yeah so yeah dad's leaving his next chapter would like contribute to your location so if he decides he wants to go to famu would you possibly move to florida to be closer no really? <laughs> i just want to go to florida <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not moving to florida but i do got relatives in florida that we could you know he's got he's got second uh second generation cousins that you know because my uncle's kids live in florida both his kids live in florida so if he did decide to go to family in florida hey i'm going to you can go hang with them i'll call them be like hey he's at family please make sure he's good i'll come and check on you quarterly on a quarterly basis you know that's that's what we're moving to so i think about that i think just because my daughter is nine Mm -hmm. Like, I cannot imagine, like, you you don't want to see me every day, but I do realize eventually she's going to be an adult. She's going to have her life and I won't be parenting a child. I'll have an adult. I do accept that. I've, I've thought about this, yep. Yep. <laughs> but and I just an adult looks different. Mm -hmm. and parenting an adult looks a young adult to an adult looks totally different, you know. My mother and I just just had the same conversation like literally two nights ago, you know, to where it's it's a uh, you still it's like you see it. It's, it's like you still see. And I think especially for, for mothers, some fathers probably also. But I think especially for mothers, it's like you still see your baby, you know, at the end of the day, you still see your baby. But you also are forced to see this young person, you know, uh, one a good friend of mine, um, she just uh 
went through that same situation and she's come to terms with the fact that like, you know, she gave, she gave her daughter pretty much the blessing on a dude that she's now, that she's now dating, you know? And although she's dating someone who's not black, that was a hurdle for her, you know, for, for her mother to get over. Like, you know, you're dating someone who's this expectation of who it is that I had in my head of who it is that you or the type of person she would end up with. And that's not the case, you know, based off of something visually, but um, emotionally, uh, this person has shown that, that he does have her best interests in mind. And so he's shown and proved to her mother now to where she feels comfortable, way more comfortable now with giving him the stamp of approval. Um, and that's a hurdle, you know, it's all a process. It's all it a process. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, Miss Vaughn. So you mentioned, yeah. so you're a surrogate to the babies. So are you like the rich auntie, your <laughs> stepmama? Like, where, where are you in this? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, if you ask my nephew, I am the rich auntie. Um, I will say, so that's kind of like the role. Um, I, for the first, I think, nine years of my nephew's life, like, I was kind of, I was kind of the middle figure because it was just my sister. So um, my nephew's uh, father decided that he didn't want to be involved. Um, and it, me and my sister were living together. So I took on that role of like helping her and assist her. So um, that was the role that I had with him. Now my father, now my father took on very much that father figure role for him um and they're still extremely close to this day um and then i have um a couple of friends kids who so maybe i am the rich auntie because for them it's like it's, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with it it's, you know what but i'm not rich though mommy <laughs> warbucks <laughs> mommy <laughs> warbucks i said mommy warbucks <laughs> Like, yeah, but I'm not, because I'm very quick to tell their parents, I'm going to need y'all to roll me some money, because they're expensive. Now, I am I am that aunt who I will create a whole itinerary. There is no sitting down with me. We're going to learn something. We're going to do a physical activity, and we're going to go eat. Like, that, okay. that sometimes we're doing all of that in one day. If you give me, like, a couple of days, it is crazy. My nephew usually comes... Um, he comes here during, during Christmas. And mm -hmm. usually it's very, and he spends like a week, and I'm telling you, every day we have at least two to three activities. Poor child. Usually by then he's, you know, he's very sweet about it one day. And I always know when that day is coming. He's very sweet about it. He'll be like, oh, let's watch a movie. And then he'll just kind of play in the movie. He was like, yeah, tomorrow. Can you leave me alone? And I'm like, that Let me is move. <laughs> but so this year I, you know, I asked him, I said, Hey, well, do you want to come? And he didn't want to say no, but I knew he didn't want to come. So I was just like, it's okay. You can stay home. Only for him two days later when he was at home Christmas, he was like, I should have came out there with you. At least we would have been doing something. I would have had fun. And I was like, mm -hmm. I see I'm a good time. So now I don't have to worry about it. I have, you know, put my stamp, my submit, and, you know, I got my role buddy back next year. So I'm excited. So I really, I hate, I hate this because I feel like this puts the stamp on being a woman as partly being a parent, a mother as well. Like, so are you in a position where you don't want to have children? And if so, that's fine. No, it's not. I don't want to have children. I I was just very much, I didn't want to do it by myself. And there were not situations, like, I can go out here right now and go have a kid. That's, mm -hmm. but I, for me, and I would just, and I'm only talking from my perspective, I believe that it will be extremely selfish. Because I'm, in my, the way I view it in my head and at this point in my life, it will be, I'm, I, you know, I want a child to, you know, it felt like, it feels like, you know, to 
check off something like, okay, I did that. I accomplished. Mm-hmm. And that's not how I wanted to come into the situation. And again, more so than anything, I did not want to do this by myself. Like there, I grew up in a two parent household, but even still my parent, my parents were young when they had us. They, my mother was 20. My dad was 22. I tell them all the time, we, we grew up together. So in yeah. understanding we grew up together, um, I moved away. And in moving away, and I've always said that if I was to have a child now, I have to move back home to Chicago. It's cold. Like, for real. Like, it's really, really cold. And I'm not sure that moving back home would be the best for me mentally. But I know that is where my base is at. And again, if I'm to have a child, I need to raise you in the best kind of environment that I know I can depend on. Like, I know if I call my sister and I'm saying I'm stressed, I'm not worried about it. She's or she's already coming to pick up my child and they're doing whatever. And I have a day just to get my mind together. Not to say I don't have that here. But that I know that that will require a phone call. I know that in my head, if I ask you more than twice, I feel like I'm doing too much because it's like you got your own life. I agree. As I know, if I go home, my between my sister and my parents, they don't care. They give me like we've been waiting. Technically, my parents, I think they're okay with not having any more grandkids. They want, you know, they have they have their grandson. Do they want another one? Absolutely. It just, unless Jesus <laughs> comes down and says, like, not only is he going to have to impregnate me, but he's going to have to sit right here by me the whole time and say, yes, sister, this is what I have planned for your life. Because as I um, like to say, at this big age, um, yeah, I again, God, he's going to come down, and yeah, he and he knows how to talk to me, so he's gonna have to say some very particular words of this is your plan, this is what I have in store for you. Yeah, I feel you on that, I feel you on that because right now I'm 35 and I couldn't imagine at all starting over. My daughter's nine. Since we've been on here, she's made her breakfast. She is <laughs> chilling. She has made her bed. We are great. <laughs> I, told a, I told a friend of mine uh, when he had his first first son, um, I said, there's a day that you will mark in your brain, in your brain calendar, will be the day when it is that your child is old enough to get up and go make their own breakfast and you get to sleep in. You know, that is, that is, as a parent, that is one of the most glorious days that when it happens, you were just like, whew, thank you, Lord Jesus. I can go ahead and get this, get this extra 30 in because they're going to go watch TV. They're not going to bother you. And yeah, and you hope pretty much they don't burn the house down. You know, um, she made it, she put the pancake in the microwave. She's okay. straight. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. See, mine actually knows how to scramble eggs and stuff on, you know, in the, in the skillet on on, on the on the stove top. So yeah, it was, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, it was uh, it was like, ooh, okay, let me just. You got the fire. Okay, the fire's too high. The fire's too high. I need you to turn it down. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. But also with a seventeen-year-old, could you imagine starting over completely? Because no. men do it all the time. No, I actually <laughs> funny that you would say that. We actually got a uh, I got a fire brother who we have who we have. <laughs> As scheduled for the show, um, because he's over 50. Uh, both of his kids are in college, and yeah, he hit that reset button <clears throat> with his with his now. I think they're either I think they're engaged to get married, but yeah, I was just like, bruh, you're over fit. Like, really? We re- I'm no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm yes, I'm happy. 17, about to be, he'll be 18 this year, out the door, good. We should know the best. <laughs> I'm over here, you know, planning my trip to Cabo. So yeah, catch you, catch you when I get back. That's, uh, but all, my sister and I are ten years apart, and like my mom laughs, like you could do it again. No, uh-uh. that was not fun. Uh-uh. 
my sister, she legit told me, I think I was like 16 randomly. She was like, I hated you. So you were like five. And I was like, what? That's yeah, right. I, didn't, I didn't want you here. Yeah. Yeah. What, what yeah. am I supposed to do with this information? <laughs> my little sister and I are 17 years apart. No, no, 16. Yeah, we're 16 years apart. Mm -hmm. So when, you know, she was a baby, everybody thought she was my child. And again, she looks exactly like, I look like my father. So she looks like exactly like me and it for her even for her she kind of she kind of understood but she was just like so i like you my mom or you like my sister and i'm like i'm your sister she was like but everybody keeps thinking you're my mom people are crazy so that I'm, is giving a bet movie where eventually you just gonna tell her i'm the mama <laughs> no, 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 then you have to worry about that. And to be honest, she really kind of made it where I was like, yo, I don't want kids. Like, shit. I, was, I love her to death. I love my little sister to death, but maybe. Wait, so she was your birth control? <laughs> I, I remember going to the gynecologist. I said, you can take this out. And she was like, you're like 20 something years old. Yo, my little sister is blowing the hell out of me like this. She was, and that at that stage, she was around a lot. She was around me a lot. So it was like when she was like one to three. Oh. Yeah, I'm not gonna say I like her because she may see this, but baby, I was just like, yo, what what can we do to stop this? And they were like, you may want to have a kid. Mm -mm. She she was my and it wasn't like she was a bad kid. I was just like, this is a lot. Yeah, kids are a lot. This, this is this is a whole lot. And even when she got to a certain age, my sister had my nephew. So at the point where I was just like, okay, you know, I kind of like you. My sister had my nephew, and I was just like, Jesus. By that point, it was I think daycare was five hundred dollars a week or something like that, and I was like. Shit. I was like, who can afford to have a kid? Exactly. Oh, I work third shift at home for a reason. Um, I go to work at eight. She's normally in bed by eight thirty. She wake up at seven. Like, I don't pay for childcare. <laughs> it works no, it's out. It's a. It is a thing. Yeah. And people who have more than one kid too, mm -mm. and more than one, I'm like, shit. Uh -uh. Or if you want to be a good parent and have them active and stuff, that is expensive. When I see those parents who are out there every season, I'm like, y'all got third jobs. Like, what are you, what are we doing? <laughs> who, who's paying for this? That's where, they, that's, where, that's where that community comes in. They they, they got a Miss Vaughn on, on on their side somewhere that's sitting there shoving out. We're like, okay, well, hey, I, it's re it's real important for him, so I'll go ahead and cut co co cover this. Blah blah blah. Yeah. Or very much I will be like, oh, I saw this program. Don't worry about it. It's already paid for. I just need you to get him there. Like mm -hmm. that is very it is very much like that. But I know as a kid, I wish I kind of had uncles or aunties like that who are very much willing to say, hey, I saw this particular program. I paid for it. I just need you to get there. Um yeah. I wish people would rather do that. Don't don't buy us toys, buy us experiences. She would love to have, you know, a yearly membership to like the little museum mm. or you know kick in on this brownie uniform mm. anything yeah yeah, yeah. But but see, I, I, that goes I with, gifts like that right i'm like what is it that you need and they'd be like well they have like a whole soccer thing okay here you go and i will just like literally they was like you literally bought because i understood especially for my nephew like you play with a toy twice Piss as hell. I will never forget. What was that? Tickle Me Elmo when that came out? Remember when that was like the big rap? Mm -hmm. We literally went through like six, seven different stores to find this kid that fucking Tickle Me Elmo. Do you know he played with that thing for 30 minutes and did not touch it? I forced that thing down his throat. I was like, oh, you gonna play with him? Cause mm -hmm. Do you know how long I stood in this line? Do you know what I had to go? Oh, you, you're playing with him. So then yep. it became very much of, I know for me as an adult, I don't have to get gifts. I like them. Give me an experience. Mm -hmm. Give me something that I can remember. To me, that means more. So that's how I look at it. I don't look at it like, 
Here's why I will create a whole itinerary for you. We're going to do some stuff that you have never heard of. We're going to go to a place, you know, we'll go make a cooking class, figure out how to make pasta or something like that. But then come to find out two months later, you at home rolling up some dough and all this other stuff because I took you to a pasta making class. Right. And it's if for me, I'm very much, I'm that, un, I'm that person. I will give you an experience. So, because I think that's way that's way more valuable. Like, like you said, it's it, it lends to, you know, the gift. The gift is the gift is for a short period of time, you know, until the newness wears off, um, and then you're back. Exactly. It, right, and then you're back to go and play play something else or outside and whatnot. Those experiences, those, those are lifelong things that you hold on to, um, and they they go with you from that point all the way through your adulthood. And you know, you never know what it is that that may spark in a kid. You know. Um, mm-hmm. It might, it might, they, they may come and be like, you know what? I think I want to be a chef, you know, just because, right. you, just because you took them to a, to a cooking class, you know. So that I, I would, but again, I think with that, um, that's a narrative that if we don't talk about it, then we won't ever see it, see it changed, you know. Um, so you know, you have some parents that I think that are, but it's it's like until it's actually something that you see on a on a on a much larger scale, then it's just like, yeah. Because then, of course, people always look, look at the at the the money associated with it, you know. Um, but if you got several people that are contributing to to the pot, like okay, well, hey, instead of getting instead of getting joy a gift, I'm giving this thirty bucks or this fifty bucks, you know, and you put that toward whatever it is that that the experience is going to be. I know for my son when he acknowledged that he loves cars, he is a car fanatic. Will tell you everything there is to know about your car because it's just what he does. Um, and so we did ever since he's expressed that everything has been pretty much a step of trying to really have that 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 to flourish for for him. So he's been in STEM 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 camps. You know, every STEM camp I could possibly put him into, he's been in. Um, we've driven to Detroit. Unfortunately, uh, there was a there's a camp um, in Detroit that I wanted to send him to, but unfortunately you can't do it until you're a sophomore in high school and his sophomore year was right when COVID hit. So we couldn't, mm. couldn't do, do that. So we lost out on, on that opportunity, but I had that all set up because I got family that lives out in Detroit. I got a homeboy of mine and whatnot, them really good friends with it. it was like, Hey, he can stay here. I'll take him. You know, you just get him here. We got him covered. And that's, that goes back to that whole community. You know, and that the village, you know, the village doesn't necessarily have to be within your area. You know, village could be next state, you know, um, as long as it's it's still an experience in life that that, that you get giving your kids. So I encourage that. That's yes, I yeah. It sounds amazing. So we need to get more experiences. Personally, me as Amron, if y'all want to kick in for this summer camp. <laughs> <laughs> family that is listening I would rather we do that for my birthday <laughs> there you go if you put that out there like especially when like oh well what do you need or you know what do you think the kid want be like I my sister is very very much she'll be like uh he has camp coming up mm-hmm. oh we got camp so you there has been times where I've split it with like me and my mom split it and we will pay for it. And she was like, mm, camp's done. She was like, okay, camp part one and then camp part two. That was like the thing for her. She was like, you need, these kids need nothing. I mean, to be honest, unless it's a video game, they ain't yeah. really care what they know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't get, I don't give, I don't give my son any, like, any time he's like, okay, dad, so what? Where am I going this year? That's 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 where we're at now. Like, cause he knows I'm not getting you a gift. I'm not getting you anything physically tangible. Either a I'm putting money into your account toward toward school and whatever it is that that decision is, or I'll go ahead and cover cover an experience. But that's it though. You know, all that other stuff, your clothes and things like that. Yeah, you know, you you got a little penny in any jobs here and there. You're good with that. You know, I'm not paying. I'm not coming out of pocket for no Jordans. It's not happening. So yeah. Oh, that's hard. That's hard to say no to him. I don't know. I <laughs> this guy from he gets me. He gets me. Oh, he gets me. Cause he'll hit me with the everybody else has it. And you know what? I'm not gonna say I was walking around with you know some bubble gums. But 
there were a couple things that I really, really wanted. My mom said no. So if you hit me with the everybody else got it, it gets me. It gets me right here. <laughs> okay, so I will go with the, it's not that everybody got it. It is, I, but I really want it. And he has to explain to me why he wants it. So it, if he hits me with the everybody, that's almost a no for me. But if he hits me with it, I know it probably sounds a little bang. I need to see how you're going to make this work. So you need to show me some showboards of how you're going to rock this outfit. How you going <laughs> to, like, that's how you have, now that is how you have to show me. Once he showed me that, I was like, oh, sir, got it. Done. That, but that's how he knows he gets me. My dad, all you have to do with my dad is say, Papa, like, I really want these. And mom said, no. My dad's like, say less. I'm buying it because your mother said no. That's, I mean, he knows how to play the game with the people who he's trying to get it from. But he knows with me, don't say like everybody got it. Show me how this, show me how you're going to work this fit. Okay, mm -hmm. so let's go. Like, yeah. Then, then you know, then auntie, she'll buy it. She'll be like, and she'll probably get you like two of them and then another color. Like, I need you to go ahead and add this one to your reference too. That's I love it. Yeah, so wait, bother. when you're that would bother me though. So if I said no, I'm I meant no, Dad. Like <laughs> <laughs> there are reasons why I might have said no. <laughs> but that's but that's that's grandparents though. That is that is the that's role of and arms. Like, and arms. Like, like, you, there's you, a, uh yeah, like they they are always going to be the antagonist in your movie. Like in, in, in your no, movie. wait, no, say yeah. that. Yes. <laughs> They are. No, that's not true. When my sister, she will literally, if she'll tell him no, and he will come now, he has come to us. And it was based off of, I remember when he really wanted a phone. Mm -hmm. And he was just like, oh, I want a phone, I want a phone, I want a phone. My sister was like, no. I asked my sister. And my dad, you know, but he gave him a flip phone, so he didn't want that shit no way. So I wasn't really worried about it. Um, So it was, you know, and she was, you know, he wasn't acting right. He wasn't doing some stuff right. And so I was just like, okay, I'm going to wait to get him until you say, okay. So I'm very, like, it's certain stuff that I will literally, I will talk to my sister about, like, hey, is this okay? Now, all that other stuff, if she just want to be a butthole, no. I'm the cool aunt. I'm the favorite. I need to keep my title as the favorite. So, yeah. Even over a mother. You got. See, see. I love how you got it. You got to keep your title. I don't know because I had nieces and my nephew, but my mom had. Okay, my mom had my sister young, mm -hmm. so then my sister had kids young. So my nieces and my nephews are kind of more like siblings instead of like an aunt auntie mm -hmm. relationship. Mm -hmm. So I'm quick on strong arm and no. Like what you asking me for? Oh, for my little sister. <laughs> my little sister, I'm. Very quick to strong on her, like half a no. Like mm -hmm. I said no, and she's like that with my nephew. So it's very much so. Um, like she, but to my sister, to me and my sister, like my nephew and my sister, they like brothers and sisters. And she was like, No, I'm your aunt, you have to respect me. And even my nephew, like, girl, go on somewhere. You like. You like my sister. Like, I don't I don't have to listen to you, what you say and stuff like that. And the fact that he really does that is just, I feel bad for it. Because she's just like, she was like, no, you have to respect me. And he like, you yeah. no, I don't. Right. But you get tickled by it. <laughs> you know, he was like, you like my sister. Like, you're only a couple of years older than me. And I'm like. Uh, I am. How close are they in age? Um. Eight years apart. They're okay. Eight, yeah. So they like, yeah, they're eight nine years apart. Yeah. Wait, was, hold on. I think. Wait. That was the thing. I actually worked with my yeah, they're nieces. Eight they're eight years apart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we all worked together at one point, and that was the worst idea ever. Who um. Worked? Yeah, I got them a job. I got my nieces a job to work with me Her. when I was Hell working no. in like an answering service. Mm. Hell no. And. That was horrible because I was in a management position as well. And they, number one, did not respect my authority. Like, just, <laughs> I, 
We don't care. <laughs> from balls. So no. Mm -mm. And then second, the way one of my nieces quit, it just made me so upset. Like she legit like ran to the bathroom and never came back. So I was off that day and they called me like 37 times. I remember this. Because number one, I'm not answering. I'm I'm not coming in. <laughs> but uh -huh. they were concerned. Like, your niece disappeared. We don't know where she went. And it's like, oh, you're her emergency contact. Is she okay? Oh, I, mean, so I don't know. Say? <laughs> she um she didn't want to work there anymore. That was her excuse. <laughs> so you just you just did Okay, you uh, look, of making this transition. Bath bathroom emergency, and um, I'm out. You know, I see y'all. It's been fun. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, mm -hmm. dipped out on them. It was, it was funny now that I think about it. But at the time, it was like all you had to say is I don't want to work here. <laughs> like that right. wasn't right. Mm -mm. See, that was a dramatic exit. That was really a dramatic exit. Very in, my, in my head that so plays out like a movie scene like right now like I would literally put that into a movie like yeah, I'm, I'm going to the bathroom and then just you know pan to the next scene and they at home you know eating, eating. or like running down the alley or something like that right right like, like, that's, really, like. that's the funny part because she literally ran away that's what made them concerned <laughs> like they saw her running so they were worried about her wealth, like her well of being. Like, is she right. okay? Right. So I don't. That's why they called you, because yeah, she went right. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, that is hilarious. Like, yeah. My that fans. So, y'all, you thank you for doing your hour. You're welcome to stay a little bit longer. I'm waiting for more people to join. Um, hopefully, Kanuba will jump on, and Kiki is coming back. Or if y'all want to leave, I can thug it out. Either or. So let me can I ask you a question? Yes, you can ask me all the questions you want. Okay. So you're a mother of one? One. One, one. and done. Okay. So how's your co-parenting situation? I don't co-parent. I am a single parent. I knew when I was pregnant I would be doing this by myself. Mm. And I made a decision. Okay. Um I've attempted to try to co-parent multiple times. Mm -hmm. But I can't make someone be present if that's not what they want to do. True. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Things still have to be done. Right. We had a conversation, me and my nine-year-old. She understands it's the two of us. Mm -hmm. This is who your biological person is. Mm -hmm. um, this is not what they want, but we good over here. Right. Right. Okay. So okay. she understands that it's a single situation, but I mean, we happy. I mean, that's all that matters. Yeah. So, would you be open? Like, so say, for instance, that's how you guys started, and you guys mm -hmm. are. So, are you open if he decides that he wants to be an active? Parent? It would be hard because I wouldn't trust it because I know who he is. Um, there would be so many factors to number one, why? Why now? <laughs> why? Like, what happened to get you here? Um, I would never deny him from being a part of her life but you're not going to ping pong it like if you hear you hear mm -hmm. um you can't mm -hmm. be here and be away and go back to this other situation because you can hurt me but you can't hurt her um but so how do you know that though like if it was to like if that was to happen and then knowing his past mm -hmm. how he was in his past you know that I part because then you like I like I will say I'm not saying that I want to diminish how you feel or what he has done but mm -hmm. if he comes in and he's saying like no I want to be active or I want to be a part of my daughter's life it would be hard I admit I wouldn't I wouldn't run away I wouldn't be like no never but mm -hmm. it would be hard it would honestly be hard to take it seriously what if what if it was your daughter? Like if she wanted to actively do this? That's it. What what if she what if one day she woke up and said, Hey, you know what? I really want to work at fostering a relationship with my father. How would that make you feel? I would do the most I can for mm -hmm. her in that situation. Okay. 
But I will be completely honest with her. If these feelings aren't reciprocated, it's okay. Like, mm-hmm. there's, I don't want that to make you feel any type of less than. Right, right. Absolutely. And I think and I think that's very important because um and I I tell my sister this all the time. When my nephew's father decided that he didn't want to be active, she her biggest fear was that I didn't want you to feel like you were chasing somebody. You're constantly chasing to get the mm-hmm. attention. So she um she, you know, she put him into programs. She, you know, he has a lot of male active role models and she even put him in therapy just to be able to help him to kind of understand how he's feeling and things of that nature so that was I I commend you for that having that conversation with her and then also giving her that room to express like hey this is how I'm feeling about something and then being honest because I Mm -hmm. think sometimes parents you know you try to want to protect your child but sometimes your protection is doing more harm like you're not like yes should your child know everything at five years old no but as they get older certain conversations need to be had because it's nothing worse than them becoming 13 and you're feeling like you put in all this work and your kid is feeling less than because they don't have this parent and they're going off chasing this person who may or may not want to be involved with them and it's not their fault it's it's that parent fault but i don't want i don't want i don't need that to be a reflection of you not at all right that's that's their choice it ain't yours you have this oh you you've made it a point to open to them and for them to close to open the door if they close it they close it you did we good over here like what you won't do and like i said i believe that like what you won't do is ping pong if you true. don't care, you're going to be here. Very true. Because it was hard. And I honestly, I did basically your story. I moved back once I was pregnant. I moved back to my hometown. I was a few states away because I felt if I needed that support. And I didn't want to do it completely alone. Mm-hmm. But there are many other places I would rather be. <laughs> of course. I'm still back in my hometown after leaving for shoot nine years I was gone for nine years I came back had a baby and I'm still here the plan is still to leave but I love I love the relationship my daughter has with my family mm-hmm. um my sister doesn't consider herself an aunt she calls herself a mooty and mm-hmm. I really I'm confused teasing mom. I'm teasing mom. right she's like I'm I'm more than an aunt I'm like the mom I- I, I feel like an aunt is, I feel like you downplay my role when you call me an aunt. And okay. That, you know, when you were talking about that earlier, I feel like when you call me auntie, I feel like you down, I down. Like, everything I've done, that that's beyond aunt. Use a lie. Like, the only thing I wasn't, I, again, I wasn't part of that nut. I, okay. I, I, the only thing I didn't work was those light switches when, y'all, when he was created. That's it. But everything else, yeah. When he popped up on out of her, right there so to say like oh i'm an aunt don't curse at me like put some respect on that exactly but that's the thing like my sister was there when i gave when i when she came into the world she cut the umbilical cord she was a little too active in the whole process like but moving past that um <laughs> I mean, it's very interesting though i mean kind of gross but it was so i was like oh my Mm-mm. Back up <laughs> again, and that was also another part of why I do not have a kid. Because I was like, "Yo," and all I kept saying, "I was like, I know you so well right now. It is mind boggling." Like, <laughs> oh my! I was like, "What in the world?" So yeah, it was kind of interesting to me, <laughs> gross, but it was so. Interesting. But I would honestly, I would love to do that. Um, I would love to be there and experience that with someone else. I've never done that. But you I've should, never... be, I will recommend everybody do it that one time. Like that one. And, and when I say I was active, I was going to doctor's appointments. My sister, um, she, um, it was, you know, she, she had a complicated pregnancy. So she had to be on monitors like three days a week. Um, it was doctor's appointments like two days. Like, so you're on, she was on a monitor three days a week. And then those other two days, 
she was going to the doctor. So it was just like to say I was very, very active in it. So when she actually came out, when it came time to push him on out, you damn right. I'm going to be right there like, hey. hey. <laughs> I mean, even for my nephew, when he popped on out, I was like, can you see me? Because, you know, I read like, you know, the kid is blind. I was like, you can hear me, but can you see me? You can't see me. You can't even see me. I was, you know, I was aggravating the shit out of him. But, you know, was... So in other words, you traumatized him early in life. Got it. She was showing she loved him. I got a like, all, all, all up here in the face and whatever. No. I need mean, you no, back up, looked, right? Like, it, was, it was crazy because he would hear my voice and wherever he would just roll his head to wherever my voice was. And, um, you know, I'm like, let's go. That means he's up and it's time for us to go. It's auntie, um, it's TT and um, nephew time. And we will go hang out. Like I was very much, I would, I would never admit this. And my sister would not listen to this, but he was like, what, two months old or a month old. And I would literally like take him and we'll be gone all day. Like from <laughs> like, from like 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. And she'll call me, and I'll. That's too long with my new baby. I was like, ignore. <laughs> I will ignore her, and like she would, she would kind of be freaking out, like you had my baby all day. But and like I told her, I did that because I didn't know how to take care of her. Like I didn't understand what she needed. Um, she was, you know, I knew she was different. I knew her mood was different. I knew it was just, it was a lot. You know, it was a lot on her. I didn't know how to. Again, I didn't know how to take care of her, but I knew how to take care of this baby. And I mm -hmm. know taking him off your hands, you can go take care of you. I got him. And at first she didn't get it. And then we were, baby, we was fighting. But it was one day she got, like one day it just kind of clicked to her. And she was, you know, she, she talks about that now. And she was just like, I thank you for that. She was like, I would have lost my mind. Like, mm -hmm. it was it was very much for her it was like mentally and stuff it was a struggle it wasn't that she didn't you know want to be there but i believe i really believe that postpartum thing is real it is it is a very and the way and because there is not one way that it affects people it it became my job when i started to see that she was going you know just so a weird direction and I'm looking at it I'm like oh no not my sister like no okay I'm, I'm gonna take this baby and we're gonna go outside and we're gonna go do something because for people, me it you need to write that down you need to post that more because people do <laughs> not do that don't like I can I can do the diapers I can I can do some other stuff but also finding yourself again is hard it's kind of like getting planted again like planted with your feet being yourself in this new role um mm -hmm. And I wish people would have did that more. And the craziest thing, it wasn't something like that happened like overnight. Like mm -mm. It, it took her, it took like for a minute, it took her to realize she was a parent. And then when it took her a minute to realize it was she was a parent, she realized I'm like, I'm a single parent and I got to do all this on my own. And so then it was, I saw it. I saw like all of the crying and all of that other stuff. Mm -mm. Okay, I'm going to, let me let me get him you just go do you like you got this whole house to yourself i don't whatever if you sleep all day and that was and that was kind of another thing like she was sleeping all day that's what that was the stuff that was scaring me like it was just it was a complete like cut off and that was mm -hmm. the part that for me that was a part that was scary. And I didn't, you know, I didn't know how to help her. And she was just like, I'm just tired. Okay. If you tired, cool. You sleeping all day. And it's just like, I don't want you just to sleep all day. Cause you know, when you wake up, it's still here. Yeah. So we got to deal with the waking up part. We got to deal with the still here part. But if you need to sleep, go ahead. So, I mean, and I've had friends like that. And they like, you know, was like, I really need a break. Okay. I got the baby. Um, I'll take the baby like the whole weekend. They were like the whole weekend. Mm -hmm. Like yeah, no one, this is gonna sound crazy. I've never spent a day without my child. I've never been away from my child for a full day. Like she's never 
spent the night with Mooty, her Mimi, no. And I didn't realize how weird that was until um, like my dad was like, hey, she could come down to Alabama. And I got instantly like anxiety. Like, what do you what do you mean? Like, I'm not staying in Alabama for a week again. No. <laughs> so <laughs> she would have to go without me. And I realized that and I fear that I'm not even going to lie. I do sometimes secretly fear that her father would want to be involved and I'd have to share my child. And I get that I'm not really sharing her. She's both of our child. I, I get that after I said that. Yeah. But <laughs> I was like, you, did, you did realize you said you said you're sharing my, mm. my, my child. Yes. Mm. But I don't. It's a have never had to. Mm-hmm. It was like, I don't know how I would do that. Mm-hmm. That's a real thing, though. But that's something you're going to have to work through because she's yeah, not. I'm going I'm to work on that. But not today. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, especially when when we get to those teenage years, because yeah, it's gonna that's that's when it becomes more in your face, you know, when when you hit those teenage years. So you got some time to prep for it, but you know, just prep for it though. <laughs> Heard her response though, and I feel okay with it. Um, like she's been asked, like you know, little kids talking to each other, and like someone's asked her, like, so what's your dad name? And she's like, oh, I ain't got one. And we just kept it moving. And it was like, I don't, that wasn't the right answer, but oh, okay. <laughs> that's, what, that's what my nephew says. He was like, I don't have a dad. He was like, I have a grandfather. And that, when the first time I heard it, that that was a gut punch. I was like, and he said, but he was very confident when he was like, I don't have, he was like, I don't have a dad. He was like, but I got a papa. Mm-hmm. And he was like, my and- papa is everything. He was like, my papa is my dad. And like, of course, my dad, you know, chest out, he put out a whole new insurance policy and made him a beneficiary. But <laughs> just like, you know, for, you know, for somebody who grew up with a dad who's very, very active, I just, mm. it's, that, it, you know? it seemed, it bothered me. Oh, it, I'm not gonna lie. I cried a little bit that night. Mm-hmm. I cried mm-hmm. a little bit. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. But she didn't say it as if it was an issue, though. That was the thing. She said it like, eh, even more. I think, for, I think for us as the adults, we have the issue with it. And I think because we realize kind of all of the other stuff that goes behind that. For a kid, they just, especially in their certain world, they just, they don't, they like, it's, it's this is my world right now. And that's, you know, you have, you you've created this world. And they're just like, okay, that's my world. And he's not here. And it's okay. Like, I got my mom. I got my grandpa. I got my aunts. I got my uncles. Like, it's okay. He's not in this world. Right. He's missing out. And But we are right. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. It's just it's just for us as the adults. We just like, ugh. Yeah. But it's good. It is. You're doing it's a good, good job. Like, she's up. She's up. She done made a bed. Made a breakfast. And she's still alive. You've done she's a good still job. alive. Yeah, she's she's she's, she's, she's amazing. Good job. So far, nine in years since do up top. You did that. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> but I don't know. I always question also because I, I really don't date like I should. Like I keep my dating life and my parenting role completely separate. Um for now. Yeah, especially, it's just, I don't want to mix the two, or even with introductions. If I'm not sure you're going to be here for a minute, there's no point. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. Um, And that's a red flag to me, too. If I'm meeting your kids and stuff way too early, like, how many other people have met these children? Yeah. Like, that's that's weird to me. Yeah. That was actually the agreement between my son's mother and myself when we, when we broke off. Um, Bela was just like, okay, well, hey, like, no, you know, dude, if you got to go on a date, call me, I'll come get him, or vice versa. Um, you know, just if it becomes something that's like really, you know, that it's real, you know, and it's something that is this person's about to be around, or at least you want this person around, they've shown that they're gonna be around, or that they even want to be around. Um, then at that particular point, then it's just like, okay, well, hey, now we can move to, you know, treat like the Marvel movies. We got phase one, 
then we got phase two, then we got phase three, you know, and <laughs> then we're gonna get to Wakanda forever. So that's 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 how, how it goes, you know. Um, and so yes, no, I I, I completely applaud, uh, applaud you for for that piece um, because you you know because introducing or bringing your child around someone is. And we actually had a had a had an episode about that even um, you know pertaining to the fact of like you know dating as a dad you know um, for me it was definitely a thing because I went through a divorce and then it was just like okay well hey and my child is older now you know so we're actually and he's old enough now to where he's aware of the fact that like you know dad's going on a date you know and there was one time where I had a date and he was just like he's like dad don't you got a date tonight I was like yeah he was like all right he said well. I'm gonna go out and wash your car. He said, "Cause your car is dirty." And when I said, "You can't be going on a date with, with a dirty car," and I was just like, "Boy, you look. You gonna get this fifty dollars for 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 helping dad out? Cause that's one thing I ain't got to go do. So great." Um, so then it becomes like you know a thing of where it's more of a um, it's like your best friend pretty much giving you you know his his tidbits or his his advice. Uh, there were definitely some things even on. Even on our episodes when we talked about the road trip, and it was just like I think Vaughn asked me one time, um, or was it something that that he just said, or some advice that you've gotten from your child that really like stuck? And I was like, the craziest thing was is that right before getting, right before separating, you know, it became this thing where he took the time to express how he felt about. The relationship you know or how it is that he saw me in that in that 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 relationship and it was when we were on the road trip and he was like well dad he's like you know um he's like no i've seen you when you're he's like i, I know you love you know the ex and everything blah, blah blah he was like and i see you happy but i've seen you happier when you're not with that person you know mm -hmm. And it was just like, and then we and we driving, and it's like the longest stretch because we were coming through Texas, and it's like the long, longest stretch from San Antonio to El Paso. And then like five minutes later, this fool went to sleep and just left me with this thought in my head to just think about it in this long, you know, in this road. And I'm just like, damn, like really, that's 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 what you're gonna leave me with? But it just it it put me in a state of just reflection for about the next god like six hours, you know. Um, in that drive and coming out of it, it was just like, okay, now I got something different to think about. Kids pay attention. I tell people all the time, like as, as the parents, we get, as the adults in the situation, we get set in our ways. You know, you have a pattern. Our children learn our, our, our patterns of behavior. They're still learning and growing. We get stuck into a pattern of behavior, which is how it is that they end up being able to sometimes navigate around us and do things that we'd be like, how the hell did you do that and stuff? Because they know pretty much that we're going to, they know what it is that our response is going to be and even our response time. They're little crooks, I tell you that, that much. Um, <laughs> you know, um, but at the same time, it's like they, they are also able to see the things that we don't look at, you know. Um, so having those conversations with, with your daughter, with anyone who's watching this, having those conversations with your children. Um, I think doc, Dr. L said it best. She's our, our resident therapist on the show. Um, and she said, you're always, a, regardless of the age of your child, you're always able to, to communicate um, what you need to communicate. You just have to learn how to pattern the conversation for the age that they are at that point um, and go from there. So, so that is that. So I hey, everybody. Good morning. Good morning, no, sir. This is my best friend. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, y'all. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> yes, we've known each other for almost 18 years now. Yes. Um, okay. Jesus. Okay. And it's a long time. Yeah. Lord, damn. It's when we had the fellas on. That was 20 plus years of. 20 plus years of, of conversation. So, yes, yeah, so y'all know each other very well. <laughs> very, well. very well. Good stuff. Mm. Good stuff. But I have a question. After he said, like, you seem happier when you're not with this person, did that, was your light bulb to end it? Like, how, what happened after that? What was the ending of it? Divorce. <laughs> okay. That was that, that was that, that was the end of that. Um, it was it, because it, the, 
I, like I tell people, I didn't get married to get divorced. You know, um, I got married to be married. Um, and even in sitting down with my therapist, the reality was, was that I wasn't happy. Um, and a lot of times, and I've said it on the show, um, you know, the, Men suffer in silence. Not that women don't, but it's like we gloss over the fact that men men do suffer in silence because we we get we have this expectation that's placed on us from not only just the people in our lives but just the world in general, you know, and how it is that we're supposed to move and and the things that, that we're supposed to shoulder and not, you know, and sometimes the things that we feel that we can't talk about. So in that in that vein, it was just like, okay, I'm not happy, but I also recognize that I wasn't strong enough to walk away even though everything about it was saying, walk away, you know, because in my mind, it was like, nah, we can make this work. Like, because I don't want to fail at marriage. You know, I don't want to fail at being a father. I didn't want to fail at my marriage. And it's not really a failure. It's just right. the acceptance of our, our, our relationship evolved to a point of where us being together was not the best option for either of us, you know? Um, and, everyone around you can see it, you know, and, you know, the people that, that, that truly know you um, and truly want, want, want to see what's best for you are the ones that will tap you on the shoulder. Like, hey, let me holler at you for a bit, you know, and you go off to the side and you had that, you had that kind of conversation, you know? Um, and so because I didn't have that strength to walk away from it, I did everything that I possibly could to sabotage it. You know, because I wasn't happy. So, um, so in doing so, um, it became a thing of where it was just like, hey, you know, um, I pushed her to a breaking to a breaking point, and ultimately she filed for divorce, and I was okay with it. You know, like, that's the thing. Like it wasn't, it was no resistance. You know, it was like, whoo, okay, good, finally, we can move to this. You know, and here we are. I know you can't speak on all men, but is is that something y'all do? Because I feel like I've been put in that position. Like, are you just waiting for me to be like, I don't want to deal with you no more? Yes. I've, yeah. I've seen this happen before. And I've I've seen men admit this, that they were they will do things to get the woman to, like, break up with them. Because, you know, they just didn't. Well, to be quite frankly, they just didn't have the courage to do it on their own. Yeah. It has yeah. happened. But I think also, I think it's a... It's, uh, I think in, in some situations, and again, I, I will say, say in mine, I think it's easier to accept that if, if, a, if a relationship does end, the question is going to be, well, what do he do? Mm -hmm. yeah. It's never what, what did she do? Mm -hmm. it's, it's, well, what did he do? Well, girl, did he cheat? You know, did you find out on something? Da, da, was he doing like it's all this plethora and this laundry list of everything that that we could have done? When in essence, it's just like you know, to sit there and say, "Well, hey, I just I wasn't feeling love when I got home," you know, because now I have to explain that. Well, now I have to explain like, well, well why weren't you? What well, what was it that that you did? It, it becomes a thing of where now I have to try to sit here and explain too much to too many people as into what it is that I'm feeling. You know, I, Von, and, Von and I had that conversation where it's like, you know, there's a there's a certain level of grace that that as a man that I see that women get, like when y'all do go through through your stuff, like there's a certain level of grace that's given. In a sense of like, okay, well, hey, we for, from a from a society standpoint, we got to a point. If I mean, for me, I mean, I grew up in the, I was born in the seventies, grew up eighties, nineties, so it was like, okay, oh, well, it's that time of the month. That's an instant thing of where, hey, we back off away from because that's and that's all that it takes to say that, hey, oh, she's ha having some 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 woman things, and we instantly back off, and you're given that space to go ahead and deal with whatever it is that you. He did need to deal with men. On the other hand, we could have walked in crying and whatnot. So be like, "Oh, well, here go a tissue," or "You be alright, just you know." But I, we still need X, Y, and Z done. We don't get given that 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 grace. So it's one of those things where we show the those and we keep it moving. So in that, it's like, okay, I don't want to have to go through the hassle of trying to explain to anybody about how it is that I'm feeling within the course of this relationship because I'm still trying to process that information even for myself. So it just makes more sense to be like, all right, well, effort. I'm just gonna go ahead and sabotage it. 
that's the illogical thinking in our head. I'm not saying that it's right. It's just the thought, the way that we go, go with our thought process sometimes. Do you think if you could go back, because I understand sometimes people just don't work out. Like this wasn't the person that you're supposed to go with the next chapter with. Mm -hmm. But do you think if you went back, especially, I don't know, this whole like, it sounds like something wasn't happening. But I also feel like sometimes people don't all also take ownership for certain things. Mm -hmm. Like maybe she wasn't, you weren't feeling loved but maybe you weren't doing anything to provide that opening as well. Like, so, do you think there could be things that you could go back? Like if I could do this and this, maybe we would have been good. So funny that you would ask that question. Cause I was literally just having this conversation yesterday. Um, could it could have gone back? Sure. Um, would it have made things differently? No. Um, simply because what I recognized even for myself, and I actually did call my ex and I apologized to her and I said, I need to apologize to you. And she said, what? I said, because I didn't give you all of me. I came into the relationship not giving you all of me. So it's not, so it's not a surprise that for, for me that things went the way that they, that, that they went because I didn't have all of me to give because there were still things for me that happened in my past that I had not processed, you know? Okay. So, so recognizing that, that, that when you, when you start to sit down and really unpack yourself, it's, e it becomes easier to then take accountability for what it is that, that, that you did do, you know? Um, but I can also say that in the course of when we, when we were doing couples therapy, um, we had to do this uh, this whole test and it was no it was just simply just circling numbers right and and the therapist came back and um you know gave the his uh prognosis based off the what is it the test showed and everything and i remember when we walked out of that because we would always go and get something to eat afterward and she said well how did you feel about today's session and i sat there and i, and I said honestly she said yes and i wish we would have had him for premarital counseling and she said why i said because we wouldn't have gotten married what it was that what it was that that test revealed for both she and I was was the was the green light of knowing that hey, this was going to happen eventually, you know, because the reality was that it never should have happened at all, and 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 we knew it because we were supposed to get married in '09 and we we postponed it because we were unsure, and we ended up moving forward with it anyway and got and made it happen in 2010, but. The reality was is that if any time if you get to the point of where it is that you have to postpone it because you're unsure, you know, then you really need to stop and take take time to look at that, you know. And unfortunately, we didn't really take as deep of a look at it at the time when we postponed, you know, and we moved forward with it anyway. So, do you think you move forward for yourself or for others? Because I know, especially with like a wedding. Sometimes it's more people involved than just the two people getting married. Like, did you feel like you have the expectations? Because, like, your son is 17, so he was born before then. Was mm -hmm. he born before then? Mm -hmm. yeah, he was born before then. Yeah. Like, do you think, like, maybe that added to, like, we should just go ahead and get married? Uh, part of it was that that some of that played a part because, because we were in a um, – it was important for me to – try to because again we, we we try to when we talk about breaking generational curses it was like okay i'm trying to show him really how it is that life could be when it is that you are a family man you know and you're doing it correctly and you're you know handling your responsibilities and things of that nature um so part of that that part some of that played played a part in it um and honestly it was just that that was it was just it seemed right based on the information to seem like okay well hey let's go down this path because it just seemed like the right thing to do based on the information that you had about yourself you know and the person at that time um and then as they say shit happens you know and so so yeah Miss Juan, are you married i'm sorry what are you married no i'm not okay that's okay i'm not either Neither am I. Me either. Neither am I. None, none of us are. <laughs> no. <laughs> but I did. I said to someone jokingly, you know, because it's a, it's it's a 
it's a, it's just a reality and I, I make light of it. Um, but I said jokingly, I was like, yeah, I said, well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm getting ready to turn 46 and I'm a statistic, you know, I got a baby mama and, a, and an ex-wife, you know, now I just need a young 20 some year old girlfriend to, you know, <laughs> bring it all full circle, you know, that? no, no, My six, that's, that's a lot. No. I don't know. I have an age difference. Too. <laughs> I can go older. I don't know if I can go younger. Yeah, no, I, I say that jokingly. Like, no, I, I, there is nothing that I could ever have in common with a twenty-seven-year-old. Anything, like, yeah, no. I mean, unless stop giving me that. Like, I mean, unless we, we're not going down that line. That line, mm -hmm. you know. But um, <laughs> let me say this: relationship-wise, there is nothing that I could have in common with a twenty. I'm like, okay, just say. Like, <laughs> I say that way. Relationship wise, there was nothing I could do with a twenty something year old old female. No. Hey, oh. Now go to Florida, you know, so as you suggested earlier, if I go down to Florida, you know, mm -hmm. and I get myself in a strip club or something, that's something totally different. Okay. Okay. So we we looking, but we're not keeping. No, it, am I looking? You don't but you don't know that. Like you don't you don't know that. Like what? twenty something year old can blow your damn mind and your pension. Okay. Mm -hmm. So nah. mm -mm. again, <laughs> you don't know that. Look, look no, she look, I look, she go to brain, but I'm not losing my pension. No. <laughs> that's, that's, that's not happening. Nope. Nope. I refuse. Isn't it funny now that you're at a point now you be like, what's your pension plan look like? Like, what's your health care benefits? Like that's where like I'm, that that has been such that a is an important that, question. That's where my shift has been. Be like, so are you on blood pressure meds? Like, what is like what was your last <laughs> like that is where literally I'm at because I'm like, mm, if you it's want to like, walking down the street and you heavy breathing on a block, so yeah. I th this ain't gonna work. Like mm -hmm. It's I'm, a not real be your, I'm not trying to be your nurse. But I also noticed when, there's a lot of I I don't want to say discarded people, um, but I've noticed that especially in my field of work, there are men in their late 40s, early 50s, a lot of health problems, high blood pressure, now epileptic due to like drug use, not taking care of yourself, mm -hmm. um, bad diet, just mm -hmm. many many years of not fully taking care of you. And because you fucked around and you weren't fucked being with the other people, people you don't fuck with you no more. <laughs> right. So and now I feel sorry for you. Like, no, you spent your mm -hmm. you spent your teens, your twenties, your thirties, forties being a fucking hell raiser. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden your fifties is like, oh, well, you know, I've always wanted you, I've always loved you. Yeah, Never. but I think that's all to somebody else. Cause this thing right here in this two piece, she about to go down here to what you say, Cabo? She about to go down here to Cabo <laughs> and motherfucker kick it like no. Yeah. Uh -huh. You you see you you seen that song over there, the Betty who you know Betty with the fat ass who you thought was the best thing smoking. Gone over there, like that's that's what you wanted. So you know, and as they say, in life you make decisions. But you know what, Miss Vaughn, that light is hitting you really good right now. You're I looking know, right? <laughs> I'm like, yo, I'm I'm looking at that. You look good. Like, again, I understand. Like, I did. I wash my face and everything. Don't get me wrong. But the way that this, like, yo. So, Fleming, let me just tell you if we doing anything, what is it like 8 a.m.? We may have to do like 8 a.m. Because the way that this thing got, you know, a sis look good. It's giving. Yeah, it's really giving. Look, it really does. Look, I did it this morning for for the here, but usually I'm not up until about 20 minutes from now. So, you know. Look at all these fine, black, beautiful people. How y'all doing? Morning, DC. Morning. 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 So I'm, I'm going to try to uh, still continue to do my part, but I want to thank y'all for being a part of this. I keep saying that, but I can't thank people enough. Uh, I'm Ron. If you need to take a break, I can just uh, hang out in the background. I won't be on camera. But I will be here. Um, but I got some supervisor duties to do as a black man. I get to supervise people. That is the greatest thing on earth. I got white people working for me. <laughs> we're <laughs> good right you. now, DT. Huh? Um, we're good right now. We are thugging it out. They're still here from seven. I'm so, so happy. 
Um, it's a good conversation. Father Tina joined it us. Really is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know, right? I'm amazing. You didn't even know, right? I didn't even find it out. I'm finding out. <laughs> um, but the fun part is, I don't even. I was. I'll send a message. What I was saying, but the time really flew by. And when can I come on y'all show? I want to come. I don't got, again, we can talk about no, me not having a dad. No, 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 we, we don't even have to worry about that. So if you just, I just need your info. Mm -hmm. And we are actually scheduling again right now for our season four. So yes, ma'am, this, mm -hmm. we will get that contact information. And come on, come come play with us. I'm excited. Yeah, yeah. Come, play with us. come on, come, come play with us. Yeah. Come. Oh, but y'all, my friend, my best friend. Oh, yeah. Friend, <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, we have spent like 20 minutes just talking <laughs> like you have not even been here so let I'm, me say i am so sorry um, it's fine it's fine <laughs> i just was waiting for the you know perfect time to you know jump in jump in right it's like okay yeah guys. yeah y'all ain't right <laughs> but y'all my friend is a virgin right now he's a podcast virgin all the way from oh, the other side. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I was, I was, I was about sorry. to say, wait a minute. Like, wait wait a minute. You, you, like, you, you are coming up here telling these lies. <laughs> we didn't rehearse this. This is not what we rehearsed. <laughs> <laughs> well, your personal information out there, like, yeah. 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 I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. Hey, <laughs> let, let me fix that. This is his first podcast, okay. um, but yes. it's amazing because he's making history with us. We are beating the record today, y'all. We've been here for one day, fourteen hours, fifty-two minutes. We still going. I see. I see. Yeah. Yeah, I see. It's amazing. Um, what's the what's also, the record? What's what's the record? Uh, the out the record right now is forty five hours, whatever that math is with that. Um, okay. so we're going straight to forty eight. But also, since this has been an amazing experience, we kind of decided, I guess, in the middle of the night, that we we're going to keep doing this annually. So we're going to yeah, do a it lot, again a next lot, a lot year. A lot of people were uh, sleep drunk and was like, you know what, this is a good idea. Let's like, do this like, every this year. Yeah, like there was a lot of um kidnap victims that have been on here. Um, that we held hostage to do this with us, and it was like, This is so much fun, let's do this every year! Yay, right? And it feels good, it's legit felt like being nine again at your grandmama house with your cousin, like, like, it's, <laughs> it's been nothing but positivity. Nothing but love, and I love how black creators are coming together doing something good. Absolutely, absolutely. That part, yay! And Roz with us. See, see, yeah. he comes. Hey, do you sleep, sleep, brother? Like, I'm at work, and I know, like, see, Martin Luther had a king, had a dream. I got bills, so that's why I'm at work. I was supposed to be <laughs> off today, but the way my paycheck was set up, I was like, they gotta pay me like $33 an hour for all this overtime, so I was like, I'm not missing that. But I'm still gonna be we still gonna be the record, and there's a whole bunch. Yeah, big ass sleepover that some of y'all I don't want back because some of y'all just put your feet on the couch. There was uh, going to the fridge, drinking all the juice, leaving the fridge open. Um, uh, I need to move this comment. So, Jordan, <laughs> this is your first podcast ever. I'm sorry. Uh, yep. Yes. Yeah. So you I'm just jumped off the porch was like, I'm going well, for history. Forget uh, being on the first episode. I'm going for history. I well, I, for I, have, I have participated in one, but it just didn't air. It was just like a, just a recording. Oh, so it was right. like, yeah, it was just like talking about my experience in China, but he didn't like air it or anything. So it was just oh. like a, like an interview type thing. Okay. But this is like live, you know, this is. My first time doing something like this. Well, welcome. Um, if you stay Thank long you. enough, you're gonna meet a lot of people who you're gonna be like, man, y'all weird. Um but you love it. <laughs> I, I do. Been, no, I'm not I've gonna been lie. Watching it. I'm not I've gonna been lie. Watching it. This has been great. I uh, appreciate you for coming. I'm glad we can I'm not gonna say that because it just sounds weird, but I'm glad we could be your first real podcast. Um, <laughs> yeah, but then that just sounds weird for another grown man to tell another grown man that's so just not gonna do that live. Um, but no, you jumped off the porch and, and came to a great event. Um, I'm gonna get out y'all way so y'all can finish talking, but I love the conversation, so I felt like I, I was compelled. But yes, this is 
uh, been beautiful. Thank you, Amra, for um, um, bringing this to the forefront. I'm glad we was able to do this. A lot of people have been involved. Um, I think it's been like 36 hours of nonstop content created just partying. It's been one yeah. big party and weekend. Um, it's been a vibe. Networking, uh, so many people like, oh man, I can't work with work with this person, I can't work with work with that person. I never even know that person, but I can't wait to work with them either. So it's been a lot of connections being made, a lot of uh placemats being put down on other people's table. So it's been a great thing. Good. Yes, we all eaten. But Jorel, I love how you mentioned China. Cause y'all, my friend, let me tell you about my friend. So <laughs> My friend teach the babies English um, in another country. He's been to multiple countries doing it. Okay. You know, living in other countries as a black man has been very interesting. Jordan, when the last time you lived in the States? How long have you been gone? Uh, right. Um, se September, <laughs> will be, September will be four years. Okay. I, I left, yeah, I left September 2019. Okay, okay. but here's, let's say, he came back for a second, then he left. I'm about to say, when I was pregnant with was, Ava, you were in China. That was nine years ago. Yeah, yeah, but I was on vacation. That was, okay, that cool. was me on vacation. I can't True. make it. That, I love it. And that was, was I had been in China for a year before I came to the baby shower. I was already there a year. Y'all, isn't so, that my friend came all the way from China for my baby shower? Ain't that nice? That's a friend. That's a friend. So <laughs> So how's life in China? Well, I'm not there anymore, but I will say I was there from 2012 until 2015. Okay. And those were like the golden years mm -hmm. to be like a foreigner in China okay. and to be a black person in China. It was the community was so strong there. Um, mm -hmm. I, we all had, and like the things I'm saying now, this is what multiple people have said. Like while I was living in in Shanghai, like we feel like black people were closer in China than they are in the states. Mm. You know, when it when it comes to support, sure. when it comes to you know people being genuine, like it was just stronger there. And I think it was because we were all put in this environment that was unknown to us, so it kind of promoted that. Mm -hmm. You know, because you you know, you go to another country, you're gonna you you're gonna feel alone and confused right. and right. unsure. You know, and you got all these people who are feeling the same feelings, right. and but but still are trying to be their normal selves. So, mm -hmm. you know, we partied, we ate good, we traveled together good. You know, we had all of these experiences together. And if you're like an artist or entertainer or anything, like it's the perfect practice field you know because they always have open mic nights you can even book to perform at like a like a legit jazz club you know they have all of that people are doing you know like you know movies and documentaries like just mm -hmm. practicing over there and networking okay so it was um back in those days it was the golden time to be there sure. Sure. then covid <laughs> hit and you know right. i ain't planning i ain't planning on going back over there for another 10 years Gotcha. Cause <laughs> they they own some other shit over there. Like, I still have friends there, mm -hmm. and this was just recently. Let's see, this was like maybe May June of last year. Um, you could go to a place like IKEA if they suspect a case of COVID inside of the store, mm -hmm. they'll just shut it down, and you're wow. just stuck in IKEA until they figure out. You know, if there if there is a case or not, you can be there for hours. Wow. You know, and wow. you just have to deal with it. And I'm just like, I can't go over there now. Right. Because <laughs> I'll always be thinking I'm in the mall, like, you know, they can just shut this place down and I can be here for hours. I don't want to go over there with that mentality. Right. I don't enjoy right. myself. So I said, see y'all in 10 years when it COVID is like the common cold or something. <laughs> we're getting stuck in an IKEA bad though. I'm trying to think. We'd be we're getting stuck in an IKEA be that bad. I mean, I, you got beds, you got them good ass meatballs, you know. I mean, but you know what? Do you want to eat though? Mm -hmm. I'm just right. saying. Like, but, you, but you know what? Chinese people they kind of get a like they go to IKEA just to like sleep on the beds to take a nap. 
So you can't even, you ain't gonna be able to go to the bed. It's gonna be Chinese people already there. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Look. Yeah, they ain't gonna beat you to the beds. Go ahead and hit this futon. Got it. Futon chair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because the beds, they're going to be occupied. Got you, got you. But it was just a, like the best way I can describe it. It was just very enriching to have that experience. Sure. You know? And it was um, one of my favorite ones. I've done it twice. I've lived in Dubai as well, but I really didn't. I didn't like, well, I don't like Dubai as much as I like China, my experience in China. But, um, you know, I'm maintaining Okay. Who I keep saying this. Dubai is like everybody trying to go to Dubai. Like, yeah, yeah. Because I was about to say, great. I was just about to say, like, I, I feel like if we say that too much around black folks, like somebody gonna get mad. You might catch a bottle over the head or something. Because black folks <laughs> swear Dubai is like the place to go to. And honestly, with so, so many other, I have no. I think because I've seen people do it so much, like I have no interest. And going to Dubai, like what's whatsoever, it's like all right, well, I'm gonna go someplace. It's you know, it's perfect for for vacation. Mm -hmm. But living in Dubai is a whole different ball game. Okay. But okay. I mean, it's it's beautiful. It's so much stuff to do here. It's super expensive, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, yeah, that's it. Right. It's yeah. Okay. So, so outside of China and Dubai, where else have you been? Um, well, I've traveled to 21 countries. Okay. Um, you know, wherever I'm living at, for example, when I was living in China, I'll, I traveled through Southeast Asia. These are countries that are really, really close and cheap, right. you know, to travel to. And then when I moved to Dubai, I just, you know, um, traveled to places in the Middle East. I've been to Saudi Arabia. Um, okay. I've also been to Egypt too, and you know I'm still exploring this side of the world. So mm -hmm. um, that's what that's how I usually travel. Okay. okay. Well, cool. Mm -hmm. you, Just to let you know, this summer my friend will be working on his first documentary. Yeah, I'm boosting my friend up because he's not. <laughs> <laughs> now I gotta do it. Now I gotta do it. Right. Like, yeah, but yeah, I, feel like I, now I have to do it. Yes, I am planning a trip to South Africa um, because I work with a lot of South African teachers. Like over in the Middle East, there's lots of South Africans here teaching. And um, I said, I should just go to South Africa and just like go to their cities and just wild out with them. Um, so I'm planning a trip there this summer. And I'm just like, well, everyone, I've been traveling for a long time now, and people are just like, why don't you do, like, you know, videos and stuff like that? And it's just like, I really wasn't motivated to because when I travel places, I really try to, like, live in the moment and just right. enjoy the experience, you know? And now that I've been doing it for so long, I'm just like, well, you know, let's let's try this and see how far it goes. So yeah, because you got too much, man. Like, come on, like that's a they look. Yeah, I need to be sharing this, yeah, you know. Yeah. So I said I'm gonna do it when I go to South Africa. The only thing is, it'll be winter time in mm -hmm. South Africa in the summer, so that will be that will be something interesting to see mm -hmm. how it is in the winter time. Right. So um, I'm looking forward to it though. Okay. Cool. Cool. Yeah, I'm not, yeah, look, give us these life hacks, man. Come on now, look. Like I was saying earlier, my son about to be 18. I'm about to be just, just me, no other responsibility. I mean, he's he being on his own. So I'm, I'm trying to jet out and go someplace. Let's make it happen. That's what's up. Yeah, yeah. Like it's and it's nothing. Like I saw a status on Facebook, and all thanks to Amron for like doing the footwork. She actually, you know, looked into some like you know, crew people for me that's in South Africa and pricing it and all that stuff, you know. So okay. I have to shout out her for doing that because I ain't know where to look, where to start. So, uh, but okay. like traveling <laughs> and like partying in other countries is just like, it's such a unique experience, you know. You have to experience that. Yeah. I'm glad you said that, Jordell, because I'm not going to lie. I be scared. I am concerned. I'm afraid they are going to steal my friend's organs and I'm never going to see him again. So <laughs> <laughs> I continuously check up randomly as we communicate on WhatsApp because you good? You good over there? 
Well, like, I'm, I'm worried about y'all because human trafficking is on the rise in the USA. True. Very true. Like never before, yeah. you know? So, shoot, I'm worried about y'all. <laughs> 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 but especially as far as because you he just lives his life I love my friend my friend is fearless um <laughs> do you feel as if like you while you're out do you ever feel like you have to watch your back extra because when I when, ask you extra questions like how you know these people you hanging out with you give me weird responses like I don't know <laughs> it'd be random I just really go with the flow I meet somebody in the mall start talking to them and oh we're about to go check out this restaurant let's go you know I, I mean that's just that's just my personality if but if I feel if I feel good in my spirit like like this is good they're taking me to a public place uh, you know other people can see me it's going to be security and all that stuff I'll go but um wait what, what, what was the question <laughs> oh, oh oh okay okay <laughs> So <laughs> when I first when I first moved to China, I felt like that. I just because it was everything was just new, and it's a uh, it's a mental thing because okay. that's this is what you have to do in the U.S. When you move to these places like China, when I was when I first moved to China, the teachers were from South Africa, um, Australia, the U.K. And I didn't realize that all of these places, like, you couldn't have, like, a personal gun. Like, you can't go to a shop and just buy a gun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's just, like, kind of, it's something sort of unique mm -hmm. to the U.S. So, in China, you only see, like, the cops with guns. And with that, you see, like, the ranking cops. Like, the new cop or the new to, like, four-year cop doesn't have a gun. And so that changed my whole perspective of just like my safety. You know, I'm like, well, if somebody try to, you know, harm me, it's going to be with like a, a knife, a baseball bat, something like that, something I can, you know, I have a chance with. So once I got comfortable, um, I really didn't feel the need to like look over my back or anything like that. It's because it's really, it's a different ball game like in these countries when it comes to safety. I mean, there are places like in Shanghai that I wouldn't even go because I don't know they're there. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't have a reason to go over there. So a lot of the places that I went and I explored to, I knew something was there or someone was there, like a neighborhood where friends were staying at. Like this was my type of exploring, you know? So I never really felt like unsafe to the point where I felt like, okay, there was one time, one time, <laughs> one time, but it wasn't in China. It was, um, we had, we had, you remember when I went to India, I went to yeah. India and we all had different flight itineraries. So I landed at like one in the morning and Three of my friends were already in another city called Jaipur, and we were going to meet in Agra, where the Taj Mahal is. So she arranged a driver for me. He came and picked me up at one. And strike one, he was asking for money. And she told me, she was like, don't pay him. We've already paid him for your cut plus the tip. He asked me for money, and I was like, okay, here we go. So keep in mind, it's 1 a.m. And so I look off into the distance, and I see, like, this huge, like, well-lit highway. So I'm like, okay, this is cool. And we go the opposite direction, what looks like Texas no, Chainsaw Massacre. No, sir. And I was just like, oh, this is it. <laughs> I was like, oh, this is it. And then it like, it's like barren land. It's like you see people like have little campfires and stuff, but it's like everything is just bare. And then he stopped at like this little this little house and I was like he was like I have to go pay a bill and I was like oh my god he gonna somebody gonna come out here and drag me out this van and it's I'm gonna see all my friends tied up and this is it but he was in there for like 10 minutes he came out and we kept driving and by this time the sun was uh, rising and it was like 6 37 o'clock and then we were pulling into my hotel that was the only time I felt unsure of the situation because it was it was in the middle of the night and I didn't know where we were going. Mm. So 
But when I when we got when I got there, my friends hadn't come from Jaipur. I checked into the hotel and then I went across the street and I ate breakfast and I was meeting people. And my friends came in and they were laughing at me. And I'm like, why y'all laughing? And they were like, because Dana told us she was like, when we see Jordell, he's probably already going to be like talking to people and making friends and connections. And this is exactly what they walked into. But other than that, because of the, I mean, people not being able to buy, like buying own guns like that, like your mentality changes when it comes to the safety. I mean, you still have to be careful, but you don't, it's not to the point where you feel like you constantly have to look over your back. Even here in the Middle East, like, you know, Dubai has been, was voted last year for the safest country in the world for women. I didn't know that. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm still scared. <laughs> yeah, terrified. Okay, but yeah, yeah, it's just. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Jordell. But no, it's just. I mean, you know, some people feel more comfortable being in groups, and that's fine. Um, for me, as long as I got the internet, I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's that's, that's, that's it's important. It's right. Important. It is very important. Right. But I have seen Amron some like locations like on WhatsApp, like I'm here just yep. in case anything happens. Cause it was, you know, it was it, in first it was it, looking a little sketchy, <laughs> but for the most part, I feel very safe, you know? Good. Good. Well, it's been great meeting you. I'm actually going to slide out too. I got some stuff to go take care of, but this has been great for having us on. Um, Make sure you contact us. I will. Also, be looking from an email from me. We'll have everyone's socials, emails to collaborate and again and continue to sleep over at grandma's house. I know, right? Socials? <laughs> social, social, social security number? Yeah, we collecting those. I forgot to tell y'all in the uh, <laughs> fine print. Just look, in case, because I don't want to work look. every day. And since you already traveling all over the world and doing documentaries, I need George twice. <laughs> hey, text time is coming up, you know. So. Yeah, text time is coming up, and I need, uh, I need to be claimed as a dependent on somebody's stuff. I get it. I get it. I get it. Thank all you. Right. Thank you. All right, y'all. See y'all. Nice right. to meet you. Same here. Right. Jordell. Okay, so Christy, this is my best hey. friend. Hey, Christy. Hey, how you doing? Jordel, hey, this you? is Christy. Did you see any of Ho on the Go? Did you see any of our sections with that? I saw the name. <laughs> I, I can't, because it was like I was in and out, in and out, in and out. And it was like, there was so many topics y'all were talking about. I remember mm -hmm. um, somebody talking about some red pubes. Was that was that on the hole in the go? Some what? No, that was Annie. That was Annie. Um, she was talking about red pubes. Yeah, making sure it matches the carpet, matches the drapes. I'm not even sure why we were talking about that. Um, <laughs> you won't have to worry about it if you have hardwood floors. That's all I'm saying. Uh, <laughs> but it's only nine o'clock in, in the morning. <laughs> I'm on the East Coast. It's only nine o'clock in the morning on a Monday, so we ain't gonna go there yet. <laughs> but it's. But Christy, this is my best friend, Jordell. Nice to meet um, you. Nice to meet he's you. He's amazing. He's known me forever. Oh, and Jordell, I gotta get so Christy can do this trick with her with her fangs where she can make someone where she can make a man come in 30 seconds. Oh. Yeah, 30. Three wow. hours. Three I hours. use my powers for good and not for evil now. So <laughs> gross, you know. It's growth. It's growth. Yeah. That's um amazing. I try not to do that, but you know, if I'm tired, I'm not fucking feeling it. You know, I'll give you like so 30 minutes to me is an insult. Let's just start there. I hear like we went about the average of you have to clarify that. So 30 minutes of head is an insult. I feel like yes, because that, for me that's what we said. <laughs> for me, it's an act of appreciation. And it, it shows appreciation. Sorry, I was trying to read the comment. I still don't big butt whatever. Okay. Yeah, that's basically Ross saying he remember he only do two minutes and that's it. Oh yeah, whatever. And we ain't <laughs> even including him. So <laughs> for me, number one, it's a standard for foreplay. So 
But for me, if a guy does not give head, his ass is getting left on red. It's in the whole handbook. There's a reason for that. Okay. But for me, I have a, what I like to call service mindset. So for me, that's an act of appreciation that I show my partner. So 30 minutes wouldn't be nothing for me. My longest is two hours. And I've been trying to break that. But it's hard mm -hmm. to build somebody up to last that long, man. It really mm -hmm. is. It's I'm out. My jaws would be swollen. No. 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 <laughs> Way too long. Way too long. I, I can't hang. Mm -mm. I'm out. Tap me out. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not like you were like literally fully sucking the whole time. You're like doing stuff around that. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like with the act of oral sex, it's usually my longest is two hours. So I'm proud of that, but I want to beat it. I tried to find a Guinness Book of World Records for the longest blowjob, but I couldn't find it. Just like the most consecutive. And I was like, I'm not trying to break that record. I'm a hoe, not a slut. Don't so, do that. Don't do that. I'm not doing that. This is a gift. This is like golden throat. There's like a nine pack here. So like, this is a gift. I'm not just like lining dudes up. Like, come on, we're going to break this record. We're going to make my mother proud today. You know? That's funny you said golden throat because in the Arabic culture, if you have the golden throat, that means that you can sing very well. So you can, and I didn't know this when I moved here. So you can imagine the response <laughs> they got from me when they referred to someone as to having the golden throat. I had to like break that down. Wait, that means something different in English. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> very, 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 just slide on my website. And you're like, yes. this is what it means in America. Yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah. language barrier. So my whole on the go podcast teaches people how to please and be pleasing through sexual and self empowerment, sexual mm -hmm. freedom and self empowerment. So a lot of people get that misconstrued because they think my book is all about sex. It's not. No. <laughs> it's not. I don't sit there and say, hey, if you lick here and you twist here and you do this in consecutive motion, you got that girl. Because it's not my job to teach people how to fuck. That's okay. your job. Okay. Because number one, I could teach you to I'm blue in the face, but everybody is different. Some techniques work for some that don't work for others. Okay. Mm -hmm. Period. But what I encourage with my podcast, what I try to teach people is to be more honest and open about sex, not only with your, you know, f not family, because that's just weird, but like your friends, yeah. you know, in mm -hmm. your friend circle, but also with your children. It's important. Did you know that the, um, from the ages of nine to 13 is when boys start watching porn, according to, Research studies, yeah. nine. My son is 10. Thankfully, no stiff socks have been found in my house. But <laughs> it's important to talk about sex, especially when it comes to, let's say, masturbation, pornography. Porn is as addicting as cocaine and hampers abilities in the bedroom, mostly for men. <laughs> Actually, all for men. Because the problem is when you're using stuff like that every single time you need release, you know, you're now dependent on that and once yeah. you finish the hub as i like to call it you kind of branch into some weird stuff all right i'm only 31 and i've already been branched into some weird stuff all right so i know it's like standard around the board but once you start branching out you're going to start getting more aggressive in the bedroom because you tend to forget that that is just a fantasy it's not reality yeah yeah and it, it, there was like a whole section that I did because I had an episode of my show called Handyman where I talked about masturbation and pornography just because, again, I think it's important because um, my favorite thing to do is to fuck myself. I'm a favorite person to fuck, you know? So it's important mm -hmm. to tell people about masturbation because it's frowned upon. You know, if my friend calls me, I'm in the middle of something, I'm like, bitch, I'm in the middle of something. You need to stop calling me. Like from this time to this time, I need about 37 minutes. <laughs> Don't call me. So this video has another 22 minutes left. Do not call me. He said right. I was like 10 myself. See, yeah, no. I was I like 11 or I think with one, you know what? As, honestly, I'm going to be completely honest with you. Ooh. I did not masturbate till I was at least like 19. Like, I, I this is going to sound, I ain't, I ain't know what I was doing. And no, I didn't I, know what I was doing either. I just didn't. <laughs> um, but I tried anyway. <laughs> Exploration <laughs> station. <laughs> like, I think sometimes, especially, it's it's seen as like dirty. I think like with men, it's more something that's normal with women. Like you don't do that. And I don't understand what that is because we're all sexual beings. I think it's corny. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't. I'm. Yeah. 
Nope. I don't know. I grew up in a uh, weird neighborhood where girls was fast, so I was like, uh... Well, I was punching, but I wasn't like... I didn't touch myself. No. I, don't know I mean, I did. did. Well, I didn't know what I was doing, but I was doing it anyway. You know? I, I found out by accident. I was uh went to go use the bathroom and was shaking. You know how you're supposed to shake? There's like more than three shakes. You're playing with yourself? Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> 20 minutes later, <laughs> several <Yeah>. napkins. <laughs> Yeah, um, I think for men, men just masturbate just because. Women tend to do it to relieve some kind of stress or emotion. Mm -hmm. um, men do it, they're like, well, I just went down to scratch my balls and fuck it. And then you just start masturbating. Like, men never have a reason to masturbate. If you give a man, a man two pencils and a popsicle stick and a rubber band, they will find a way to fuck it. Like, they really will. <laughs> they really will. Then we'll guy the shit out of it. You know? Women are like, ah, no, I'm not sticking that. No, that's serious that. because yeah. guys in jails will like take a sock and a rubber glove and petroleum jelly, and it's called a fifi. Don't ask me how I know this. Fifi. Like, you know, you every day. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> I learned something today. Yay! I got, like, me too. People I know in my lifetime, and it was like, yeah, bro. I was like, don't ever, please, don't ever tell me that again. Um, and I, all I know is if I'm missing rubber gloves and socks and petroleum jelly, uh, you revert it back to your prison days and you need to get the hell out because um, we're not about to have all my good tube socks and, and good gloves missing because you want to play MacGyver instead of getting a woman. Where did he get a woman in jail? Now, he, out, he was free. He was at the mm. house doing this deal. Hey, man, old habits die uh, hard. Yeah, you yeah. better die hard with your own socks. <laughs> I never understood the whole fucking socks thing, honestly. Um, but I'm not a guy, so whatever. I mean, for uh, me I'm to dial back to what nothing about that to what she said because you said you didn't do any of that until you were basically an adult, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm gonna be me, honest with you. Even personally, what? I still don't like to be like digitally stimulated. Like I'm not. Don't quit rubbing me. Um, I just that's not a thing for me. That's a trauma response. <laughs> I don't know. It is. It's a trauma response. It might be, but um, so I think I was 20 because that's when I bought my first vibrator. Um, and I bought it myself. So, I so don't... four weeks later, when she finally left the house again, <laughs> <laughs> it it was amazing. It was amazing. Yeah, mm -hmm. I I um hold up, you home smashing you a filthy MacGyver though. What? Yeah, he's he's back. He's talking about DC and his Fifi. Well, not his Fifi. His oh, okay, okay. Other person's Fifi. <laughs> I just oh, need to know I said I Fifi. was saying that some dudes, you know, what I'm saying some like people in general. Mm -hmm. When you're trying to find a way to fill a means, you start being real creative to be able to figure out how to get some stuff done. And she was saying, you give a dude popsicles and a stick, and find a way to fuck. I was like, yeah, that is true because some people will find. Like even girls, I've seen some girls use some stuff that you'd be like, that is not supposed to be used like that. Shower yep. heads. Before yep. shower heads became popular. Stop possible. saying that. There are very rare women that that do that with shower heads, okay? I'm that saying those are Those are supposed to be back massages. Now all of a sudden they flying off the shelves with vibrators. It wasn't even meant for that. Like people will find stuff that's not meant for pleasure to make pleasure out of it. If a girl is fucking a shower head, you have no chance of making her come. Just like, understand. You got the fucking nine thousand. Um, that uh, shit is like writer. fucking. Shower that hurt, yeah. man. That means her clit is desensitized, which means she was probably using the rose more than necessary. I won't even you touch that thing. Like roses. I'm, I'm telling you, that's my. I won't I, even I, buy I, it. I ordered a squirrel. I learned about a squirrel, Jordell. That's oh, the new yeah. thing. I'm about a squirrel. A squirrel. It literally looks like a squirrel, and it has a suction in the front, and then it has a tail you can shove up your hoo-ha. Oh, wow. I've never seen it before. <laughs> Fun times. Yeah. I don't know, I see, I don't do the suction things, because it's immediately going to desensitize your shit. We would literally look at a man like he was crazy if he fucked a vacuum cleaner, and y'all are out here fucking vacuuming vacuum cleaners, and we're supposed Wait, to be okay with it. With the, is that not what the flashlight thing is? Is that not the same thing? Fleshlight? No, it's a literal like looks like a vagina. It's a fake pussy. Is that what I didn't know what it was? Now so I seen one dude that I was impressed. I was like, I just want to buy this just to try it on somebody because it literally was like you hold it and it did everything. It moved. It did the suction. It was he just held it. And it was just like you could see it looked like a car wash. You know, like you go through a car wash, you could see your car going through. And it's getting washed by all the different machines. It was literally like that. I was like, damn, this shit is fucking impeccable. 
You know, married women should be investing in that all over the world. Never have a relationship problem again. No, they'll still find a way. Well, yeah. uh. well, that's because men are logical and women are emotional and the two don't mesh and neither understand that. So I'm trying to spread that information so people get that message, but we'll see. Maybe one day. Women are vindictive and emotional and petty. I can see petty. I don't think I'm vindictive. Not intentionally. Not intentionally. And it's it depends on you could be a situational vindictive bitch. We're all vindictive bitches, okay? <laughs> like I had a guy that I was seeing started talking to another girl. Now mind you, he wasn't mm -hmm. my boyfriend, but I'm crazy. So in my vindictive nature, I slid into her inbox as a woman to try to help her out, you know? Because they were together on Facebook. Meanwhile, <laughs> he was in my house two days before. So I'm like, clearly you're not. So vindictive like that. Women don't realize coming to another woman as a woman is vindictive. Mind your fucking business. Period. Even if it is you involved, mind your business. Don't, so, don't do that. Don't come keying to me. Cars, keying cars. Um, intentionally not doing something that you know you should do as a partner for your partner. Vindictive. Petty. Yeah. All women do it. It could be something as simple as not plugging in or unplugging a coffee pot before you go to sleep because you know he said it for the morning to be ready when he got up. Okay. Yeah. I can see that. Yeah. Women do that shit. Me, I rage. Like, women will, like, slam doors and, like, be mumbling under their breath and slide into the girl chat and run their mouth every time they get in a fight with their significant other. I just, like, rage clean. I don't... That's an, that's another thing um, that we also need to stop doing as people. Everybody does not need to be involved when something is wrong. Yo, because real shit. Because the thing is this. I don't like him anymore. If you tell me he cheating on you, he got three other girlfriends, he busts you in your eye, I don't like him. So when yep. you forgive him and go back, now what do we do? I love that you said that. Sorry, it's, I had to blow, blow my nose. <laughs> I think so that it's not fair. Like, don't don't put me involved. Like I understand everyone needs someone to vent to. Sometimes you just need to, you know, get things off your chest and share, get you a therapist. Don't include Preach. me if you don't want me to feel some type of way. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm saying. Here's the thing. Even with Facebook or social media in general, stop mm -hmm. putting your fucking relationship business on the internet. Now to say you're in a relationship or you got married or you had a kid. Cool. You know, like we need to know when the child was born because you posted 40 pictures every month up leading up to it. Like that's our child now. Like that's all of our child. Okay. We need to know every single second of every day what our child is doing. But when it comes to relationships, you're sitting here clowning your dude for messing up. And then you look like an idiot because two weeks later you're back with them. And these girls don't even take down the previous post. Like, no, he's going to see me talking shit. Yep. Like you look like an idiot because you took them back, you know, after running your mouth to so, like, stop. And they say not even in just a relationship aspect. Stop venting on Facebook. Facebook no one needs yeah. to know that business. And guess what? For these people that, that are venting, whether they're like an ex did them dirty or a friend did them dirty and they're venting on Facebook, you look bothered. And that's a mm -hmm. problem. Because now you look weak. If I get in an argument with somebody, I'm not going to say nothing. I'm just going to live my best life. Because guess what? They're going to see that I'm completely unfazed and unbothered. Whether I am or not is irrelevant. Because they're not going to see it anyway. You know? That's the point, Rob. We should not know all your business. You should have a private life. And I think social media should be used as something else. I'm going to be, oh, I'm glad I'm saying this because this bothers me too. I need to work on posting more. I'll be the first to say that. I need to work on marketing my oh. businesses more, marketing my podcast more. But you what I would, tutorial? <laughs> I would love it. But what I would. I have an issue sometimes where it's kind of like, what are you promoting? Like people that post themselves so much, I'm questioning what you're promoting. If you like Christy, if you're doing it for your OnlyFans or all that, that makes sense. Girl, make your money. But it's kind of like, I don't know. It's, it's like too many thirst traps. Like, what are we doing? Like, it's not, you know, look at me, save the world or, you know, love on my dog and my family or keep like a like a visual journal that's different certain some of these posts is kind of like almost with women what y'all selling what are we selling at this point it looks like an advertisement facts so here's the thing 
Number one, marketing. Know your audience. Let's start there. You can't have a business and you can't market or advertise anything unless you know who you're selling it to and what they want to see. That's where like studying and, you know, branding and marketing techniques come in. So as a side note for anybody watching and has no idea who I am, I have a business for social media management, branding, marketing, and advertising, and also podcast starter ups. So um, the most important thing you can do is, again, identify, just like you said, what are you selling? Mm -hmm. so for me, you won't see my business on my Facebook. I haven't even technically fully publicly launched my business. Everything I've done has been on the side or under, you know, because people went to my website and they're like, you do that? I'm like, yeah, you know, because right now what's most important for me is what I am working on, which is my mental health platform, my book, my podcast and my comedy. If I put a business out, it's going to get confusing on what the fuck it is that I do. It's already confusing enough, you know? The illusion mm -hmm. that dudes can fuck so they can cash out, can pop so they. Basically, what he's saying is, you know how kind of like, I know I I see men do this too. That I'd be like, oh, y'all broke. But like pretty much you're promoting your cash app every two days just because. But then you call yourself independent. You living off of your donations. You know, that's what he means by that. You're well, not that's independent. an assumption because I post my cash app from time to time. Like, hey, buy me a coffee. I'm not living off my cash app, but that's me five bucks, like, yeah, I got five dollars, you know, and I go buy <laughs> coffee with it, you know, but there's nothing wrong with posting your cash app. Let's start there, but make sure people that you are aware that they are now monitoring your cash app and your Venmo and your PayPal and all that shit for tax reasons. So under the table cash, if you're wheeling and dealing, if you catch my drift, because I know a lot of people were hustling using cash app to get their payments. Don't do that shit. You have to pay taxes on it. Um, so, Branding and marketing, here's the difference between the two, because a lot of people get confused. Branding describes your company or whatever it is that you have, okay? It also is consistent. This is something that does not change. Your marketing techniques will change. Your branding does not. Your brand, mm -hmm. again, is you. It's what you're selling, what you're offering, what you're doing. That is your brand. It creates an emotional attachment with your audience or, you know, your customers, fans, however you want to do it, if you're talking about podcasting. But it also encourages recognition and loyalty. So, for example, branding-wise, my podcast is called Hell on the Go. I named it Hell on the Go because I have a book called The Hell Handbook. I named my um, hashtag, which is most important for increasing your reach, increasing your recognition, and branding. Hashtags are fucking everything, literally. So create a hashtag that is literally unique to you and your brand. So for me, I have one, two, three, four that I put on every post that I make. One is CA Knubel, one is Knubel, one is Ho on the Go, and one is Ho Handbook. Those are my four. CA Knubel mm -hmm. is trademark, so nobody can use that anyway. Okay. And that's important too. I highly suggest if you plan on monetizing and moving forward with whatever you're doing, you either start an LLC or trademark your name stage wise. If you're doing stage music, comedy, things like that. Yeah. You got to put a $40 on the table again. That's right. Period. We not, we not fucking for $40 no more. Just throwing that out. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> he didn't say on my table. Right? He just said on the table. On the table. <laughs> that table. Hashtags are important. So is a trademark if you're going to use a certain name. Like C.A. Knubel for me, trademarked. Nobody can touch it. So the reason being is because if you see, it says C.A. Knubel on anything I do. So at any point in time, if somebody tries to do me dirty on like a recording or something like that, I could technically DMCA. There's more rules involved with that. So it's a shady gray area. We won't get into that now, but I could technically sue them if they steal my work because it's trademarked. Copyright okay. and trademarked. Um, just like my comedy, I put C.A. Knubel under everything, literally everything because it's trademarked. It protects me for branding wise. That is important. It's establishing who you are, what you're selling, what you do and who your fan base is. You need to know. As soon as you go to my page, you know that I'm a hoe because you either see a thirst trap or you'll see something that says something about my podcast, a hoe or, you know, something hoey that a hoe would post. You know, you know what my brand is. I have an OnlyFans for that reason. Do I post on there? Not really. But it's on brand for me to have one. 
So reputation ain't really a big deal for me. Um, and that's also because, God forbid, because I have sent nudes before I started doing my NDAs, they ever come out, it won't matter because it's on brand because I'm a hoe. You know what I'm saying? It can never come back to haunt me. So just a little side note, a little pro tip. Uh, marketing is just communicating your company's message. And that's just various ways. It could be through commercials. It could be through graphics. It could be posts, whatever you're doing. Um, it creates a need and it can vary and it drives your sales. So for marketing, this is you now pushing your product or podcast or we'll use product as a general term, but you guys get what I'm saying by that, right? I can use that as a general term. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to marketing, which is not the same as advertising, advertising is kind of like when you have a sign, you're like, here, buy this, buy this, buy this. Marketing is more like picking your select group that you want to sell to and making a plan and then going forward to advertise. It's kind of next. I know I figured, um, I'm trying to, I don't want to jump too many places at once because I tend, I have ADHD. So I tend to hop, 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 hop. And then people are like, what happened? Yeah, so for example, let's say somebody, cause this is like podcasting. So let's do podcasting. Okay. Mm. What I recommend, and I can pull it up too, cause I made a little, um, guide. Now, mind you, when I do these guides, this is based on either research I've done or my own experience. And I give it to people and say, do what you want with it. But this is what I recommend doing. And I give different options, obviously, for like recording and streaming and all that stuff. So podcasting. If you're going to start a podcast, number one, don't say anything. Nothing publicly until you have a plan. Because without intent, you're not doing a podcast. Okay? You're not. You're just talking shit. And then you look silly. Because then the next time you actually do go to advertise something... No one's going to pay attention because you didn't even do the last thing you said you were going to do. It's the same thing with setting up like live streams or events, things like that. Do not do that on your public profiles if you're not going to do it. And if you have to cancel it, make it post and explain why, even if it's not true. It's important. <laughs> I don't recommend lying. Like, be honest. Just be like, bitch, I didn't feel like it or I'm going through something. Or like hashtag seasonal depression. Something. You have to say something because people are watching. And when you have something public like a podcast, you want people to be interested. If you look um, like you are not, what's the word I'm looking for? Consistent. Then people aren't going to pay attention. It's going to be easy to lose your fan base. It's going to be easy to not even build one to begin with. So what I recommend is taking two months before you even launch your first episode. And in those two months, record at least three episodes, even if you're live streaming, because you can pre-record and stream them live like you were doing it live. Just so y'all know. <laughs> so it's important to, rec to recognize that because a lot of people get scared to do live streams because they think, oh, my God, I got to be live. That's terrifying. And I get it. See, for me, I just don't give a fuck. So I'll go live and I'll talk my shit. But some people, that's a real thing. Anxiety really does kick in. So just know you can pre-record and then edit it and then stream it through different platforms. But I recommend taking two months. That gives Wait, you time. Sorry, what, what platform are you doing that at? Cause I didn't know you could do that because we pre-record a lot, but stream yard just release it on. I did not know that. Yeah. <laughs> so if you go to um, live stream, when you go to set up your broadcast, mm -hmm. it'll ask you if you want to use a pre-recorded video, you just usually click by that. Cause you're not paying attention to it. You can upload mm -hmm. it or you could go into your videos if you already recorded it. Yeah. And then you can schedule it to stream live right from there. How do you, okay. But how do you edit them beforehand? Cause here's, I've tried to get fancy. Um, when I edit, I use Descript, and like, am I just dropping them back in? Like, what am I doing? So when you're doing it that way, like if you're taking them off of, first of all, you can trim through StreamYard. So if you're just trimming, you don't have to do all that. But if I you're like it. piecing together and moving stuff around, then yeah, download the video. I usually, I'm going to be honest, I use Google Photos for everything. Editing my videos, all that. Um, just because I can download it to my phone, edit the video, and then re-upload it, and it's gone. Um, you can do it through StreamYard still. You would just have to create that live stream and then mm -hmm. click upload video and then just upload it that way. Okay. And then you can still, if you want to, sit in the background and put comments up during the live stream. Because you can still enter that broadcast while it's live streaming your pre-recorded video. 
Okay. I mean, you obviously can't answer the questions live because you're not actually live, but you can still put the comments up as it's going and then answer it yourself in the comments. So I've done that a couple times, just being lazy. But when you're first starting out, I highly recommend having at least three videos in your pocket before you launch your first. Why? Because number one, you're going to need content for reels, for posts, things like that. For topics, you gotta let people know what your show's about. If you don't even know what the guide, like the goal of your show is, you don't have a show. You just have a blog, video blog. That's really what you have. It's not a podcast. I mean, it can be if you put it on Spotify and you know all the things, which we'll get to in a minute. But it's still at the end of the day just a blog because you don't have a main topic or goal or purpose for your podcast. You have to make a plan for all things, whether it's a business, a podcast, you know, a roster. You have to make a plan, okay? If I go out with my girls for the weekend, just know I have a whole itinerary because I made a plan. It's not going to go to plan at all, but I, at least I had one to start. It's something to go off of. It's the same thing with your podcast. My podcast has changed so much since I launched it in June. So much. And yet I still have the same loyal following because even though how I do my podcast has changed, the object or goal of my podcast has not. The theme, the topic what I'm doing with it, my purpose has not changed. Okay. So it's important to have that. It, people make the mistake of just jumping in. Good morning. They make the mistake of just jumping into something because they get excited about it. Stop doing that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Impulsivity will ruin your podcast. Number one, you want to build excitement. Build it. I took three weeks and that was not long enough for my podcast. And before my podcast even launched its first episode, I had more than 300 people following the like page for it. And excited about it because I was posting about it often. You know, I post a picture of like me in a, a helicopter or an airplane or something. I'd be like, it's to how I want to go coming soon. Stay tuned on this day. Can't wait. See you guys here. Make an event page. This is when we're going to, you know, release the premiere the first day. See how many people will respond or are interested. Invite all your friends every day to that event page because it gets them excited. Um, and that's another thing. Create an event page. Create a social media account for your podcast alone, period. It's mm -hmm. easier to keep track of. Um, so for me, I made a Twitter for my home to go, but I can't find a login. So I don't even have that. But I have my Facebook like page. So that's something. Uh, but it's also on my website. So it's not that big of a deal. Websites are important too. It makes you look more official. For anybody who doesn't know, Google Sites is $12 for the year. Yes, you have to build it yourself, but... It is not that hard, and I do have a guide if you need it. I'm happy to send it for a low, low cost of a high five. But <laughs> um, <laughs> kidding. But yeah, if anybody needs that, I can send it. Um, it is really simple to make it. I made my website that way. Is it perfect? No. I am technologically illiterate, but I've made two websites with Google Sites, and I've had no problems. So it's easy to update, things like that. You just can't do it through your phone. So if you don't have a computer, you're beat. <laughs> you have to use like a laptop or a computer in order to make a Google site. And I've tried through my phone just to see if I could do it. And it's just, it's a nightmare. So two months, I'd say, and have three episodes in your back pocket. Utilize your reels. And this is going back towards that social media management. My last Facebook page before I got put in timeout had a reach of 200,000 people per post I made. I only have 5,000 followers. Why? Because I know how to not the algorithm any way I want it to. How? You post every day. Post things that people will interact with. Say, good morning, everyone. Or, hey, what's your favorite color? Or post like, so there's a, for example, there's a meme that you could post. And it's an inhaler with a black box in it. And the lips, it says like, song I listen to when I'm upset. And you post that, and people put what their song is that they listen to when they're upset. Things that people interact with are going to boost you on the algorithm even if it's a thirst trap, but make sure you're answering all of your comments. Don't just like them, answer them. Especially if you have a business page on Facebook, which a lot of people do, even if it's their personal page, because then you get the chance to enroll in the bonus program for reels and you make money off your reels based on your views. But um, that's the thing. Normally this is going to sound weird. So with my Facebook page for my podcast, I'm not saying I get trolls, but I just get like those random, no, especially yeah. as a podcaster, I get those random messages like, hey, you need me to make you a logo? Um, yeah. Hey, or even some, 
people, I don't know. I haven't done anything fun enough to really get trolls yet. I want trolls. That I means have, people are listening. Um team squad after me, yo. They were trying to take me down, girl. Oh my god. That was a nightmare. I, I take that. But um I don't know. I always get weird engagement. Like nothing ever. Or in podcasting groups, the people that just post their links. So really, you've read nothing of what I posted. You just posted your link to my link. So here's the thing with those groups. And I've added a bunch to try to expand. There's only one group that I use. And it is me to guest. And I'm happy to share it to my Facebook page if anybody wants to go and join it. I have used that group since I started podcasting. And I've only really had an issue with one person. And right after that issue, I messaged the um, people in it and they removed him right away because okay. it was just an issue. Like, like I said, with the goon squad trying to bring my podcast down, I let the people who um, at the admins of the page know, like, this is what happened. You know, I really don't think he should be getting other people who are doing podcasting like involved in this because clearly these people are not going to leave him alone. Clearly, they're going to keep trolling other people's face uh, podcasts that he's a guest on because he needs to handle his shit, and he's not. So I keep it real. I keep it 100. Yes, that's kind of bitchy, but at the same time, these people literally took my podcast from a 5.0 to, I think, a 3 or 4, or 2 or 3, actually, at one point. Yeah, because they just started rating it low yeah. for no reason. And they were, like, live streaming my live streams just to talk shit. Like, it was a whole thing. Um and there's a lot of them. It's a whole like community. So they're, they're called the goon squad. So Google them. You'll find them. I'm telling you. Um, so, well, they're my friends now. Like we're cool. Hey, goon squad. Um, Cause once they see my name pop up and stuff, they'll probably come in. But um, yeah, we're cool now. Like they even taught me a lot about the DMCA and how to protect yourself, which I will get into too. Cause it's important to know when it comes to podcasting. Um, but you know, they taught me a lot about the DMCA. Anybody who follows my YouTube channel, CA Knubel, it is on there if you want to watch it, um, where I talk about that whole scenario, what happened with the Goon Squad, and we talk about the DMCA and the problems with it and why it needs to be updated. Um, and if, for anybody who doesn't know, it's the Digital Media Communications Act. So, okay. um, it's basically your rights with not social media technically, but like digital communications, and like where you're protected, where you're not. Is it really yours if you post it? Is it not? Can somebody steal it? Can they not? That kind of thing. Um, it's important to read, especially if you're going into podcasting, especially if you're putting your original work out. Now, if you're just doing it just to, let's say, um, like a blog, like I said, like a video blog, that's fine. Don't worry about it. But if you're using Spotify and Anchor and all that, and you're sending your podcast out and you want to eventually monetize off of this and this is your thoughts and your ideas and your expressions that you don't want people to take, Read the DMCA first and protect yourself, um, especially if you start doing guest spots. But the Need a Guest group on Facebook is a great group because they do not allow nonsense. And they have a lot of admins that constantly watch the page. You're not going to have to filter through 40 different random YouTube videos from a guy with squiggly lines for names. No insult intended. Just saying, like, I don't know what they're called uh, or what language it is. They're just squiggly lines for me. It's, I don't know if that's like Turkish or Arabic or what it is, but... Whatever language that is. Um, it sounds like Arabic. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry. I, I just didn't want to insult anybody. So I'm like, no, no insult to anybody, but it looks like swiggly lines for somebody who has no idea what the language is. Um, <laughs> which is probably what my handwriting looks like as well. Sorry, I noticed my shirt was down a little bit. I'm like flashing people cleave. Cleavage. Um, like, buy my product. <laughs> I'm not even selling a product. But um, yeah, start to finish. Just make a plan. Start there. For anything you do, even if you're going to a dick appointment, make a plan. You know, mm -hmm. are you staying the night? Do you have to pack a bag? Did you pack your toothbrush? You know what I'm saying? You know, mm -hmm. these are important things. Even for men, did you pack your spend the night school bag? Is she going to know that it's a spend the night school bag? You know, <laughs> let me throw some stuff on top of it so she doesn't know it's a spend the night school bag. You know, <laughs> prepare. So with that, so also you, wait, wait. So we don't. If you plan on spending the night and you come in with, you know, a backpack, I'm already going to assume like, oh, you making plans. What you need a backpack for? That's not true because my friends roll around with backpacks all the time. Why? That's like a man's purse. School bag. Put that in Square. your purse. in the 30s. It's <laughs> makes a man's purse. Yeah. Amaral, I walk around with my book bag all the time. Period. Mm -hmm. I don't know a single friend who doesn't. Honestly. Males. 
I mean, I even I have my little backpack, my little door door bag. I call it. It's Aladdin, but you know, it looks like a little door bag. <laughs> I don't know. Little, I don't little fly bags. Jordell, I don't care if you plan on spending the night, but I would be concerned with anybody showing up in my house with a book bag. Like, what, what are you about to do? You bought well, no, that's what she's you? saying. I mean, that's what she's saying. Like, guys just carry a book bag. Doesn't matter yeah. where, they, where they're going. Sometimes like, they have their, like, their laptop in it, things like that. They carry their laptop around in a school bag. They carry like, you know, like cigarettes or a jacket or whatever. Yeah. Dudes, I don't know. I never looked through a dude's school bag. You know what I mean? But I know they're there. <laughs> Just some shit we don't like to hold or have in our pockets. You right, know? especially if they're like, I don't like to have friendly. Shit in my- they got like papers yeah. and wants and cutters and yeah. trays and all the shit. Okay. I seen a dude pull a whole fucking bong out of a school bag once. I was like, you're just walking around with the shit? What the fuck? <laughs> you got a car, bro. Like, what are you doing? That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. put it in your trunk or something. I don't know. I don't even carry a purse out. anymore as a side note. But even when I'm walking around, like I don't like for things to be in my pockets. I just like to have them free for some reason. I, okay. I, don't, I don't know. So that's why I use my book bag. I try not to even carry a purse anymore. If it doesn't fit in my titties, I'm not bringing it. <laughs> These are the pockets. I can fit two pints of whiskey in this bitch, okay? <laughs> I don't like a bag. I've I don't done it. Bag. I'm like the festival friend because I can literally fit all of the alcohol in my tits. To know, get to know. I have to get friend, okay. <laughs> so, I, would I know it's just all over the place. Mm-hmm. It doesn't get back. too warm, huh? You don't get too warm in there. It don't stay there long. It's only to get through security. Okay. Right. Okay. You know I mean? What am I gonna do? Walk around with a cooler and nothing in it because the alcohol's in my titties? No. If it's warm, <laughs> it's warm. You go there with one mission only: to get fucked up and have a good time. Nowhere in there does it say keep the drink cold. Okay. Especially if okay. it's a summer concert. Forget it. <laughs> so. Moving back to podcasting and startups, make sure you have a vision for your aesthetic. And what I mean by that is you, for your logo, your YouTube banner, Facebook cover photos, you want all of them to kind of go with each other. You don't want to have like black and pink and green over here. And then over here is like orange and yellow and brown. And everybody's like, are these two different things? Like, what is this? You want it all to kind of mesh seamlessly. So Mm. that's another part. So I was having Instagram envy looking at other people's business pages. And have you ever seen like the colors, like the posts coordinate and it's like a little design. Yeah. It's called a brain packet. I get so jealous with that. They're templates. That's why. So what they do is they make a brand template with the colors that they want to use for their brand, the type of fonts that they use for their brand and their logo. And then they, when they go into um, programs like Canva, um, to, which is a graphic design one. If you don't use Canva, people use Canva. I love it. I swear by Canva. I use it, use it for my um, CVs, my resume. I use it for literally everything because I do graphic design for other people as well. So I use it heavily for my business. But I also make commercials. I make you know TV shows. I've edited my TV show all through Canva. There's a lot more to Canva than people know. Okay. Um, so just understand that the free version is not really all that great. It is $12 or $13 a month. It's worth the money. If you don't want to spend the money, then just have somebody who's already paying for it, make it for you. It ain't that deep. Um, but when it comes to logos, like I said, you want to have, just like you said, it looks pretty. It's all the same colors, no matter what they post. It's all the same fonts. It all has the same aesthetic. Mm-hmm. That's because that's that's their brand. Uh, that's how they market their product because it's all like, let's say, girly or shabby chic or grungy. If it's like an emo rock band, you know, they're going to have dark colors. They're going to have like skulls and crossbones and lightning bolts and Ozzy Osbourne, probably like you never know. So but for. For example, mine, how on the go, the font is always the same. Now, my logo, I change every season. Why? Because why the fuck not? Honestly, yeah. it's because when I first got my logo made, and I still love that logo, but somebody else made it. And once I started doing graphic design myself, I was like, I want to make my own logo. I want it to be personalized for me. And I'm still actually working on, I just finished it, like a new intro video, which is important and we'll get there. And an outro video, which I just finished. And a new banner and everything for my Patreon, for my Facebook, for Apple Podcasts. 
Because what people don't realize is, yes, you share with the RSS feed your pod audio or video, if you want to do both, versions everywhere. But you also need to update those pages like Apple Podcasts. You can make a page, a profile for your podcast on there. Make sure you're doing that shit. Don't just throw it up on Apple and be like, here you go. You know, put the extra effort in because it shows that you care about your brand, your product, your podcast, et cetera, et cetera. Um, people can tell when you don't give a fuck about what you're doing. Trust. But it shows also, what you're doing. I to say people know, people can tell you don't give a fuck. A lot of times it's not, people don't know or they are overwhelmed by so much knowledge. That's always a good thing. Um, it took me a minute. Like, I'm going to be honest with you. Even the simplest thing, like putting my podcast onto Apple as a person who's an Android user, I do have an iPad as well. So I have an Apple ID. But it took me forever to figure out why I needed to have my iPad to put in this code just to upload something. Like, that took way too long. And I had to watch a little video because I'm like, it's not working. <laughs> I press the button 50 times. It's not working. And I'm not the most technical person, but it's Dang. like, I'm, I know how to upload something. That's not hard. So it's sometimes it's an overwhelming amount of information. And also I want to add that definitely everybody podcasts differently. It's almost kind of like a gumbo. Um, certain people prefer certain platforms, certain people, yeah you know, only want to put their podcast on SoundCloud or only want to do something visual with YouTube, but don't realize you could also do something visual with Spotify as well. You can have other platforms and still get more exposure. Mm -hmm. But really, it's just a lack of knowledge or people don't know where to go. Well, because they don't ask the question. <laughs> if you don't ask the question, you ain't going to get an answer. That's straight mm -hmm. like that. I ask the questions. That's why I got the answers, and then I did my own explorations. I'm like, okay, well, they told me this, but this play was much easier, so this is what I'm going to write down, you know, because I am, I have ADHD. My attention span is very short, so when I'm doing something, it's got to be done then or out of sight, out of mind, and six months later, I'll be like, oh, shit. I never did that. We have a lot in common. I have ADHD, too. Um, I have a lot of mental health conditions, to be fair, but, you know, my ADHD is <laughs> really, and, and my PTSD, well, CPTSD are really what I'm in borderline but you know that's emotional it's not the same it's not a logical thing other than thinking in black and white you know but that's another thing too actually now i'm thinking about it it's either do it or we're not there's no yep. in between there's no like if i do it three months nope nope are we doing it yes all right let's hash out a plan no all right fuck it leave it we're moving on you know it's yep. like i'm straight no nonsense like that especially with all of the things i've going on like this looks like chaos because i haven't straightened it out yet but it's always chaos because as soon as something pitches through my head or somebody says something that I need to do, I write it on this whiteboard because it's right next to me because this is where I do all my main stuff. But and Christy, I have a question though, because we've, we've touched on your foundation and I understand being like, you do have a lot of other things going on and you're talking about that. It's not something you want to make money from. What is the ultimate goal with it? Besides it helping is, people? Because I definitely get to help people. The goal is to make sure that nobody feels like I felt when I left the hospital alone, didn't know what was going on, had no way of finding out or figuring out what was going on or where I could go to figure it out. There are too many people that don't know anything about mental health. And then they get diagnosed with mental health conditions. And they think they're some kind of monster. So they seclude yep. themselves. And isolation is like the number one indicator of suicidal ideation. There's a lot of suicides relating around mental health because people don't have the support or help that they need. The goal mm -hmm. with my foundation, which is not a foundation yet, because girl, I ain't got that kind of money yet. But mm -hmm. the, goal, the goal with my foundation is just to make sure that I constantly provide a free platform for anybody who wants to talk it out, for anyone who needs information about mental health conditions, disorders, phobias, etc., or wants to meet people like them, to talk to them, to branch out, to make those connections. I've met people worldwide doing this. So I'm still updating the website, something that I actually put, it's on the calendar for today. It'll pop up probably in about an hour. Um, Cause usually my, what time is it? It's almost 10. Yeah, two hours, 12 o'clock. Anything I need to have done before the end of the day will pop up on my phone. Ding, 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 ding. Here you go, Google calendars. And I'm like, you in clutch, boo, thanks. Cause I'll forget, I'll put it in my, so for me, it was my mental health uh, website. 
I edited most of it, but I put my stuff in there, the stuff that I made, the interviews and who I am and who my team is, why we're doing this and, you know, what the project is about. But there's a next section that's going to include resources, you know, in the form of websites you can go to for different conditions, podcasts that people have made that have these conditions that talk about their lives, you know, just to, like things like that. People who have different mental health groups on Facebook, life coaches, I'm not putting on there. But, you know, like I'll say that they're available, you know, um, I don't really like life coaches. And I and it's crazy because people say to me all the time, like, you should be a life coach. And I'm like, I am not a coach. I'm, I'm not a professional. You get what I'm saying? I feel like for me, it's kind of like teaching a soccer team. You're running out on the field. You're like, all right, balls to the wall, baby, let's go. And I've never touched a soccer ball in my life, you know, just because I've heard of soccer and I've researched soccer. You know, I can't teach a soccer club or a team, so to speak. So I prefer guide, not coach, is what I'm saying. Long story short. Plus, like I said before, I did I did have an interview with a life coach before, and he tried to diagnose me with autism. <laughs> oh, she's talking to somebody. Okay. So I don't do life coaches. Anybody out there is a life coach. This was not directed towards you or anybody you know. I promise. It was just one person. I won't mention any names. This was almost a year ago to begin with. So straight like that. I'm still okay. actually trying to edit that interview because I have no idea with the two hours long that it is. It was one of the first ones that I did how to post that because all the rest are like 30, 40 minutes or like an hour or less, so to speak. Have um, you tried making a website in Canva? So I... I dabbled in it a little bit, but I just didn't have the time to really sit there and do it. You basically mm -hmm. can create the web pages, but I don't know with Google Sites how to move that. I guess you could put it as like a template or um, a um, what's the word I'm looking for? Theme. Like maybe okay. if you upload it for a theme, but that that applies to every page and not just one. So I didn't get the chance to finagle with that, so I don't know much about that. I create okay. graphics for my website. Absolutely. Pricing guides, um, you know, information, upcoming events. I usually make like a graphic for that. I actually have to make one for mine that are coming up. Mm -hmm. I make it for stuff like that. Um, and graphic design wise, a lot of time I make memes, I make posts, you know, because I schedule my posts in the beginning of the month. Pro tip mm -hmm. business suite through Facebook. Connect your, your Facebook with your Instagram and post them both at the same time. But the reason that the business week is so important, and I know we've said this already, and Elijah, I don't even know what, what day it was because who knows what day we're on now. Like, it's we've just been together forever. It's literally <laughs> been like, I literally feel like this is just going to be on forever and everybody's just going to continue to pop in throughout our lives and just on this never ending live stream. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but I know it was mentioned uh, probably like a day or so ago, but I'll mention it again. Um, when you use the business suite, it will make your life a lot easier. Number one, you can schedule posts in advance for the month. It'll tell you what times your fan base or your followers are most active so that you'll get that, um, the um, interactions with it, you know, people responding to it. And the word I'm looking for is gone, but I didn't have coffee yet. Sorry. I literally like woke up, worked out and popped on to see what was going on. You're like slots open. I'm like, let me change my shirt. <laughs> and then I didn't, I just threw this over a sports bra. So like, we're good. <laughs> So, um, people will interact with your posts more during obviously more popular times. It'll tell you those popular times to post. You want to post at least, I try to post four times a day, four posts, like at least two stories. But usually I just go on and just start sharing crap to my story. I'm not even paying attention most of the time because <laughs> I'm never actually like online, online. Like people think I am. I post in the beginning of the month and I'm like, oh yeah, that was fucking hilarious. Because I found um, it three months you, ago. If you schedule your posts for the month? Yeah. In advance. Okay. Yeah. Um, it has a calendar. And you can hit create. And it'll ask you if you want to create a post, a story, a reel, a live. You can schedule all of it in advance. Mm. Um, and then you'll post it. And the best part about it is they have hashtag grouping. Hashtags are everything, people. I said it before. I'll say it again. Hashtags are what people use to find you. That's why when I say Google me, bitch. You can actually Google me. I'm all that's there. There are a couple little canoodle things, but you know what? It's big in Europe. I'll let them have it. Okay. See, but you see a space canoodle. It is me. Why? Because I, number one, make sure people use my hashtags when I'm on their podcast as a guest, when I'm on their show, when I'm doing an interview. If I show up to your party, bitch, hashtag me and that shit. Okay. 
Like anything I do, I hashtag it because once you have over a thousand hashtags, like a thousand posts with your hashtag, it starts mm-hmm. to show up as a suggestion. And then people are like, what the fuck is a canoe bowl? And then they Google me, bitch. And then they're like, oh, that chick's hot. That she's funny. <laughs> like, you know, hopefully, hopefully. Um, but on all seriousness, yeah, make sure you're using hashtags. It's important to not just use ones personalized to you, but also standard ones like hashtag trending or hashtag Friday or hashtag weekend vibes, whatever, whatever you're doing, hashtag that shit. So for me, the hashtag grouping in the business suite helps because when I'm rapid firing scheduling for the month, I don't want to sit there and type all these hashtags out again and again and again and again. And I don't, I have groupings, memes, (laughs) standard, my posts, you know, comedy shows, mental health. Like I have it all, it's kind of like I have it all broken down and they're all full of it. And then I have like weekend and then I have like, you know, different days of the week quotes, you know, if I post a quote, I'll just click the quote one. It'll have like quotes to Graham, quote of the day, inspirational quotes, quotes to inspire, so, and so on and so forth. Do you get a lot of like, um, like response when you post the quotes? Because I always feel like the quotes are like my filler post. Like I ain't really got nothing to say. Like be beautiful, love yourself. <laughs> now, are you just typing it out when you do the quotes? I try to make it pretty and I make like a little thing on like, canva with like the instagram thing oh that's good that's good so when you're posting when you're making that graphic number one Mm -hmm. make it eye-catching make it pop one thing about it you don't want it all to be crazy colorful that's too much remember and keep in mind people that when you're posting on your social media accounts keep in mind how fast you're scrolling through your feed and design accordingly okay what catches your eye when you're scrolling through your feed something that pops. So just doing a standard text post is not going to get as much reach or noticeability as something that has a picture attached. True. You know, posting a picture of your dog is cute, but posting a picture with your cleavage in your dog is going to get more notice. You get what I'm saying? Things like that. I encourage thirst traps because I'm a hoe and I'm allowed to. So I always encourage people to post pictures of themselves, not necessarily thirst traps, but you know, post pictures of yourself. People want to see you. That helps even with your business. You know, like this is my brand. Put a t-shirt on. Make it get a t-shirt made. Even if it's only your t-shirt. Get a t-shirt made. Put that shit on and start taking pictures. Have your friend throw the shirt on next. Have her go take pictures and tag your business in it. Have the next person. Hey, you're a size medium too. Swoop. Here you go. Throw that shit on, take a picture. And give me that shit back. That shit was $30. Like you know what I'm saying? Um, that helps. You know, um, stickers. I love stickers. I go buy stickers for everything. My actual business cards are not cards. They're stickers. The reason being is, number one, everybody fucking loves stickers, period. Mm-hmm. <laughs> number two, I unstick the top of it a little bit so when people shove it in their pockets, it sticks to their pockets. Now you can't lose it. Pro tip. Three, even if they don't want the sticker, they're going to stick it somewhere, even if it's a trash can outside of a Wawa. And now I'm getting free advertising. I didn't have to pay for space. I never pay for my advertising space, but you see me. <laughs> because That's a goal of mine. I mean, I, not a goal to pay for advertising space, but eventually I want to be on a billboard. I want to be able to afford to just be like, I'm buying a billboard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't think, uh, now I don't know what the reach is when you have a billboard style advertisement because I don't do that kind of advertising. Um, mm-hmm. Mine is mostly social media. And honestly, I've never had to pay for any of my businesses advertising. Just because I mess with the algorithm. When your reach is 200000 per post, you don't need to pay for them to give you like an extra 300 a day. Screw you. One more week of messing around with this and I'll be a 500. Stop playing with me. <laughs> Have you ever... Okay, so I paid when we first started our podcast on my season one. I will never do this again. I paid for a person with like way more like followers to like repost my post. Mm. I'm going to be honest with you. I basically just threw away money. Like legit. I should have just went and just blew it into the wind. Because it did. It was a learning experience. You paid for the lesson. Yep. I paid for the lesson. Because I also had to realize also when you're doing advertisements and stuff like this. Or, you know, working on building your people. You need to realize who you're speaking to. Mm -hmm. So even though this person had 2 million followers on TikTok when she reposted the video really her people aren't my people like mm-hmm. these people aren't really going to get anything from what i'm posting they're not interested in what you have to offer no 
it just because it's a lot of people or a lot of people looking at it, that doesn't mean they're actually they're going to stay on your page. page. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I'm glad you mentioned that because it is important. Number one, stop paying people to repost your shit. Just don't yep, do it. Do. Stop. Don't do it. Repost your own shit. You can repost your post. Did you guys know that? It's okay. You know, now I'm not saying every day repost the same thing and then share it, share it, share it, share it, share it. No. But if you posted something a week ago, share it again the next week. It's okay. It's it, nobody's going to care. Okay. You could share the same post again. And if you schedule it through business manager, or business suite, you can literally like click the three dots and go reschedule post or duplicate post and then schedule it for a week out, two weeks out, three weeks out. I do that when I have shows coming up. Now I just pin them to the top of my profile because I'm just tired of doing that shit. But, you know, I do that to my stories. I'll share it to my story like every other day, a different show that I'm either in or somebody that I'm trying to support, things like that. Because you don't want to clog it by showing support. And that's another thing people don't realize. When you tag people in stuff that they're not in or when you're sharing it to their page or when you're um, sharing other people's stuff to your stories, you're taking away from your own business. So a lot of the times, for example, um, podcasting, I have friends on Facebook that will tag me and stuff because they want me to see it, but I'm not in it. So I have to remove that tag. And I let them know, like, do not tag me in this. It's like 18 times, probably like in a month. It happens. It happens often. So wait a minute. Can you can you explain that a little bit? So sure. if Oprah is talking about how when she was 34, she was, you know, dead, broken, naked. And now she's a millionaire. And I'm thinking, oh, this is inspiring. So if I share what Oprah posted, it messes with me because I'm not in the video? No. Okay. No. When you say your friend has, let's say you're a comedian. Your friend has I'm a show going on. I'm just ordering something from DoorDash. Excuse you're me. You're fine. If you're <laughs> a comedian, you share your friend's posts for their flyers, for their shows. You're doing that. That's fine. But if you're every day sharing five to six friends posts and then you go to post your own show, no one's going to look at your show because they're lost in the sea of other people's shows. That's what I mean by that. So don't clog your page. And when it comes to tagging, for example, I have people that will share something and tag me in it. Be like, hey, check this out. It's a new episode. Or, hey, check this out. It's funny. Stop doing that. Send it to their messenger instead. Because when you allow people to tag you in a lot of posts like that, you're not in it. So again, people get lost in the sea of tags and people posting on your wall and sharing stuff to your wall that's irrelevant to you. No one's going to see what you have to offer and what you're actually posting because nobody's going to dive that deep to figure you out. Newsflash, the world does not revolve around any of us and no one really gives a fuck what we're doing. But when you have a business, you want people to want to give a fuck what you're doing. That's the goal. You want them to either buy your product or your service or whatever it is that you're offering or listen to your fucking podcast. They're not going to do that if you're sharing an episode from each of your seven friends every week when they post theirs and they're doing that the day before you post yours. So yesterday you're sharing five of your friends podcast episodes saying, hey, check this out. And then the next day you're sharing yours and somebody else is going, hey, mine's finally out. And so is blah, blah, blahs. They don't give a fuck about any of those. They already lost interest. And now you just look like a spam account. People unfollow that and keep the pushing. Remember when you're posting and when you're designing your Facebook profile and you're setting up your Instagram and all the things that you are pretending that you're scrolling yourself. Are you going to stay and look at that page? No. Then fix it. Make it so that if you're some dupe scrolling at 2 a.m. like the rest of us, you want to say, what the fuck is that? And then they click it because they're interested. Even if they don't stay on your page, they clicked it. That's that. That boosts you in the algorithm because somebody was interested in what you posted and they went forward and took it the next step to go to your page. Another helpful tool in the business suite is the insights. And that's where that kind of comes into play. For every post I make, because I have a business page on Facebook, it'll tell me how many people saw my post, how many people interacted with it. It'll tell me even though um, if people share things to their story or share things like from your, let's say, Instagram, say I see a post on Instagram, I share it to my friend's messenger. I didn't like post it to my story or anything. It doesn't matter. The people who created that post can see how many people shared that post from their page, even if it wasn't a public share. So pro tip, check the insights. It'll tell you how to like do better as well. There's guides all over business suite. that will tell you even better what I'm telling you now. So um, 
make sure you check that out because there are video, there's even video guides that will literally break this down step by step for you. Um, also, with the insights, there's something that you can add businesses that are like yours, that are your competition, to see where you are in the rankings compared to them. So, for example, I'm a comedian. In my group with people who have around the same followers that I have, I'm trending. I'm the one whose page they're looking at. And it's, it shows underneath my Instagram that I'm trending. And I should have been there for two months, ladies and gentlemen. I'm excited and a motherfucker, okay? Because I worked hard for that. Make sure you're posting and you're posting often. Um, it'll pop up that way. I haven't checked any of the comments. So somebody was commenting in. Sorry. Um, I had it on full screen. Um, I had to take the chicken. Oh, that was half an hour ago. Okay, never mind. Anyway, moving on, um, make sure you're checking out your algorithms because that'll tell you, like, number one, if you want how you're standing with people like you in your business category. Number two, it'll tell you, like, if you lost followers, if you've gained followers, what the median is or net um, after that for either, like, seven days, 30 days, all time. Like, it'll give you everything broken down. It will also tell you what age range your, your followers are. If they're Demographics men or women. are important. What? Demographic. Hey, how are you doing? Hey. You're gonna jump in or you're just gonna be the voice of God again. I'm doing the voice of God. I'm actually at work, but I'm making sure that everything's going great. But no, you are dropping some so there's a few things that you hit. Canva is very important. I love um, Canva, dude. I don't I know how many people, for Canva. I love them. <laughs> I will I, I've made a lot of my flyers on the road through Canva. Like driving down the road, making yeah. flyers and promos just through Canva. Canva is a godsend. Uh, videos, scheduling. Um, do you know about like um, I think it's hashtag boost or something like that? There's a app that you can just download and it, you can type in whatever you want you're thinking, and it will create a list of hashtags for you. You um, can, but honestly, all of the social media pages do that already for you. If you just type in hashtag C. It'll give you suggestions. If you had type in hashtag quote, it'll give you like six different hashtags and how many people. Well, with, with this one, you can uh, do it. You can uh, type up the three words and you can go through this list and get up to 30 hashtags all at once. So instead of me going through and typing one at a time, I can get all 30 hashtags at once and take them to wherever I want to put them. Also, That's smart. see for me, I don't, I don't type them in. I typed them in once and because I put them in the business suite in little groups. No, I just yeah. the group and I'm phew, done. <laughs> so I did it one time and that was it. Uh, for people who are Instagram and still trying to be, um, still trying to grow, there's something called DNA. Um, let me make sure I'm getting it right. Yeah, DNA for Instagram. So what it does is um, it figures out your best time to post and yeah. it will remind you. Like, hey, nice. your best time to post is like one, three, and five. That's when all your followers are um most engaging most interacting with you so you're supposed to these times very nice we'll have to drop these links in the comments for people so they can find it um because business suite does that too when you connect your instagram to it but yes it's a hit or miss for certain days yeah certain you know days, it, it'll tell you yeah and that's why i kind of downloaded this because i'm like okay i want instagram so i know because facebook i like but facebook there's a lot of restrictions and and hand holding I, that I don't really but like Facebook. about Facebook. But when it comes to businesses and you know advertising and marketing, Facebook's where it's at. Oh yeah, it I'm really definitely is. not getting rid of Facebook. I definitely, you know, my face I actually my Insta my Facebook page is doing well because of that. But um I just created Instagram. a new one to see how fast I can get back up to two hundred thousand reach. It's like a personal <laughs> thing. So far I have eight hundred friends on there <laughs> and my reach is like twelve thousand. So <laughs> and I made it like a month ago. Oh, I'm excited about that. So wait, so on this new page you created, because I have like, I've had my same Facebook page since I was a freshman in college. So um, I created a new one for your business. Shit. Well, I have different pages. I have completely okay. different pages. But, but your pages saying, are connected to that old Facebook account. So are exactly. they not supposed to be connected? That's really my question. Here's the thing. So for example, my How On The Go page is connected to my old profile. Mm -hmm. When my old profile got flagged because of community standards, everything got moved lower in the feed for 30 days, a.k.a. forever. Nobody was seeing my shit ever again since July of last year. That's why I had to make the new page. Yeah, that's some BS, too. Yeah, but what they don't tell you is the pages you create under that account 
are also affected when you get on a ban. Yeah. Now everything for that page is also moving lower in the feed for 30 days. So when you're going to create a business page, even if it's just a like page, create it under a different profile that you know you're not going to post something that's going to get you in trouble so that you're always mm -hmm. safe. Even if you don't use it, it's just a burner account. You know what I'm saying? Do it that way. But just yeah, but also in. their community stands like because I got flagged for something I didn't even post and nobody posted on my page, but yet still somehow it ended up there, which is weird. They you I have got, to be I got flagged for sharing somebody's meme and they didn't get flagged. I got yeah, flagged because I shared it. Yes, that's what happened. Mm. <laughs> like you share something third party and you like hold on now. This has been on Facebook for three years and I've shared it and all of a sudden you got a problem with it. I'm still here, by the way. Um, so, um, <laughs> um, for Facebook, it is very important that if you have a business page, like I said, you keep it separate from you acting a fool on Facebook. So for example, somebody had posted a meme and it was like Slipknot and it was back when like Slipknot was against like the um, Machine Gun Kelly fans. Um, yeah, we're it was like a whole, a whole <laughs> thing with that. Um, okay. Well, I shared this because I thought it was funny. And I was like, if you don't like Slipknot, um, basically I'll punch you in. Uh, like I said something like, I'll punch you in the face. And it was clearly a joke the way I worded it. And my page is a comedian page. But yet mm -hmm. I got flagged and said that I was bullying. I'm like, yeah, I'm bullying them. If you don't like Slipknot, I will bully you. Fuck you. Like, you know, in my head, of course. But there was also another one. This was my third flag that some girl posted something for domestic violence. And some guy commented and said, um, what would you do? And I was like, these hands are buy one, get one free. <laughs> like, fuck around and find out. You know, I got flagged for that. Said that I was bullying. And that's like what took my page over the edge, basically, for them. But even on Instagram, like Instagram, I posted something. And it was like the best way to greet a man is with a firm handshake. And it was a woman grabbing a guy by his crotch. Thought it was hilarious. Everybody else thought it was hilarious. There must have been one person who didn't because they reported it. And now there's a flag on my Instagram. I don't want no flags on that. I just started building that. <laughs> okay. I went from, I think I had like 600 followers a couple months ago to now I have like 1,100 on Instagram. So the best way to grow your followers on Instagram is just to join people's lives and go live yourself and let people join you. Period. Because- I'm to be honest with you, I'm not saying I'm a live virgin um, when it comes to going live on platforms, but <laughs> honestly, I've never really been like going live hasn't really been my thing. Most of our content is like pre recorded. I think we did like a live like thing for Christmas once, but before we started doing this, y'all, I never go live. Like, Lives are important. Mm -mm. I go live, but I, I kind of, I don't like it. I like it, but I don't like it because even though I do, I show.